Welcome to the place where dreams come true. Where everything you want can be yours. If and only if you're willing to work for them. You're willing to hurt for them. But most of all, you're willing to be first for them. Ha, look. I'm going straight to the top. I don't know how I would stop, like it or not. I got some goals that I'm hitting. You hear what I'm spitting? It's hot. Look what I got. Whole lot of passion and pain. The road to success is insane. Stay out my lane, cause I'm on a mission. I'm getting what stands in my way. Yeah, I'm a beast. I wouldn't play with me, baby. The way that I'm training is crazy, and I do it daily. You want to talk about drive? I got more drive than Mercedes. I've never been lazy. I'm in the room. It's a way to learn. You want to compete? Well, get better first. I got ten toes in the dirt, push through the hurt just to show them my worth, I'm the best. <laughs> yeah, I'm the best. I never stress. I know what's next. I'm who they test. Like we playing chess. But I'm unimpressed. So now let me flex. <laughs> yeah, I'm a work. Through the struggle and hurt. Cause I know my worth. And I gotta be first. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be first. Look, I don't want anyone sympathy. I understand what is meant for me. I give my focus and energy. If it's meant to be, then it's meant to be. But mentally, I'm undefeated. They hear that and say I'm conceited. Like there's no reason. Like I don't beat them and beat them and come back again just to teach them. That when you work under pressure, you reach higher measures. They'll try and bring you down, but you cannot let them. And only get better and focus on cheddar. Eye on the prize and you'll become a legend. Like, oh, when I'm in the room, it's a red alert. You want to compete, well, get better first. I got ten toes in the dirt. Push through the hurt just to show them my worth. I'm the best. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the best. I never stress. I know what's next. I'm who they test. Like we playing chess. But I'm unimpressed. So now let me flex. <laughs> yeah, I'm a work. Through the struggle and hurt. Cause I know my worth. And I gotta be first. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be first. They don't know what's gotten into me. How'd I turn pain into energy? Do all the struggle and hurt, remember my work, and that's why I gotta be first. <laughs> I'm on the miss a snap any minute casually when it stop tripping on me stop dissing on me I got a dream can't take it from me my fire's burning now I'm always learning tell me where to go man I'm on a journey Yeah, I can't explain it I get excited keep a 300 King Leonidas strap in cuz it's gonna be a long ride working on me every single day and night there comes a time when your worlds will collide if it's holding you back, push it right to the side. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get here. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get here. I don't got the time. Put me in, coach. I've been going hard. Time to let it show. Everything raw. Give it to me now. Let me have a spot. Man, it's going down. Gotta get it here, I don't wanna wait Take what I want, then I go train Gotta get a win, I won't lose the game This is my year, I ain't gonna break Strap in, cause it's gonna be a long ride Working on me every single day and night We've been building toward this day for two months The beginning of the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge the best Clash of Clans players North America has to offer have been through so much to get to this point, but their journey is not complete. In fact, it's truly only just begun. The story of the challenge is a clash between the veteran players that we've come to know and a whole set of newcomers are, who are eager to find out if they have what it takes. That's right, we got fresh new faces like Flaming Turkeys and Push who are gonna spend the next four weeks trying to dethrone the old guard, clans like Chaz Mac and Warren Glory. Speaking of Chaz Mac and Warren Glory, we're keeping a close eye on the developing rivalry between the former teammates Nick and Lexnos, who are both chasing the elusive fifth championship. We'll sit down with their managers of both teams later to learn how both players are feeling about heading into the next phase of this tournament. And we've got a special guest commentator in the studio tonight. If you want to hint, well, he's kind of a big deal around here. 
The players are ready. The crew is ready. Myself and the guys are ready. And I know all of you watching at home are ready. So let's get this thing started. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Snapdragon Pro Series. Very excited to be kicking things off today for week one of the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge for Clash of Clans. I am your host, Glitter Explosion, and we actually have loads of people here today to help us through all of the action, but we get to start with Bash. So how are you feeling? Oh, I'm absolutely pumped up. We got our eight teams from the Open Finals here for our Mobile Challenge. It's going to be a great day of war for you guys. A uh, fantastic day of war and so much action that we had to bring in even more people to help us. Like I said, this next talent needs no introduction, but we're going to give him one anyways. He's someone that we are very excited to have with us here today. You know him. You love him. Our producer's watching too much late night. It's Paul and Viram Todkill. Welcome to the show, Paul. Hello. <laughs> Oh, it's good to be back. I, I wasn't going to miss it. Guys, come on. Three years of mobile action here with ESL, and now, of course, the Snapdragon Pro Series, season one of the mobile challenge. I mean, I wasn't going to miss this for the world. I am so glad that that was your choice because we are very excited to have you here. It's going to be a fantastic day of Clash of Clans action. But of course, before we dive into all of it, we need to give everyone a little bit of a refresher of what our teams even had to go through to get here. That's right. We played in two phases of our mobile open. That gave us eight teams from each of our regions, and those eight teams moved on to today's mobile challenge. Yes, and over the next four weeks, they are going to compete in round robin competition to determine who is going to be advancing on to the mobile challenge finals live in person in Poland to determine not only who's going to walk away with the prize money, but of course, got that. We got a gold ticket on the line. That's right. Those teams are going to play down for the chance at the golden ticket, their chance to play in the Clash of Clans World Championships. It's going to be exciting. Absolutely. And speaking of those teams, let's take a look at what teams you're even talking about. Who made it through? And just in case people in chat might have missed it. Yeah, you guys might not have seen it because we haven't seen Chazmat Gaming at all because they qualified right through from our first ladder. So we got Chazmat Gaming, Empire Gaming, Flaming Turkeys, Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy, No Chance Ice, Omnipotence, Push, and War and Glory all playing from a 0-0 record here today. And of course, to help us show you guys the, the whole story, the, the road that those teams had to take to even get here. We couldn't do a Clash of Clans event without them. Our final talent, we have Eric waiting to talk to you guys. Absolutely. Guys, let's talk about how these teams got here today. How did they make it to the challenge? The first thing I want to talk about is Chazmac. Chazmac, like Bash said, was able to skip the open finals for the split one because they were the number one team on the ladder. You can see their team leader here, Lexnos, uh, in action with a Lalo on this one here. And they have some really, really high hit rates. Definitely one of the front runners of the competition. Lexnos is actually playing potentially for his first fifth uh, Snapdragon Championship here. So this is a really, really big deal for him, but he's not the only big hitter on his team there. Here we see some action out of Max as well, but there are a lot of other teams here to look at here. The next seed is Empire. Empire was the first to qualify on the upper bracket of the first split there. They are a powerhouse team, definitely a team to be looking out for here. And we'll definitely look forward to see exactly what kind of action they have for us today. And they're, they're like I said, trying to build an empire here and they're on the right track to do so. So definitely 
keep an eye out for this team. Hopefully we see some good wars out of them, some high scores. But another team to look at here is Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy, who qualified out of the lower bracket in split one. They are priorly lost metagaming here. Some re absolute veterans on this team here all the way across the board. And uh, Soham right there, I love his bats, love to see that. And uh, I always feel like whenever Soham triples, he rallies his whole team and they just come out swinging the rest of the wars and put up some big scores. Now moving on to split two, the War and Glory team. This is another big team that we're keeping a close eye on. We thought they were gonna make it through split one. We thought they were a shoe-in, but apparently they were not. They struggled in split one, moved into split two, topped the ladder and skipped the open finals. And now they are playing as our split two first seed, I guess you would call it. I'm not even sure what to really call it there, but this team is definitely one to be looking forward to. And Nick on this team is also, along with Lex Nose, looking for his fifth Snapdragon Championship here. So now moving down, another team that did really well in the first split and had to go in and get their second chance, uh, according to the name there, Second Chance Eyes. No Chance Eyes is a powerhouse team that made it through in the lower bracket. They had a little bit of a rough time there in split one, but they came out swinging in split two and they got the redemption that they were looking for, landing in in the lower bracket and almost didn't make it through, which is kind of scary right there, but there's a lot of competition here. Another team that was in a similar situation to them was Omnipotence, making it through in split two in the lower bracket. There's a lot of returning veterans in this team here, and they're hopefully they can make it to the big stage here because they've been going at it for years trying to reach that big stage and uh, we'll see if they get their chance this season. But uh, another push forward here, we have Push, which honestly, I didn't really know much about this team coming into this, but they've been ridiculously impressive. I mean, I saw them play for the the first time in the, in the split two, and they were putting up 14 stars of war. This team was crazy. I definitely am looking forward to see what they have for us. And of course, they got a player named Eric, so that's always an extra bonus. <laughs> Love to see it. And moving into the last team to look at, our last team to look at is Flaming Turkeys. I love the name, first of all. I think there were Flaming Hawks before, but they changed their name to Flaming Turkeys. I don't know why, just for fun. They are kind of the Cinderella story of this match here, of this, uh, this mobile challenge, because they were a team that nobody really knew. We didn't know what to expect out of them. They came out swinging. They qualified in the upper bracket, and they might be that underdog story that we're looking for. So, I mean, this is uh, going to be a crazy set of wars here through challenge through this round, Robin. But I'm going to send you back over to Glitter and keep this rolling. Fantastic breakdown, Eric. Thank you so much for walking us through the journey all of those teams had to take to even get here to the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge. It was not easy, to say the least. And one of those big storylines that we did hear Eric mention is that rivalry that we have going on right now between Nick and Lexnos, both of them battling for that fifth time champion status. Okay, and we're going to have to see which one is able to do it, if any at all. It's going to be a very interesting rivalry to keep our eyes on. And we actually did get a chance to catch up with both team managers, Hold My Beer and Drew, to get their feelings on this upcoming mobile challenge. The preparation has just been dialed up another notch. We got to treat every war like it's the championship game. Practice going to the first week of the challenge, let me tell you, like, we were absolutely floored that the final four were, is going to be in Poland. And uh, the guys have just turned it up another notch. I mean, we have been prepping and testing and working with builders we know from all around the world, just trying to get ourselves ready for this. Um, the opportunity to go to the finals in Poland is just something we never expected. And So practice has been going very well, in my opinion. We've had a lot of base testing, a lot of scrims, practicing stuff, keeping up with the meta, and seeing what works and what doesn't work. I mean, he's excited, but uh, he's excited he actually may be able to do it across the, the room from, from Lex. You know, obviously we wish those guys the best too, being a, a good rival in the NA scene. Hopefully Chaz Mack can make it over there. Hopefully Warren Glory can make it over there. We can settle it face to face. I mean, you couldn't have asked for anything better this season than the two of them to be facing off face to face instead of uh, behind a camera, you know, on the other side of the country. This is just a fantastic opportunity. And I know Nick's really looking forward to it. And I'm sure Lex is as well. So I want to say it means a lot to him to beat Nick to get the number five. I'm sure it means a lot because that's just another thing that he can rub in his face if he wanted to, because they're, they're really good friends and it's, it's just a great rivalry.
prior to the pro scene, the two of them played together in a, um, a clan called WHF for many years prior to uh, Clash of Clans being a real pro sport. And actually, uh, the one time that Nick and Lex did go to Poland was with WHF for the Town Hall 12 Cup. Um, they're still friendly, and in fact, like, you know, why I have, I have a moment. Congratulations, Lex Nosa. He did just get married this weekend. I wish you many years of, of happiness, and uh, you know, ho hope to see you guys in Poland. Uh, so I went to the wedding. It was a blast. It was an honor to watch him marry the love of his life and to allow me to be a part of it. It was, it was really cool. And the team chemistry that we had and the bond, it's, it's really good. I didn't know that he got married. That is so cute. I, I feel like I've like watched him grow up over the last few years. So to see that is kind of like, that's a touching moment. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> it's been years now watching Lex play. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a uh, huge congrats to the couple. Yeah. Uh, that's that's awesome. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely love to see it. And of course, if you guys want to follow along with that rivalry, Chasmac and Warren Glory will be going head to head next week at 5.30 p.m. Pacific. You do not want to miss it, especially after all of that we heard. Those They always give fantastic interviews. To be fair, thank you That's once true. again to Hold My Beer and Drew for chatting with us, always giving us some quality content. And that photo was beautiful. So congratulations to the newlyweds. But we must continue on. And uh, I've got a little special something here planned uh -oh. for you guys. Okay, I did this mm. to you last time. And I've got a little game we're going to play. Chat knows the game well. It's called Guess the Percent. Oh and boy. if you don't know how the game works, we're going to be showing you an attack. You're going to have an opportunity to see the base, the defense. You're going to be able to see the army, and you're going to see the beginnings of that attack. You all need to tell me, including Eric over there, you guys need to tell me what you think the percent will be. We're going to stop it, and then you'll find out the answer at the end of the show. Chat, you guys as well, let us know what percent you think it's going to be because this is not going to be easy, okay, as we get to kick off this attack. All right, so we got Stubbert from Flaming Turkey's oh, hybrid, Queen okay. Charge Hybrid, a pretty, uh, it's a pretty standard attack. Uh, we'll see, we get a little hint here, Paul. Like, Man. they're going to let us watch a little bit so we can cheat. But they like to troll us. Okay, uh-oh. This is my first time doing this, yeah, so. That, well, <laughs> like, it looked like a really good one last time, and then they trolled us, and, you know, it looked like a three-star, but it wasn't a three. So well, let's see where we're at. Pause it. Oh, that's not a lot. That's, that's all the information uh -oh. you get. Uh oh. Uh, so Queen's okay. going to charge the town hall. I'm going to say hybrid around. I'm going to say it's a 98% time fail. Okay. And Paul? Oh, I, I think I think something's going to go horribly wrong. Uh -oh. uh, I think it's going to be like 75%. <gasps> <gasps> Ooh. Okay. Ooh. And then Eric, what's your call? I'm going to say this base looks really solid for a hybrid. I'm going to call somewhere in the 90s because I feel like they wouldn't just give us a triple. That'd be too easy. I'm going to get it. you got to give me a number. I need a solid number. 92. 92. 92 98 time fail and a 75. Oof, okay. Oof. That's what we've got here in chat. Paul has very, very low expectations. And you in chat, if you want to listen to what you think, you can tweet at us using hashtag guess the For percent. the record, for the record, in rehearsal, I said, I'm just going to do the opposite of what they say. If they go high, I'm going to go low. If they go low, I'm going to go high. Just keep it interesting. I like it. I like it. It'll keep all of us on our toes. It'll keep chat on their toes. Like I said, tweet at us using hashtag guess the percent. Let us know how you guys think that one is going to unfold, and we'll let you know at the end of the day. But now it is finally time to start talking about our first matchup of the day. And that war is actually going to be between Chasmac and Empire. And we'll start things off by talking a little bit about Chasmac. And this is going to be an amazing war. This is the first time on broadcast we've seen this Chasmac team. We got Nick, Lexnos, Ghost, Max, and Peivu. And obviously, this team knows what they, they're doing. They've qualified straight through to this mobile challenge. And look at them. Game face is on, ready to go, Paul. Oh, yeah, every single person looks ready. And we're going to have cams the whole season. I am so excited about this. I, is Pavu in PJs? Is, get comfy, is play Lexos game. Get ready to catch a flight. Was that an uh, airplane play? <laughs> uh, look, either way. Either way, I'm excited to see what these guys can do. Game faces are on for sure. Comms are going to be tight. Let's see what they can bring to the table. And this team, they know how to read a base. They know how to attack the right attack on that base. Put the right strategy on the base. Uh, Eric and I were talking with you yesterday about yeah. these guys and their super witches. And we're seeing that right here from Nick. Uh, so we'll see a lot of creative attacks, but we'll also see a lot of great meta attacks from the CMG team uh, against Empire, which is a really strong team. They came out and kind of surprised us in that split one. We got Shadow, Smokey Bear, Anthony C, Damian, and Jesus. And we'll, I'm sure we'll see these guys on cam here momentarily. Check this out. They're getting ready, guys. They're prepping. Oh, yeah. Game faces are on for everyone. I love to see it. 
Well, you uh, smoke you. A hundred percent. Because I look at this in a vacuum and I recognize every single member of Chaz Mac. And I recognize a lot of the faces here too, but I would say the competitive experience definitely would favor Chaz Mac. So Empire coming in here is, I think maybe some would consider the underdog. They've got a lot to prove, but they've definitely got the skills to back it up. We have seen them pull out some absolutely sick attacks to get to this point. They are so strong. Again, another clan that I think reads bases really well, puts the right strategy on those bases. In that split one, they were pretty dominant in their performance. I I believe they were the first team to qualify from our open finals. So I think we're going to have us a really good war on our hands. And taking a look at the season one averages actually slightly favors Empire as far as stars goes, but Chaz Mac with a slight percentage. And this is really interesting because what this says to me is that Chaz Mac a little bit more consistent when it comes to going for those hits. However, on the other side, Empire, a little bit higher risk, higher reward. Technically, they triple a little bit more often, but the attacks that may not necessarily go that well go maybe a little bit wrong. So we'll see what happens here. All right, well, we've got the head-to-head -head down below. Chazmac coming out so far when these two last saw each other, one to zero. All the facts, all the information is on the line, which means we now want to know what you guys think. First war of the day, will it be Chazmac coming out on top or will it be Empire Gaming? Let us know in that poll down below and chat because we want to know what you think. But that war, it is ready to go. Ooh, the ooh. players, we saw them, they've got their game faces on. I am excited to be watching this. So for the very first time of the day, I pass it off into both of your very capable hands. All right, let's get it, Paul. Our first match of the day. We got Chaz Mac, we got Empire. This is gonna be an amazing war. And you're back in the casting seat. I know. Oh, it's so exciting. EG, Damien's gonna get us started here for Empire, and it looks like we got us a, uh, ooh, this could be uh, a little bit of a minion clone. It could be a super wizard, super archer clone with the invisibilities here, followed up with the Hydra, with the dragons, <laughs> and the rider. So we'll see where he comes in with this blimp. That'll be the big determining factor. For sure, and either way, this is gonna be a more technically difficult strategy to execute. And uh, the second you start adding invisibilities, you start adding the clone spells, your mechanics have gotta be on point, your timing has gotta be there, knowing when to throw out those key spells, and. Here comes the opening, a little bit of spam. Yeah, the dragons are all in, so it looks like we might see a longer blimp all the way across his face, trying to get that blimp towards the town hall, and then I wouldn't be surprised to see cloned minions coming out of this blimp, raged up and invisible to get out the town hall and all those surrounding buildings. Dragons are right in towards those heroes. He's gonna use the king and queen down that side to help the funnel, and here we go with that warden ability. We'll see if this blimp lands, and then the clone and rage and invisibility should all start from there. I mean, perfect timing on that. Blimp oh, goes in. Oh, died a little bit early. The invis is there. There's the rage, exactly as you predicted. But the town hall has got to go down. That is the key factor, and it's looking pretty healthy. But uh oh, he's, he's still got invis. But the problem here is the wizards broke out here. So it was uh, super archers and uh, super wizards in there, but they kind of wall broke out of there. I thought this would be for sure minions was, going across like that. It. Yeah, it looks like the archers. One more. Oh, One more. oh no! no! Uh oh. Okay, we're gonna have an early scramble here from Damien. That Town Hall didn't fall. Wallbreaker kind of backfired as the Wizards went out of the compartment. King's making his way in. This is still salvageable with the Royal Champion in hand. But a little bit of, ooh, and ooh. the Lava Hound here. This is gonna be a tough recovery, but you don't wanna start with a one star. I mean, that is the absolute worst foot to start this tournament out on. Again, multiple weeks of competition, every single game, every single attack matters when these teams are this oh. good. RC ability still in hand though. Seeking Shield will go in, but needs to be able to hold it to make sure that it hits that key target. It will probably auto trigger here. If he here. gets this down, it should go to the town hall here. Yeah. Yep, there we go. One, two, three, four. Oh, oh it's oh, not no. enough. The battle builder is rebuilding that town hall. And I don't oh, think no. he gets there. Oh, no. Look, look, it's rebuilding uh, again. Oh, no. 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 Empire's going to come out the gate with a one star. Devastation. The wall breaker in the blimp is not. Oh, no. The wall breaker out of the blimp. He tried to get a little bit too much out of that wombo combo out of the blimp. And oh, no. Devastation. You can't give a team like Chaz Mac this kind of opening. When the attack started, I said this one, you know, a little more technically challenging to execute. Didn't end up actually, I think, in theory, I think being that way, but uh, just a little bit of bad luck, maybe a little bit, and the wizard's not going necessarily where they were supposed to go, and he needed, thing, you know, he needed it, that blimp yeah. just to get just slightly Closer. further, yeah. because the wizards kind of pulled out, once that wall broke open, or maybe no wall breaker in there, once that wall broke open, the super yeah. wizard's just like, nope, we're out of here, and then you see that battle builder just, uh, it's going to top MVP. off the uh, inferno, and then just go there, if that battle builder's not there, the town hall goes down from that seeking shield. 
unlucky strike here from Empire, and you know Chazmac's going to take advantage. You know Chazmac's going to come right out the gate firing. I mean, they're averaging close to 13 stars a war, which means out of every five attacks, they're going to triple three of them. Yes. Which means that <laughs> if you now are already down to a one star, albeit a pretty decent percentage, you are still very much on the back foot. You have a mountain to climb, and especially up against a team as, as good as Chazmac. This one's going to be tough. Yeah, ugh, that's... The first attack, the, that's the biggest thing for me, is like you almost feel, I've been in these situations with my team, uh, you get that first attack one star, and you almost feel deflated, you almost feel yep. out of energy. So we're gonna have Nick coming in from CMG, and it looks like we just gotta say Yeti smash attack here. Yeti super wizards, and he's just gonna go right up the middle of this one, split through the center, and hopefully get right into that town hall. I like the mm -hmm. pathing here with that log launcher. Yep, very early warden ability as well, just gonna get as much value as possible while those troops are all still clumped together. Pretty serious face because you need to come out of Nick right now, but going right down the middle, like you say, you've got Yetis on the outside to continue to develop this funnel, which means it's right in towards that town hall. That is that primary target, and they don't want a repeat of what Empire did. They want to at least secure those two stars and then look for that triple. This is looking really nice because if he gets these scatters in the town hall down, he's got bats for the cleanup with the Royal Champion, and with there not being too much splash, we'll have a few remaining wizard towers. This should be a three star from Nick, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, Royal Champion Secret Shield's going to go off right there and the only splash damages he has to worry about are those two wizard towers and he's got five freezes for them so he should n have no problem getting through those wizard towers the bats will actually do a pretty good job cleaning up he's going to have real champ uh, real oh, champion's going to go down perfect layering man yeah this will be it's all going to come down to cleanup but he got through the main phase of this attack in one minute yeah and he may ooh, a little bit of unlucky pathing with the bats he preemptively laid down that freeze he's got one more though so he's going to be totally fine this is going to be a triple no doubt in my mind and he knows a big smile on his face <laughs> already he knows exactly how the rest of this attack is going to go from here it's just clean up with the bats the only thing that sucks is there's a lot of storages but there's a minute and a half that's 30. <laughs> that's a half of the attack <laughs> he had every defensive structure down with half of the attack right. left to go i mean that's feeling pretty darn solid. And honestly, this one feels like very simple, very straightforward, and but executed perfectly. Great read on the base. And the nice thing with the bats, they won't pull any red air bombs, so they're not going to you know, get destroyed or anything. So the cleanup will happen. Just a matter of time. That was a great read on the base. All the splash was in the front side. It got one of the wizard towers out with the royal champion and just cleaned it up with the bats. I love seeing these bat waves come in. And look at it. Like, that's... Uh, it's going to be at least 473 bats in that way right there. <laughs> nice little three-star from Nick. Man, that's, that's, that's a tough spot. When we came in and we introduced these teams, the first thing you said is, this is a team that knows how to, knows how to read bases. Yep. And that, to me, felt like the perfect read. He'd been down that row before. He knew exactly which book to pull off the shelf, exactly what page to turn to, and he got it in one. But, uh, you know, no early celebrations, though. They still know what needs to be done. Right. Nobody has taken this one for granted because they know the caliber of play that they are at right now. They're in the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge. I mean, anything can still happen. They absolutely have the advantage, but nothing is set in stone. We're still only two attacks in. I love the read on this base. This was an amazing read. Once those scatters in Town Hall goes down, look at it. There's three <laughs> Wizard Towers on the back end and no splash damage remaining. World Champion gets out that one. Amazing read. And that's what I'm saying. These guys, they've been here before. They've <laughs> yep. been playing together forever. They know how to read a base. They know how to put the right strategy on. Bats were the perfect call for that base. It worked out for them. Now they have a two-star advantage after one volley of attacks. Now, I think the big thing there, too, is knowing exactly how many resources to commit to the center of that base. You had five, you have to waste a single freeze in the entire first part of that attack. You could commit every single one. So even when the bats maybe slightly mispathed or maybe path not quite how we expected, he still had that last freeze yeah. in the pocket to make sure that last wizard tower went down. <laughs> but it's exactly what was needed. And yeah. now we have a two-star 18% differential to start this war off. So we're going to see Empire pull out triple after triple after triple, and we're going to need to see at least a couple of two stars from Chaz Mac here if Empire has any hope of bringing this one back. But of course, we're still, again, we're still only two attacks in. Anything can still happen. Yeah. If one team can one star fail, I'm not trying to jinx anybody, but anything's <laughs> possible. Yeah, uh, it is esports. Anything could happen. I mean, w that first attack from Empire. W we know that that wasn't the plan. We no. were hoping to get that town hall down, but anything can happen. And we've seen Empire put up some impressive numbers themselves. So you know they're not going to lay off and just give up. They're not going to roll over. They're going to uh, keep on attacking. It looks like we got us a queen charge here, a lightning spells as well. So a zap queen charge. Uh, we might see the single inferno. Go uh, We'll see here. Blimp's going to come in for the Town Hall. Should have no problem getting that down. Pull up the Clan Castle to set up for that Queen Charge. And then we'll see Lightning Spells, maybe that middle multi a little bit later on. 
I guess we're going to see here is the Queen Charge is going to come in. And again, Anthony has, and like Rest of Empire Gaming, a bit of a mountain decline here. But that is the excitement. Like you said, the power of eSports here, of course, here in the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge. Big thank you, of course, to Snapdragon for being our fantastic presenting partner with this program, helping to elevate mobile eSports across the board and helping to support us here, especially in North America, with these teams. Big thanks to Snapdragon as we get into this attack number three, slow and steady pulling everything out here from that clan castle. And Anthony, I think, gonna start to set up the rest of this funnel, and then we get to see how the rest of this attack looks. Yeah, Queen will push down in here. I love the blimp early that'll pull out that full clan castle so the Queen can deal with it without having too much pressure on her. King's gonna cut that Queen off and push her inside now. Rage spell just to keep that Queen up, to yep. make those healers heal just a little bit faster. Wants the King to deal with the enemy King, maybe? Okay, we got a headhunter okay. coming in. Still waiting to see what happens with these lightning spells. Um, be interesting to see which maybe Inferno gets taken out here and where okay here here it comes for that single behind the town hall so that goes down setting up for those dragon riders if the queen's going to charge a little bit more yep keys to take down this multi here if possible make that push a little nice. bit easier there's the king ability coming in will secure that bomb does go off but it will still be enough to take down the multi i believe hang on king oh, where are you going he got distracted by the rc Ooh. right there yeah, he's, he goes back and gets it. But the close. RC did not get that scatter shot right there. Yeah. So that's a, a pretty big factor. Queen's not going to be able to reach that. King is kind of making his way over there. But now we have Dragon Riders coming through the base. Still has Warden's ability, but you have to get a three steer star here, Anthony. You got to get your team back in the ball game. Yeah, Eagle went down, but it was up for a long time, raining down a lot of damage. That is pure DPS over the course of an attack like this. With only 53 seconds left of the clock, you have to start looking at the time. There comes the Eternal at home. Warden ability popped, and it is going to get some value here on the back end, but the troops are very spread, and there's still a lot of base left. I'm looking towards that scatter shot, and my heart pitter pattered <laughs> here for Empire. Yeah, we got, we got that scatter shot that he freezes right there. We still have an air defense, which is going to rain on these riders. The queen's not going to be able to get over there, and the queen may get oh, stuck nice. on a wall here. Great invis on the riders right there, but we'll have to see where the queen. Queen's ability goes off to beat Ooh, through the wall. Beautifully done. 25 seconds. This has got this a chance possible. here. This is possible. It's going to be close. That invis was absolutely clutch. Timed beautifully because those dragon riders are starting to get lower in terms of that HP. But the healers are here to continue to top them up. Okay, they come on, Anthony. Beautifully. 12 seconds left on the clock. Here we go. Few buildings left. I don't know if there's going to be Come enough on, time. Anthony. Less than 10 seconds. Come on, Anthony. Get your team back in this Come game. Come on, Anthony. Three, two, one. The last oh. structure. 99. Oh, oh, no. Look at this. No. Oh, no. The heartbreaker. Oh, he's in oh. shock. He's in. No, he knew. Oh, he Anthony. Knew. I feel your pain, man. I feel. Oh, no. That was such devastation. So close to the three star and oh the look of disappointment that's that's a heartbreaker like the really good plan really well thought out and look at this it was so close but so far oh no you hate to see it paul oh man because that's what they needed to get back into this war you need to immediately reverse that one star answer with a triple of oh. your own oh his you could see his face says it all oh absolute heartbreak and the thing that stood out to me as well as we pull up the scores is the rest of the team there's just that like and yeah. nobody's really talking team captain will come in say a couple of words and this is where a good team captain a good shot I mean shot calling you know still is important here in a game like clash of clans but to build your team morale up and not let right. people get down on themselves this is key here and now if you're chas mac it's just continue to drive in the screws put that nail on the coffin continue to triple here because two more and basically it yeah for ghost this is a huge opportunity we got a, a huge anti two-star ring base here this is a really traditional ring style a lot of those d defenses in the center of that compartment but we've seen a lot of electro dragons doing really well in this we got that flame flinger working down at the bottom which is going to get that air defense out get lots of value remember the flame flinger if it doesn't take any damage its lifespan is about two minutes give or take just a little bit there so it's going to be able to get so much value and help the funneling for these electro dragons a lot of time we're going to see the electro dragons in early we're going to see Rages, Warden ability nice and early, and then a little bit later, Heroes to support. Yeah, I mean, and those E-Drags are obviously a little bit of RNG. I mean, some players tend to stray away from it, and others really own it. And we've seen some fantastic E-Drag plays over the years. Those are the Rages, exactly how you said, but 
yeah, there they go. Now starting to go in. <laughs> you place them so that they're going to get maximum value in terms right. of when they enter, but then also where they exit to maximize the time of the influence under the Rage. Eternal Tome will tank two full waves, two full shots, the barrage there from the Eagle Artillery. That's exactly what you're looking to do here. And here come the freezes as well. More Rages, and this is looking good for Ghost. Great freezes here in the core. If he can keep this Town Hall frozen, the Electro Dragon should have no issue getting it. And we see the King starting right up here at that Red 12 o'clock position. There is a corner Tesla right there. Town Hall finally falls, so the two-star is secured. So it's still going to keep them in that commanding position. Electro Dragons are fading, but we still have full heroes here. We have the King, the Queen, and the World Champion coming hey, in there over there goes. on the left-hand side at 9 o'clock. Yeah, no troll Tesla this time. No crazy last-ditch run across the base. Held on to that last hero to make sure that they were able to secure this. That's a that's a pro move from Ghost right there. That's someone yep. who's been around the block a few that's times. That's also like you have people in your ears. Ghost. The spotter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the Tesla popped up at 9. RC at 9. RC at 9. And they know, and that's when a team plays together for so long. You're able to make those calls, make those shouts, and get it done. And this is going to be a three-star. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, is going to put Chazmac way up. They're going to be up 6-3 uh, to three after two attacks. It's not over, per se, but if you're Empire, you're feeling the pressure here in our first match. And, you know, we haven't seen Chazmac in, like, a month. Right. <laughs> we haven't seen them play since the first ladder. Yeah. It has been a hot minute. And maybe there's some question marks about this team. What was the practice like in their little mini off season as they were chilling, hanging out? But no question marks here so far. They're three for three so far. And, yeah, I mean, looking solid. <laughs> really, really solid. I've, I've met a, some of these guys in person, and they're really humble. That's the nice thing. They're not yeah. overly arrogant. They're super humble. I met them at the Town Hall 12 Cup, uh, Lex Nose Ghost, uh, even Nick from War and Glory. And that, I think that's what helps keep them, you know, level-headed and level-minded going into this war. And, man, just this was a great, another, a great read on these ring bases. We see a lot of uh, Electro Dragons, Drag Clone, just attack that core and destroy it. Spells were beautiful here. I think you called that out. The Rage spell getting through two layers there, mm -hmm. two Eagle shots. Just an amazing read from Gross. Great execution. And Chazmax in the driver's seat now. Yeah, it's going to take, at this point, it, at this point, it's not just in the hands of Empire. Chazmax is going to have to make right. a mistake. And that's never a position you want to no. be in. You never want to be, you know, out of control of your own destiny. You're sitting in the back seat watching in the, you know, and that's, that's never a good spot to be yeah. in. But it's not done yet by any means. Four attacks in, there's still six more to go. And even if you're Empire and you're looking at this, chances of winning now slightly decreased. You yep. still look at this and go, cool, we're still going to pull out our strats. We're still going to try and play this as best we can. Right. Because at the end of the day, this is still a fantastic opportunity to play against one of the best teams in North America. Yeah, and even though the war is looking kind of out of reach, it's not like this is an elimination matchup no, or anything no. like that. This so, is week one. Right, it's week one of the round robin play here. So they can easily bounce back, you know, maybe shake the rush off, shake the nerves off, because we haven't seen them in a while also, you know. So we got a shadow coming in. It looks like a queen charge Lalo, a more traditional old mm -hmm. school attack with that flame flinger. We're seeing a lot of flame flingers in this current meta just because they can get so much value if you can keep damage off of them. Well, I love the idea. It's almost like bringing out like an offensive eagle artillery. And it kind of, it's like that, that counter to the defensive structure, which I think is super cool. And I agree, I, you know, if it's something that a good player, I feel like is going to get so much more value out of this. If you're a new player looking to come in and say, hey, how do I use this? How do I get better with this? Watch what these pros are doing because they're going to put on a clinic with this. And a lot of times what you'll do, you'll see, especially like on these Lalo hits, not only will you see Coco Loons trying to keep any Seeking Air Mines off the healers for the Queen, but you'll also see Coco Loons scouting for any Teslas because that's one thing they can throw that's off true. of, of Flame Flinger as if a Tesla pops up and you're unexpecting it. You want to also keep it out of range of the bows and the mortars. But this Queen is charging into the middle of the base. She's going to have to deal with the Clan Castle. She's under heavy fire here. The King needs to get over to the Scatter just to alleviate some of the pressure on her as this Hound's getting ready to pop and unleash some pups on her. Yeah, with the scatter shot there as well. Pups do pop. Had to blow two rages there to keep the queen up and in it. I think commit another one there as well. I think King Ability is going to come in just to seal the deal. Maybe almost would have wanted to see him pop that a little bit sooner to help reduce the need to maybe use that second or third rage in that instance as the heroes are coming in. And now we're going to look to see where does this Lalo come in from? Because obviously that Town Hall still up, still standing with 50%. It's active. Right, 51% Town Hall activates, and we're going to fly the Lalo right over top of it. Shadow is going to use that Easy. Warden's ability to protect all the balloons, use those haste spells. And I don't think the Rages were a big uh, issue there, because a lot of times you're committing that already in your head. You want to get that Queen through. And here we go, Rage over the Town Hall to get the balloons through, Eternal Tomb to protect. But some of those Easy. balloons weren't protected, but we need them out of the poison as fast as possible. Look, this Queen's still going, Flame Flinger's still going. Queen, Queen. Oh, 
she's hanging on for dear life up here. Need the scatter to go down. Scatter finally pops, and this is going to be a three star from Shadow. Oh, swag spells come out in the middle of the <laughs> base. Shadow knows exactly what's going on. And 99% last time, a little bit of heartbreak, but a little bit of redemption here this time around for Empire. And you said they were one of these teams to watch. They are still showing us why, despite a little bit of a. A little bit of a flub in attack one. <laughs> yeah. They're still looking solid. Right, right. This, this is a really good team. And even that 99%, like, it was, it was one so shot away. It was, it was so one close. queen shot away. He hopefully, was aghast. Uh, like, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite him. So, there are the smiles. Yeah, after that, you've got to be feeling a little bit better. Like, okay, yeah, attack one. Oh, okay, that was kind of yeah. rough. But we've bounced back. We put up a 99%. We put up a three. <laughs> I like the flex. I like the flex. Get, try to get his guys motivated. Get, come on, guys. We got this. We're not out of it. Stay motivated. I love this queen charge. I love the use. And we were, we were talking about in pre-production pre here. The mm. king's always adjacent to the queen with the royal champion, setting up that value. Balloons came in, took down the town hall. And look at that scatter shot or the Flame Flinger, rather, on yep. the scatter shot, stayed up the whole attack, basically. Yeah, I mean, again, maximum value out of that, never under threat, never going to be pressured out, just continuing to deliver value, you know, for Shadow. That entire attack really, really saw That's what Empire needed to not lose hope here right. at this midpoint for them. I mean, they've still put up a really impressive percentage still in the mid-90s, which you look at that in the vacuum, you think, great. I mean, they're still actually over their total average percentage across the entire open leading into this. This is still, on paper, a great war for them, except for that one star right there at the start. And now the, the little bit of pressure is on Chasmac. Can they continue to be perfect? Or will that person? That's not good. But at Never this point, mind. I was going to try it as a story. Maybe they won't start. Maybe, no, no. At this not. point, they don't need to be perfect. You can. No. I don't think they will, to be fair. But you can almost go with a little bit more of a conservative approach here. High two stars, you're still in a commanding spot. They were up three stars before that attack. So even if Pevu doesn't three star here, they're still fine because they're still going to be up two stars, probably plus percentage. Blump's going to come and take out the scatter shot, pull out the clan castle. We got Headhunter, we got a Lava Hound. But the Headhunters did pull the Yeti's way. Okay, scatter shot falls. If that scatter shot didn't fall, that blimp uh, value <laughs> would have been a little bit dicey. So we'll see that queen charge coming in here from the bottom. And I like to think we're going to see that queen try to charge all the way into the town hall. But I think he wanted her going down and around. She's chasing that Lava Hound that was chasing that Yeti. Yeah, so going into that compartment, it's going to make sort of any additional follow ups that little bit more awkward, but we'll keep an eye on this. Able to deal with that quite quickly. Good use of the poison. Rage to make sure the queen stays here. It's not actually hitting the healers right now. A bit of a misplacement. There they go. Finally being able to come in there, keep that queen topped up. No problem at all. Looking towards that town hall. Did get the enemy queen down with that rage, and now he'll get the enemy royal champion, which is a huge issue for Lalo. So getting both those heroes, I, I don't think this was the plan, but I think he can adjust this and still get the queen where she needs to go. Going to have to funnel her into the middle. He's still got... Actually, he didn't bring any wall breaks. That's what I was looking at. So I maybe the plan here is for that queen to go around the exterior and just send the Lalo here for the middle of the base or even the royal champion. It'll be a really interesting play here from Pevu as there's no wall breaker, so the plan isn't unless he tries to cut the queen off and here she, with the king. Yeah, and she went up here, which I'm also not 100% sure if that was also the play. In either case, adjustments will need to be made, but that is the hallmark of a pro player, how you can adjust when things go wrong. Anybody can go in with a game plan, execute the recipe, one, two, three, four, in order, but it's when things don't quite okay. go according. And the queen is going to be able to make her way into the town hall. King is so much value, 43% just with the heroes alone. That's what you're looking for as the rest of this attack comes in. Take down the eagle. Town hall falls. Scatter does not, though. Queen went down. So he cut the queen off there with the king's ability. So the queen had to take that corner, go in and get the yep. town hall. She did go down, but however, she got the nice. town hall. He's got plenty of troops here. R Warden's ability goes off right here, and we'll see... Uh, Royal Champion still yet to be deployed, so he'll have the Royal Champion for clean up here a little bit later. Still has a couple invisibilities for that Royal Champion. This is looking really nice for Pevu. That Warden ability was pixel perfect, denying not only the Seeking Air Mines, but the shots from the Scatter. Kept those balloons up so much longer than they would have otherwise. Invis comes in here as well. But I'm looking Fading at time, but I, and I'm looking at yeah, I'm looking at time, and I'm looking at troops. This one's this one's going to be tight. There was a Tesla farm back over there with the Inferno, just a little bit too much. It was looking really quickly, but they went in there just a little bit unprotected, didn't really have a hound out in front or anything, and they just kind of got blown. But that's okay. They're that's still okay. in a great spot. 94, like still working up percentage. This is what they need. If they're going to falter, said. this is what you said. Right. If they're going to falter, 95% isn't a bad falter. <laughs> that's 5% away from the three star. They're in a commanding position still after three attacks each.
I mean, this is basically exactly how you predicted it. They don't necessarily need to get the triple here. Right. They're going to pull off a high three star. But Lex is actually looking a little bit stressed. <laughs> I think he was hoping for that perfect war. Could you imagine as a statement piece if you could right. pull off a perfect war? in your first one of the mobile this challenge. This one wasn't very far off from Peivu. I think what kind of got him here was the queen going down when she got to the town hall. I think he was hoping to keep that queen up mm. through there, but just a little bit too much. Uh, you see the king just cut her off, pushed her in the middle of the base. I was a little bit worried about that, but then I kind of recognized, oh yeah, king's going to cut her off. And you see here, once that scatter turns on the queen with the uh, bomb and the, infer the poison from the town hall, queen stood no chance. Valiant effort, just not quite the three star, but empire, oh, a little bit of the opening they need. I mean, they still need a lot of help, but a little bit of the opening they needed there. <laughs> Look, I mean, now they have a chance. It's slim, it's fleeting, but there is still a chance. Right, right. I mean, if Chasmac could just continue to deliver triple after triple after triple, that door would have just swung shut. But now it's up to Jesus. What can they do coming into this now, doing that last little bit of scouting? Comms going on in the ears. Scouts and spotters are there. And it all comes down to whether or not they can pull off a triple here, because that'll do wonders to bring them back in this war. So I notice we have five invisibilities here. That usually signifies a blizzard. The super wizards inside of the blimp made invisible to get some value. And we might see that come right here at the town hall. And then we have a golem, so we'll see a hero kill squad coming a little bit later. All right, so there's the invisibility. There uh, we have a rage spell going down, so we should see those super wizards firing. There we go. Just going to look to clean up this compartment. He will also pull out the clan castle troops, so he'll be able to deal with those with those heroes with that little bit of a kill squad. So going to be a little bit of a heavier commitment from the heroes here. Going to pull trying to pull that Lava Hound to the top to maybe deal with it with the Queen right now. Yeah, I mean, then that's exactly how you do it. That's the Blizzard executed to perfection. Still has some spells left in the tank for the back half of this attack as well, but that key structure is down. That is your first star accrued, no problem. We don't have to worry about what happened in attack number one. I love the play also to bring five invisibilities because sometimes you'll need three or four but you bring that fifth as an insurance policy in case those wizards go side. Yep. But if you don't use it, it's fine because you can use it for your royal champion. You can use it for your queen. You can use it, we saw on Dragon Riders earlier. So yep. it's a really nice spell to have in your back pocket if you don't use it. And here comes that golem to support the queen. Kings in through the bottom side. So we're actually going to try to get, like, like with the unicorn, almost a mini queen walk here with no healers. Trying to get in here and just get a lot of value. Maybe even get to that enemy queen and take her down as well as the king works towards that scatter. Yeah, Wallbreaker comes in as well, makes his pathing a little bit easier. And yeah, that, hey, Unicorn's doing work, keeping that queen up. Queen's exactly. almost at full. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what you're looking for here. King ability pops, gonna look to take down the enemy queen as the balloons come on in. Not getting targeted yet by the eagle as well. So they, oh, there it is, coming in. Eternal Tome opting not to be used yet this early. So let's take a decent chunk of damage to start things off. And holding onto that warden ability just that little bit longer. Hey, Zeus gets the enemy queen down, pops his queen's ability. Uh, did he lose his warden? Or no, no wait, his warden's right there. Okay, that, Got that distracted, was, though. I was a little worried. Yeah, I, I, I lost it there for a second. Royal Champions in the middle going to help out with that multi-target Inferno. Got to get to that scatter. If you can get that scatter down, things are looking really nice. Freeze spell on it. Queen still... That queen's still up here, Paul. What is going on? Hey, Zeus with the answer. I mean, this unicorn, low-key MVP, as the balloons are still... Wow. Still rolling on through, and this is clean. 35 seconds left in the hit, and I think this is going to be a triple. That queen went almost dead, back to full, almost oh, down, yeah. ability, back. <laughs> like, just back and forth. Great play by Jesus, and that 99% is it's, it's looking more and them. more devastating. Haunting them oh, right man. now. Great play. I love that attack. Great use of that golem to tank for the queen. You know these guys are like, guys, we're this close. We're this wow. close. And that's what I was saying about Empire. Really good team. I was I was genuinely shocked to see that one start out the gate because this is what we know they can do. And, you know, I sort of talked about this a little bit. I'd recognize these names just that little bit less. You're going up against some of the most veteran players in North America. And maybe that's first time on the big stage. The cameras are on. And maybe a little bit of those nerves came in there just a touch with that execution. And of course, some of the troops maybe not doing exactly what you hope they did. But I love how the bounce back has come out here. This is where they're showing why and how they made it here to the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge. It was no fluke. It was no accident. 99, 100, 100, back to back. And if Chazmac stumbles a, a mid 80%, even low 80% two star here, there's a potential opening to come back. The door is open, but we've seen Chazmac 
their one miss was a 95. They're putting up high numbers Story here. Storylines. <laughs> Storyline. Come on. Hey, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it real here. I'm, I'm going to be right. honest. Right. Max is coming in with the E-Drags. Uh, this is an attack that can go sideways. Uh, you sometimes yep. see those E-Drags kind of scatter. But he's going to use a Rage with one Electro Dragon just to cut off this funnel. Nice use of the bowlers to bounce through there. And then he's just going to run everything up the middle. Now, there are some pathways here. Okay, you want to talk stories. There are some pathways on the side where these dragons could go around. But we'll see what he decides to do. If he's going to stick with that Stone Slammer, maybe switch to a blimp a little bit later. And we'll see where that King and Queen end. Here comes the Stone Slammer. So no switch there. But King and Queen down the side. So here, I, here's what I talked about. Those dragons are starting to go around. Yeah, but the bulk of them still stayed with that Grand Warden. And the thing that you have to remember, too, is it's not just this Eternal Tome. It's not just that invincibility. It's also the Life Aura that's supporting them as well. They just have more HP when they're in that area. But that Town Hall is still looking mighty lonely. Here we go. Oh, there's the freeze. Grand World Champion. Hello? Spinning. Uh -oh. She's spinning in the uh -oh. tornado. Uh-oh. Oh, oh the he worst was game to... of roulette. He was trying to keep the Hound away here. No, 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 no. Oh, we can see his reaction. Yeah, he, this isn't going right. This isn't going right here. The, the, she's not going to get the top. No, this, no, no, this is no, a one star. no, this is a one star ball. There's no way this gets there. He's got nothing for the town hall. I oh. said an 85% two star, two star, guys. What is going I, on? Oh, no. Oh, there's no way. There's no way. But not with the battle builder, too. No, yeah, there's no way this there's gets no there. There's no way. The, I, I don't know how healthy those E drags are, but with the multi, the bow, matter. the it town matter. hall. Yeah, there's too matter. much. The one e drag falls, the other one's very low. That's this be a one is star. Empire is right back in the game. <laughs> Empire is right back in the game. We're going to have a 9 9 ball game. Empire could be winning right now, Paul. What is going on at the Mobile Challenge right now? Look, going back to the old classic, the Empire strikes back here at the midpoint of the war. That base. I looked at it, and I'm like, that's not something I'm used to seeing too much. Those big, wide-open areas split up the E-Drags, didn't keep them concentrated, and, well, somebody just noped out after that one. Oh, Less oh. ideal. Oh, no. Those... Oh, Lex. Oh, no. Lex. Lex. You that's the face it. of a man but who is... You, you see this in this base layout, <laughs> and I think maybe the better play here is go a little more conservative. Save that blimp. I talked about this in the last attack. Go conservative. Blimp that town hall. Make sure you get the town hall but down. He with the stone slammer. He was so confident. That's a confidence play. But all those buildings on the side, he did a, a good job funneling a little bit with that bowler. But I think the heroes would have been better swell, served on that 12 o'clock side to funnel that down. There was just so many buildings to pad those electro dragons out. Didn't get the eagle. And then the world champion had no chance. The queen stayed up. She caught the tornado. And then the hound comes over and distracts. It was just devastation for Max. And we're... We're back to all squares on stars. I believe Chazmax should be up a little bit on percentage. Be close though. This is anyone's ball game, Paul. Okay, let's, this, look, let's look at the scores. Oh my, this is. Show wow. me the scores. <laughs> Show me the scores. Wow. One percent. One percent. One percent. And oh, the one percent that. Ninety-nine. Oh no, I don't want to say. It. Let's say it. Ninety-nine percent feels well. The ninety-nine percent feels but devastating. You've been, but you've been given a chance though. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that could have been that huge make or break moment, but instead, Chazmac has given you a gift. They said, hey, let's make this a match, but we still have two incredible heavy hitters coming up next. And this is where this 1% becomes even more important because if both of these teams triple, Chazmac will take it. Right, right. And if you're Empire, you're thinking three star all the way. You're yeah, bringing out you have to, most you aggressive. You have to three yeah. star. You don't go conservative here. You have to lay it out on the table because then if Chaz Mac three stars, you still lose, but at least you gave it your all here. This war is, it's, I didn't, exp I didn't, exp oh, what? this is what? sick. No, this what? is what? sick. What a way Smoky to start Bear, What you got for us? We Woo! got another kill squad, Blizzard Lalo. So again, we're going to take down the town hall. Got to be aware of that bomb tower. It can take Tesla's. out the Blizzard. All right, Tesla Farms, not a big deal here. The Wizards will blow right through that. And then we'll see that Kill Squad with the Golem, with the heroes come in again. They seem to like that here. Uh, bomb Tower is going to go down right there. Town Hall falls. Beautiful value from the Blizzard. Now let's see where he sets up the uh, little bit of a Kill Squad here to work in. You'd like to think it's going to go towards uh, the Queen or Royal Champion side to get one of those heroes down. Should be the play here. Just make this uh, this Lalo a little bit more effective to close things out. But this is where things start to get quiet. 
And this is where the spotters are going to be key. Your last minute plans, any adjustments, trying to get as much value as you possibly can. And this is where the clock becomes an interesting thing because this is constant pressure at your back. You need to know exactly when to pull the trigger to initiate the next phase of this attack. Oki's trying to get that queen to move down towards that 9 o'clock position. Think about it as a clock, guys. 12 o'clock is the very top, 6 o'clock the very bottom, 9 and 3 on the side. So 9 o'clock is that 3, or the left-hand side, rather. <laughs> 9 o'clock is the 3 o'clock side. 9 o'clock is that left-hand position. He's trying to get the queen to go over there, get in here, and get a lot of value. Get that scatter shot down, get the enemy get the queen down. the tower down as well. Yeah, the golem goes inside here, but it will still tank the expos, which is still massive. King's going to pop out here. If the king stays in, that would have been huge. Queen should still have no problem getting the scatter and the enemy queen down as that golem, the golemites were tanking right there. All right, world champions in as well. There it is. Yeah, yeah, we, we all right, headhunter's gonna take down the queen, making sure he gets done, and here comes the Lalo. He'll have two back-end headhunters along with that royal champion with an invisibility still in hand. Yeah, will they pop the warden ability here? No, we'll tank the first round from the eagle artillery. Doing pretty decent damage here. Looking towards the spells, the three hastes need to be used to absolute perfection tank their way through the multi-warden ability should come out just about now as we're going to see this next phase of the attack coming on through these balloons they are so close I mean, like a stiff breeze i feel like knocks them Freedom over is. nicely done uh, gets the rc in there exactly where they need to be made the the single invisible not the end oh. of the world because the balloons can overwhelm it uh needed the the scatter to lock onto the hound locked onto the balloons Hound's still know. up, providing a little bit of tanking. This is close. I don't know. King's still got ability here, though. So King, but with two singles, this is going to be tough. Oh, I don't want to give up on it. Smokey, it's close. It's, it's close. really, really close. King pops ability. He's going to get through the wall. Is that single locked onto the King? No, it's locked onto something else around it. So if King can get in there, like one of the... It's close. It's close. It's close. Single goes down. Got a great little squad of minions and pups on the outside. Okay. Come on, Smokey. 16 seconds, though, and there's a lot of big, chunky buildings still oh, to go through. King call. is here. I don't know. This one's going to be tight. Come this on, Smokey. King's working. R Warden's working with him. Six seconds. Six seconds. The pups and the minions are working so. right there. Three, I don't think so. Two. No. One. No. Another 99 for Empire. Oh, no. 299s for Empire! What is, oh, devastation. Great plans, just a little too slow. Hey, GG to Smokey Barrett. Well thought what out, well attack. executed. Two attacks so close. So it all comes down, the storyline. We, yeah. we, we talked yeah. about this guy so much today. Lex, it's all on your shoulders after this, but Smokey Barrett, look at this. That King stayed up the whole attack with his ability That's to so the uncommon. Edge. That yeah. is so uncommon. Ooh. Man, the, the, this war has so much emotions to it, Paul. This is going to be a great finish. These are the wars I love. It's coming down to the very last attack. Three star, done. No matter what, it's done. But if you don't three star, that percentage is going to come in a little bit tricky. It's going to be a, have to be pretty high 90s, I'm pretty sure. 0.3% is what separates these teams right now. So I think if they come in at 98 or above, so basically those 3%, that's what it comes down to. But this is the player we highlighted. We congratulated him on his wedding. We'll see in other sports, wife buff is a thing. That's a, we'll see if it applies here for Lex now is coming in. The last attack here, attack here for Chaz Mac Gaming. It's not quite a triple or go home, but it's pretty darn close. Good luck, Lex Nose, as he's coming in with a Queen Charge Lalo. So the Queen's going to work in through here. We do have a blimp selected at the current time. A couple of invisibility spells. So it looks like the blimp's going to go right in for that Town Hall, which will also pull out the Clan Castle. Oh, it actually drops it early here. Okay. So it doesn't want to activate the Town Hall, but still wants the full CC <laughs> pool. Gets down that Inferno. Gets down the Warden Pedestal with the Yeti Mites. And the Queen is trucking along here with the first Rage deployed. I mean, why activate the Giga Tesla if you don't have to this early on in the attack? I like the play here. It's those small little efficiencies that separate these absolute heavy hitters. King comes down here towards the bottom. Pups pop. Poison? No, not even need to worry about it. The Queen will clean this up all in good time. And then we get to see where the rest of this attack goes. Coco Loon to make sure that the rest of this Queen push is going to look A-OK. -okay. Working through here. King's going to just create that path along the side, so the queen's gonna have nowhere to go but up and in. It looks like that compartment behind that builder hut right there is open, so she should be able to go in. Headhunter comes in to assist with the enemy king. Queen will have no problem walking in there, getting down the town hall. From there, it's still a long path. We have not a lot of balloons, uh, and we got both scatter shots, both queen and royal champion, along with the eagle and a single, so this one's not over, but he's off to a great start. 
I did get word from our, our eagle eye in the sky, 96% or better will be the victory here for Jazz Mac Gaming. But if I if I know Lex knows, and at this point I've casted Lex a decent amount, he's not going for 96, 97, 98, or 99. He's going for 100. Right, right. And it does have to be that two-star, which is secured there. So there now is. the 96 or higher will win this war. Royal Champion got great value along that right side, but does not take out the enemy Royal Champion. Now his Queen's under pressure, loses her ability. ability. She'll get down the enemy Royal Champion right there. And he's just got to work here. Seven balloons remaining. Just got to work through these buildings. 47 seconds, 96%. That's the mark, Paul. Can we get there? That's where we're going. 72% and climbing. 39 seconds left on the clock. Cleanup coming in towards the outside. Clean up the trash structures. But the queen is still trucking. Good use there of that freeze. Keep the scatter shot held up a little bit longer. Taking down the sweeper, too, which low-key is actually going to be a big factor. You've awarded oh, this full HP. 93%. That's going to be it. Heads off. Hands this off. Is tripled. He's just relaxing. He's just, Oh, he's ready to go on the plane. <laughs> I get it. He wants to go to Poland. I see what's ah. going on here. GG uh, Lexnos clutch hit the captain <laughs> clutches it up three star 100% getting the victory He'll, is he ready to go to Poland or is he ready to go on his hunting move <laughs> I mean, maybe they're one and the same. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how this is going. Well, but honeymoon in Poland? Hey, it's a it's a beautiful country, you know. Yeah, yeah. Go 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 do some hiking. Go play some clash. Good times all around. But uh, Captain Clutch coming in there at the end, nicely done from Lex securing the triple, leaving no question here for Chaz Mac. And look, when this war first started, we started things off with that one star. I'm gonna be honest. You know, we obviously keep a brave face on, but I was a little bit worried. <laughs> yeah. And in the middle of that, that war came through an empire. Well, they, they struck back, the, the, the base held up, the one star came through, and then we had a war on our hands. But still, in the end, the clutch came out. Yeah, I didn't think there was any way this war would be this close. We had a one star, we had a basically a 2% war because we yeah. had two 99s here from Empire. GG to both these squads. Guys, we're gonna see more action from both these guys. And that's just, that's our first war of the day. Imagine what we have in store for you guys. 96% for Empire 11 stars, 97% 12 stars for Chazbeck. GG's. I mean, look, I'm kind of already a little bit tired, slightly sweaty, and we've, we're only <laughs> one war in, okay? Like, if that's any indicator of what the next four weeks are going to be like, we are in for an absolute treat. Because I say this, I know I say this every year. I sound slightly like a broken record, but when I started, you know, casting this game back in 2018, if a team got like 75% consistently, we're like, yeah, good job. <laughs> Great job, everybody. Yeah. And now it's like, if you're not knocking out 95% on the regular, something is going horribly wrong. Like right. these teams are pulling out 12, 13, 14 stars consistent. We've seen perfect wars. Yeah. And that's, that's wild. Man, what a great war, guys. Make sure you stick around for more stats and analysis. You guys are watching the Snapdragon Pro Series. Uh, I got the number two, number one fan and number two fan for Chaznak with me. <laughs> the Snapdragon Pro Series is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Monster Energy, DHL, and the U.S. Air Force. I'm on the miss and snap any minute casually when it stop tripping on me stop dissing on me I got a dream can't take it from me my fire's burning I'm always learning tell me where to go man I'm on a journey I can't explain it I get excited keep a 300 King Leonidas strap in cause it's gonna be a long ride working on me every single day and night there comes a time when your worlds will collide if it's holding you back, push it right to the side. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get here. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get here. I don't got the time. Put me in, coach. I've been going hard. Time to let it show. Everything raw. Give it to me now. Let me have a spot. Man, it's going down. Gotta get it here. I don't want to wait. Take what I want. Then I go train. Gotta get a win. I won't lose the game. This is my year. I ain't gonna break. Strap in, cause it's gonna be a long ride. Working on me every single day and night. 
there comes a time when your worlds will collide. If it's holding you back, push it right to the side. On another level, I will never settle. Mind over matter, get the gold medal. On another level, I will never settle. Mind over matter, get the gold medal. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get it Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get here. Welcome 99. to the place where dreams come true. Where everything you want can be yours. If and only if you're willing to work for them. You're willing to hurt for them. But most of all, you're willing to be first for them. Ha, look. I'm going straight to the top. I don't know how I would stop, like it or not. I got some goals that I'm hitting. You hear what I'm spitting? It's hot. Look what I got. Whole lot of passion and pain. The road to success is insane. Stay out my An oh, absolute nail biter to start off the challenge here for the Snapdragon Pro Series. Back and forth, one stars, triples, 99%. But in the end, Chaz Mack takes the victory here in our first war. The round robin has begun, and it started with a bang. I'm in Verum. That's Eric. And woo-wee, what a way to start things off. Yeah, I didn't, uh, definitely didn't expect that, especially, well, I think it was the anti-two-star bases that really were the deciding factor there because uh, those anti-two-star bases were what caused these one-stars and gave Empire gave me the chance, but let's break down this attack here from Nick. This is one of the attacks that I personally have been using a lot in my own wars here. It's a new strategy, and if you haven't seen this one, it is an absolute powerhouse against these anti-two-star bases. What we do is we just throw down a couple of Yetis and Super Wizards in each of the quarters there to funnel, and then we just set everything right up the gut of the base here. Notice how there are very little, if any, spells at all being invested into the Yetis because they're basically just sacrificial troops anyways that just do more damage as they die. So that works out so absolutely perfect. So just be able to make this lane to go right up the gut of the base and in towards that town hall. Sets up so you can go after the majority of the splash damage. You just put that Royal Champion in to go pick up a little bit more splash damage. And now if you look over here, we have just two wizard towers left on the base here. And that's not a lot when you have five freezes and all of those bats to move your way through. So as long as the Yetis make it to town hall and you invest that one rage and that ward ability to get them there with them just providing a wall of shield for those other heroes, this cleans house against a large variety of bases, but it's particularly effective against these anti two-star bases, which we saw a lot of out of Empire Gaming. And I do expect to see the strategy more as we play our way through this challenge season because it's quickly taken over the meta as one of the base breakers for those anti two star bases. So maybe any team who's struggling against those anti twos, this might be one of the ones that you want to take into your own wars here. So, I mean, this is pretty wild that they are able to make that uh, near comeback right there in Verum. And uh, what a war. I mean, look, Nick, clearly shipping with DHL, delivering those bats exactly where they needed to be. Five free stars doing it just right. What a solid start off to the day. And speaking of Nick, I hear we actually have Glitter standing by with an interview to learn a little bit more about that fight. That's right. I am standing by. I do have Nick. Very excited to actually get to talk to you here because we just got to watch your attack as well. And Eric has to know, why didn't you use the Super Witches? Um, the Super Witches have kind of been struggling since 
the start of the year, the base meta has kind of changed, so it's not as effective, effective as it was last year. So I've had to take the time and learn some other stuff. Okay, well, it clearly worked. And I've got to know, you were obviously the first attack for Chaz Mac. After you saw that one star to kind of kick everything off, what was going through your mind? Um, we were pretty hyped. We put a lot of work into the bases. Ghost especially, he built... He's built a ton of bases, so huge shout out to him. We definitely wouldn't have got that one star defense without him. And then the, the base I hit, I already three starred before in a pr previous four. So once I saw that base scrolling through the bases, I knew I could just hit it again, rerun the same plan because it was crushing both times. Love that. I love the confidence there. Now, I have to ask him because we've mentioned it a few times on the desk as well. Were there any concerns on your guys' part? with the fact that since you had auto qualified through, it had been a while since you've kind of competed with everybody. Um, well, we do a lot of leagues, so we continue to get the same amount of reps, as, of reps as, as everybody else. So it's not really too much of a concern that we qualified first, because in the end of the day, it also gave us more time to prep bases as well. Well, it definitely paid off. You guys looked very strong. It did get a little bit close there though. Were, were there any moments throughout the entire war where you were like, oh, no, this is a little bit too close for comfort? Um, I mean, they had 299, so it definitely could have been a lot closer. We also had that one star, which was unfortunate. But we knew Lex sitting from that coffee shop in Hawaii on his honeymoon. <laughs> we had faith in him, so we knew he'd get it done. Well, most certainly did get it done. Before I let you go, I want to give you an opportunity here to do some shout outs before I let you go. Um, shout out to our, all our fans. Shout out to Lex as well. He just married his wife in Hawaii. They're on their, or he just mar he got married to his wife. He's on a honeymoon in Hawaii. Shout out to the organization as well for supporting us behind the scenes and all of their base builders. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Great first war. We'll be seeing you soon. Thank you. All right. We heard you guys talking about it on the desk and I'm glad that he brought it up because you were wondering where he might be going with that neck pillow. He's already on the honeymoon. He's there in Hawaii right now while competing in this. Are you uh, kidding me? You gotta love the commitment. I mean, that's what you got. It's, when you're a clasher, you're gonna clash on the go. I mean, I've done that. I don't know how many times. Uh, Maybe that's what his wife, his new wife, likes about him because he commits. <laughs> he commits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. That was clever. I will give it to you. But after that first match, there's going to be a lot to live up to for our next upcoming war. And that, of course, is going to be between Fuzzy Wuzzy and Omnipotence. And we'll start things off by talking about Fuzzy Wuzzy. Obviously, fantastic name. Yeah, we, we've had a lot of fun with their name. We've seen them play. They can bring this. They can bring it to the table. We got Soham, Kevin267, Beck29, Sir Will, and Stamus. These guys have been around the uh, Snapdragon pro series scene for a while now uh, and just getting a look at them getting their game faces on getting ready to roll you gotta think that they're pretty excited to be here eric yeah, a lot of veteran players on this team it's a new name for the team love what they did with the creativity on the name love to say it but uh, this is a powerhouse team guys do not sleep on this team i would say that they are the favorite in this match here they are just one of the top teams around the scene but we've seen them uh in our earlier splits and they didn't get obviously qualified right through here. I really just like the, the team effort of this. Like, uh, I think it was the interview with Stamus where, you know, they're just happy to be here. They're excited to play, but they're going to give it their all. They're not just, you know, oh, we, we made it this far. No, they're going to go all out. They're going to give you everything they have. They, they know how to read bases. They know multiple meta strategies. They know how to put the right attacker in that right position to succeed. So I think we're in store for a really good war here. Not only the meta attacks, but when you have players like Soham who are just absolutely known for how creative they are, then you're going to see a little bit of spice in it as well. And we'll we'll see what they've got for us. But I mean, like Stay Away, also a really, really seasoned player there. You always see him around Twitch on all the live streams, showing up to Carbon Fins uh, viewer wars and stuff all the time. Always right, putting up yep. some crazy stuff there. These guys are just absolute powerhouse and they're absolutely dedicated to this game. I've played against them personally and they are tough, but not to take away from their opponents. Oh my goodness, it's omnipotence! Eric, what? Oh, Eric, you introduced them, I'm scared. Hold me! <laughs> We've got Fetus, we got Genghis Clan, we got whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> Oscar, Gonzalez, and Pika as Galen right there. Let's see if they can make it happen here. This is a team that's been around the pro scene for quite a while as well, but they haven't made it that big stage, and maybe this is their chance to get there this uh this challenge season. So here we see them on the cameras getting ready here. Game face is on as they get ready and plan their initial attacks here as we get ready to start. 
game face. Uh, that's what I love having the cams on for the mobile challenge. Get to see those players, those live reactions, but also see them prepping, getting that game face ready. And these guys are a strong team. They've been around for quite a while. You mentioned that as well. Oh, I've played against some of these guys as well in these mobile challenges, and it, they are a tough team to go up against as well. They understand the meta. They understand how to adapt when they need to, and they know what's strong and when to use it. Absolutely, and they did make it through in split two there. They were in the lower bracket there, so they, they kind of snuck in, in the end. They're one of the lower seeds here, and I think they definitely want to go out here and show everybody that they can, they can, they belong here. You know what I mean? Right. Especially against a, a big name like Fuzzy Wuzzy, even though they this is a new name for them, but it's a very, very seasoned team that they're going against here. This is going to be a killer match here, and if they want to make a name for themselves, if they really want to make a name for themselves, this is when they need to do it. So here we go. We got the head-to-head -head stats here, and it's looking like oh. it is in the favor of Fuzzy Wuzzy at a 12.39 star average, and over on Omnipotence, a little bit lower there. They may need to really step it up, but honestly, it's not that different here. They're pretty close. Yeah, less than a star difference, percentage less than a half a percentage point away. So this one could be anyone's ball game. And like, the, you don't take away from these clans just because of the, you know, the goofy fuzzy wuzzy wuzzy. This is a serious <laughs> team. These guys know how to play Clash of Clans. They've been together for a long time under other names, playing in these challenges. They know how to bring it. Not goofy. It is not. I, I mean, a little it bit. It is intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're bears. Wuzzy, wuzzy, wuzzy. <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely terrifying. But of course, the final piece of that puzzle is the record for when these two have played, but they haven't. Oh. It is a 0 0 clean slate. So you thought I was going to help you out with some more additional information? I'm not. <laughs> That's all you get. <laughs> well. But, you know, even if it was lopsided, it's esports. Anything can happen. All it takes is one attack, one defense, one war and anything could be shifted, Eric. Yeah, and these teams, honestly, I'd say the, the overall experience at the competitive stage here kind of favors into Lost Meta, or they were Lost Meta game, now they're fuzzy, wuzzy, wuzzy, and they are going to get some dipdens who's been at all these big events as well. They've been to the competition here, uh, playing through the ladders every single season all the way through. They're a really solid team. Absolutely, which of course means the final time. Before we go in, I get to ask you guys, chat, what you think? Let us know down below who you think is going to be coming out in this next war on top. Will it be Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy or Omnipotence? It's going to be another headbanger, and I'm excited to get into it because the next war is right Woo! around the corner. It's ready to go, so Bash and Eric, take it away. Look, all I'm saying is, I'm not going to be able to talk after this if the wars keep going the way that first war did. <laughs> so we're getting ready to go. Here we go with our first attack from Omnipotence. we got Oscar Gonzalez coming in, and it looks like a traditional uh, hybrid here. Queen Charge hybrid even has the Siege Barracks selected, which is a traditional thing. Going to generally Queen Charge out the Town Hall or create some pathing. Uh, yeah, right there, right there we go. Queen going right towards that Town Hall. The nice part about that storage in that one building compartment is after he takes it down, he can wall break that open corner length wall there in the middle and get the queen to go Ooh, into the down hall. There we go. He actually gets the wall break before the storage goes down. Sometimes a little bit risky there if the wall breaker wants to go over to the storage compartment, but he had a giant that he deployed before the queen did so we can delay the healers until after that air defense went down and he's on a good push here towards the town hall and he just needs to make sure that he handles the cc properly because look at the space seat of the town or the cc and that single inferno it could end up making him have to fight both of them simultaneously and here we go queen the queen gets to the town hall no problem uh, but like you mentioned that inferno is going to be tricky he does have an invisibility does have free spells pretty standard for a queen charge hybrid but remember that town hall poison that's on the ground that little orange aura there will slow down the queen's attack rate so she'll attack just a little bit slower while in that while also taking damage now she's in the single inferno got to be careful if there's a lava hound inside of the CC, it could spell big, big trouble here. He will potentially need to use invisibility to bypass this, these uh, troops here to get into that single inferno a little bit faster. And there we go, puts the freeze down for now. Here comes the hound. Keep an eye out for a potential invisibility here. That can get the queen to bypass the hound for a moment there and skip forward to the inferno, but he's not using it. He may just have to go to ability here to get through the hound and into the single inferno. It does go full beam. He does pop his ability. The poison's well placed. And here comes that big hybrid surging in from that right side. The hybrid is the hogs and the miners with the warden and the royal champion. We also use the king with the barracks to funnel out. Now that's all working up the middle. We 
saw the Warden's ability. The Queen survived that Lava Hound and that single, getting towards that Eagle Artillery. This is looking really strong. Still has a Rage Spell King ability, Royal Champion ability. This is a strong push through the back end of this base. He just needs to get his way through this defensive Queen. He go uses that invisibility now, since he didn't have his ability from earlier, since he used to get through the Hound. So they're interchangeable right there. The Queen does end up taking the defensive Queen down. That frees up a lot of threats here off of the Miners as they continue to circle through. But that Molten Inferno is still standing in the middle. The Scattershot with a big oh. Tesla farm. He's got a lot of work to go through, but he's still holding the King ability, and that King ability surging forward can help and not only protect and tank for all these miners as they make their approach, but his Queen can also do some work with the same function on the other side. Queen gets the multi, and we got a herd of miners up there with the King. Uh, King's going to go ahead and path in there. A little bit of a Tesla farm, so it's going to be tricky. The miners should cut in here and help start working. King bounces back. That's what he needs, but if oh, those miners are taking so much damage, I think they're about all gone. It's going to be a tough compartment to finish. Yeah, the queen was just temporarily holding some of the tanking of a lot of those defenses. And rather than switching over to the king as he made his approach, they immediately switched over to the to Come the miners out. instead. He's... Come on oh, out! He's oh. no. <laughs> no, he's, he's, <laughs> that that scattershot might have gone down there. If he got it down, he could have chained through the expo and potentially got the Tesla down and went to a time fail. But one way or another, is not going to happen for him. An opening miss for Omnipotence and an uh, early opportunity for Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy. A 96%, so still really high percentage on that miss, but that back end Tesla farm with the queen, the enemy queen kind of gave him problems. She danced away from his queen once he dropped that invisibility spell and got a little bit more damage onto his queen. So maybe she could have stayed up a little bit longer, but a two-star defense, if you're Fuzzy Wuzzy, that's exactly what you're looking for. Or mm -hmm. wait, was that Fuzzy Wuzzy attacking? I'm so confused. What's oh, wait, yeah. <laughs> Did we have it backwards the yeah, whole attack? Yeah, I had it backwards oh. the whole attack. Oh, well, well I guess an uh, early opportunity for Omnipotent then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bye -bye. guys. Sorry. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you a, they'll just pass off the credit to that two dollar start of the team here and see if they can make oh, it no, happen. No, wait. Wait. Yeah. No, I think the stats are messing with them. <laughs> that are, was definitely Omnipotence. That was Oscar from Omnipotence. Now we got Stamus from Fuzzy Wuzzy with a Queen Charge Lala. Eric, I don't, I don't know what's going on. You figure it out. <laughs> it's okay, Basher. We'll get through this. We have a queen charge coming in against the uh, town hall at the very top of this base here. Is this the kill squad queen charge Lalo attack that we've been seeing throughout the meta a lot here? A lot of the guys out of this gaming group here that combine the War and Glory, Chaz Mac, and the Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy are all following similar strategies here, and we'll see if they can make it happen here. We have this log launcher getting all the way to the core of the base, so the Warden goes off to protect the Royal Champion all the way into the core, and he'll get the CC pull, and this Queen, she's going to have to go all the way around to the Town Hall because he's basically used up all of his investment into this big kill squad, and this Queen Lisa, charge. Need a poison down on those super minions. I thought we would see the Warden ability to protect the King a little bit, but we did it. Right. They came in a little bit later. I think that's what we normally see on these log launcher charges. Why are we not poisoning the minions? There we go, Stamus. Get it. There we go, buddy. All right, so minions are poisoned. Queen's going to... The goal here is to really get all the way over to the Town Hall because everything's committed to this opener. You don't have the support from the Warden for that Lalo phase. It's a really small Lalo. Ooh, but look at this, this Multi-Inferno almost, the Queen almost diverts yeah. out to the outside channel there and misses the Multi-Inferno, but she ducky did duck back in. He drops in a couple of blues to correct her pathing. He's now got to make his way through the jump. walls here. He's got the jump that'll get him through and he's still holding on to a wall breaker. I don't know what he's going to use that for, but he needs the Queen to take the Town Hall and he still has plenty of spell support and the Queen ability to make that happen and plenty of time here as well. So the Lalo shouldn't have that much work to do once they start in from the right side. Yeah, it's almost, uh, you almost call it a cleanup Lalo because this is really all focused on the Queen Charge, the heroes with that Log Launcher getting most of the base down. And we're seeing that right here. We're at 62% Queen should have no problem getting the Town Hall with her ability. Uh, should actually be able to get that Royal Champion down. And here's going to come that Lalo from the back end just to clean up this little bit of remaining base. Yeah, this now he needs to get this uh, Royal Champion down as these Hound ends up pulling her up to the top corner of the base there, but the pups might actually turn on her and they quickly take her down. He's got the rage to carry him into the multi inferno, so the balloons quickly swarm into that, but he still needs to make his way into the top compartment of the base there. But with that town hall poison already faded most of the way while the queen was delayed to go through it, she should be able to move in there with her ability and this is looking like it's gonna be a triple. He's got plenty of cleanup here, still has some spells, goes ahead and swags that queen able to get through a little bit faster and throws down the last of the balloons to go pick up a couple of the defenses up in the top corner. A nice attack here from Stamus and a new attack that is 
recently joined the meta, coming out swinging here for Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy and putting them into an early lead here, albeit it is only a four building and one star advantage. Any advantage they'll take. You, you gotta feel good out after that attack, though. This is attack. I tried this one because I got curious. I, I oh, saw. I always want to start it. <laughs> that, that's what I was gonna say. Uh, I was trying this in Legends League, and it is mm -hmm. a huge risk because you're usually starting all the way across the base and trying to get that queen all the way through there, and that's what sets these players apart. Getting that queen from the six o'clock position all the way up to twelve to finish this base off is incredible, and. You really can't rely too much on that Lalo to get the Town Hall down. Really, mm -hmm. if you're going Lalo at the Town Hall, things have gone sideways. You're panicking. You're hoping <laughs> just to save a two-star. Right. And then you end up with a one-star and 15 trophies, and your day's over in Legends. I think I have, like, my hit rates on that attack there, I would say is about a, I'd say 75% chance that I get a one star. <laughs> Not a three star, a one star. This attack is really risky, but they are so confident yeah. with it, and it does really it, it really uh, levels a lot of bases especially those diamond style bases like we yeah. saw it used on there yeah it, it's super fun super high risk but that's that's having the confidence that's being here before you have the confidence to take that risk and make it happen for your team and we're gonna have phoenix coming in with the super bowler smash our first look at super bowlers here today for omnipotence they're down a star only a few buildings so not out of this by any stretch of the imagination i mean it's only the second attack so i can't say anyone would be out of it after that last war that's crazy Absolutely, and this is a kind of an odd uh, approach here for a Super Bowl of Smasher, going with the Queen charge rather than a typical Warden walk that we see this deck normally start with. And he's, he's got a blimp, which even adds even more interesting factors to it. So an abnormal approach here for a Super Bowl of Smash, and we'll see what we can do with it. The only thing I'm really worried about is that multi, but he's going to invest the blimp into the multi Inferno. So that is immediately dealt with here, and that blimp is going to make it all the way to the compartment. Does he rage it up? Yes, he does. He'll go ahead and rage it up there and get that multi down. And now the funnel is absolutely solid, and it didn't really matter which way the queen went, one way or another with the symmetrical base there. She was going to go somewhere that he can meet up with her, with the king and the witches, and now the super bowlers. Has a clan castle pulled also, so can deal with that with the queen charge. We got the super minions. We need a poison on the super. Can we poison <laughs> super minions today, guys? Come on! You're gonna stress me out. All right, there we go. Super bowlers are in. Poison's down, and everything's got a nice path through here. We have a jump spell. We got plenty of rages. Three rages, two freezes. So he's really just got to get everything to the town hall here. So that's king ability, warden ability to get them all the way over there. Absolutely, and this uh, strong push of the Super Bowlers, as oh. long as they can get the healer transfer, are good. But look <laughs> at the healers. The healers are partially going down with the Queen. Only a little bit there, but it's a really light path for her down there, so she'll be all right here. You just need to get the rest of the healers to transfer over and forward into the other Super Bowlers so they can get this Town Hall down and not have any problems up on the top side. Our ability goes off. I'm just watching the pathing here. Mm -hmm. They should go right over to the... Healers are on him with the Rage spell. Still have a Rage freeze if he needs it. Bowler should have no problem getting this down. Like you mentioned, that Queen doesn't have too much down there on the bottom. With some spell support, Royal Champion still in hand. This is looking really good for Phoenix. Great plan, a little unconventional, but it's looking like he's going to be rewarded here. Yeah, this Queen splitting off, and the perfect amount of healers went with each of the different packs there. The top healers die as they get, go through that Town Hall Poison. The Super Bowlers are going to likely die out there as well but this was a really really interesting approach here for a super bowler smash and it worked out great and maybe it was a little bit of luck there maybe it was a little bit with that queen kind of veering off and the rest back there missing the funnel but it actually ended up working heavily into his favor as she moved into a low damage area of the base and that uh little bit of a walk turned into a separate queen charge and really reinforced that attack strong you know, he's got to be feeling good after that triple what a great attack i like the blimp there uh, normally we see like a flame flinger there uh, just help set that funnel, set that pathing, but the blimp to not only get the multi down, but pull that clan castle out so he could deal with it early. And that's kind of what caused that queen to go south, was she was dealing with the clan castle, the enemy king there. Meanwhile, his king, the bowlers, all worked their way towards the town hall. Great plan, great attack, and they they got the answer they needed. So mm -hmm. it's going to be on Fuzzy Wuzzy. Uh, they're, the only miss was four buildings, so they can't let up here. you got to go all out. you got to go for another three star with your second attack. Absolutely, and they're off to a good start here. Both teams are. This is a really strong start with only four buildings left on the board there. That's not much at all. This is anybody's game. This is still extremely close here, and I'm um, excited to see what, they, what else they have for us because they've already come out with a lot of interesting strategies right. so far. Like, this has been an interesting uh, start to the war. 
Yeah, a lot of different stuff. We've had, what, three different strategies on all three different attacks here, mm -hmm. and a lot of high risk. That's what I like. It takes it takes a little bit of courage in this situation right. to go full across the base. In my clan, we call it yellow because most of the time we don't get there. But these <laughs> guys show in their pro levels because they're getting in there. <laughs> they absolutely are. And, yeah, it's, it's a matter of just creating the path in there and then making so you can cross the base there. And the, the, you saw most of the CC on that one that even stalled up that queen and made her diverge path and little things like that can make a big difference here. But going back over to Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy, we have Halo Blade, one of the longtime veterans in the uh, mobile open and mobile challenge circuits. Let's see if he can make it happen here as he goes in with the more traditional Super Bowler Smash, but not completely because he's also paired it with some bats. Yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, I was just looking at it. I was like, I was looking at the spells. I was like, oh, okay, this is looking good. Oh, five bats. Huh. So, uh, looking like we'll have the warden set in here. We do have a blimp selected at the current time, so we'll fly that blimp towards the town hall with the warden ability most likely to take down the town hall, run the bowlers through the base, and then honestly, on that backside, if he gets to the scatter with that bowler bounce, mm -hmm. there's just two wizard towers potentially even one wizard tower by the time he gets there with the bats. Yeah, the only thing I'm worried about is what he's going to do with the defensive king over on the far left side, because that would be a probable spot for the Royal Champion to join into the fight there. And with him standing right there, he's going to have to have a good answer for him. We'll see what he does with it, but he finishes up the warden walk all the way into the center of that compartment, so he leaves nothing up in there specifically that wizard tower. Got to get all the splash damage down to set up these bats here, and now he can start to make his way into the core of the base. Super wall break into the defensive queen and the scatter shot. He's got one jump spell, and that Ooh. jump spell needs to give him everything, and he needs to get through to the town hall as well. His queen popped really early here. Uh, the combination of the enemy queen and the scatter shot forced that queen's ability. Here comes the warden ability to protect a little bit, flying right through that sweeper. His king's going to fight through the enemy king. Big point, big point here to get the town hall down with the blimp. Should have no problem. Oh, there's the tornado. This could be tricky, but it's looking like it's sneaky goblins, uh, goblins and then sneaky goblins following out. Will they get the town hall down? Yeah, it looks like no problem here. Yeah, the problem is that king over on the left side there, he did, he the defensive king defended, and now his road champion doesn't have an opportune spot to drop oh, into no. the base there, and he's actually dwindling out heavily here. He puts in his road champion down at the bottom base here to pick up the healers, but he did not make very good progress into the core of the base. He just got completely shut down there. He's actually risking a one star on percentage if he can't climb this up. The RC goes to ability, tries oh, to no. survive, and she goes down as well. He's got to take it with the bats here, Bash. He's got to clean up some of these defenses so that his cleanup can just get as much percentage points as possible. I didn't see if there was no healer swap or what happened there. That's a big risk with these Super Bowler Ooh. attacks. Oh, no, this is going to be devastatingly low. I think he gets a two-star, yeah. but it is going to be, like, 50% two-star. Like, that's not what you want at all. A big opening for Omnipotence. They're going to pull ahead after this attack. Halo, this one just fizzled out in the middle of this base, and those box bases can be really rough for that if you don't get that swap. Yeah, you got to get the healers to keep that pack alive there. You got to get the healers inside of the rage there. Otherwise, when a surge of troops moves forward without healers, they just get absolutely melted up there. And yeah. that early queen ability wasn't doing any favors either. This is a rough, rough attack here for Halo. And they're going to now fall behind here as Omnipotence takes the lead. Yeah, the early queen ability, it kind of caught me off guard. You can see Halo's disappointment. He knows, like, that's definitely... Things didn't go right. He's a little bit confused, a little bit perplexed. What happened there? Because that's not the plan. And the big point here was this queen popping super early. We had the combination of that scatter shot firing around. Then the enemy queen steps up here and forces that ability right here. Check it out. Queen ability mm. goes off and losing the queen ability that early. And then in the core, it just seemed like we got no swap. Yeah, there was just there was just no progress through the core of the base there. You expect those super bowlers inside of the rate there with the protection of the ward and everything. You expect them to surge all the way through that core and at least wipe into the Eagle Artillery and the Infernos. Even if you don't make it to the backside scatter shot, you generally at least get the, the main force there. But like every single part of the attack just got completely shut down. So a uh, nice base building here out of the Omnipotence team. Very, very good base building. And we just saw the percentage there. Huge opening for Omnipotence. If they mm -hmm. can keep the pressure on with the percentage, uh, Fuzzy's going to need a defense at this point. With that low percentage, they're going to need another defense, and they're going to have to keep their attacks up. And it looks like we got Legion Merkin coming in with some Electro Dragons with a Flinger. So we haven't seen this paired with the Flinger yet, but Electro Dragons kind of making their way back into the meta right now.
The risk that is involved with using the flinger in an attack like this is you don't 100% guarantee the Town Hall takedown when you aren't using a blimp like you would typically have as a backup method to reinforce these. But if he's going to go into the Eagle Artillery, which it seems like he might actually be doing then, he's going to be crossing the entirety of this base here. He'll go in Rage Up. This has been an interesting thing that we saw them use when they were playing through the Open Finals. is where they go in with a small E-Drag Kill Squad after the Eagle Artillery just to set up the initial phase of the attack here and let that Flame Flinger work while they do it. And it's, a, it's an interesting approach here for sure but it wasn't very effective when they were using it in the open final. So we'll see if they have been practicing on it and if oh. they're ready to break it out now. Nope. Uh, he did weaken it up enough. And he brought a couple super minions. So that super minion will finish off the eagle there. So realize that maybe with the king there, he's not going to get the eagle down. But great read to bring those super minions. Remember, the first few volleys from that super minion will be mm -hmm. in an extended range. Uh, here's Sneaky Goblins on the base. It looks like just setting some pathing. And here come the E-Drags, kind of opposite where we were thinking. Uh, right at the Town Hall. Early interesting freeze there. Yeah, but a couple of big chains there clear the area around the Town Hall. He does have a decent pathing to get into it, but not guaranteed there. The CC draws out. We got a couple of archers, and it is looking like it is going to be a potential Lava Hound CC. I don't think we got a full pull there. We'll see what else comes out of there, if anything. But he's still holding on to his hero, so like he's got backup methods to go pick up the Town Hall if the E-Dregs don't get it. But if they don't work in sync, then they're not going to get a lot of cross tanking. There we go, another headhunter and more archers come out of the CC going after his warden right now. Can he save his warden or is that warden going to get absolutely shredded? Yeah, he's getting taken down there and the heroes are left up with a lot and there's still a Lava Hound in the defensive CC. I mean, like I said, this attack, I mean, it didn't fare too well with them in the uh, open finals and maybe it's time to pack this one away. This one is uh, not proven to be effective in general. And I, I honestly, I don't, what is, why? I'm a little confused because they, I haven't seen them actually successful with this style of this attack yet. So it's interesting that they keep attempting it. So maybe that hurts them in the long run here. Yeah. I don't know. You gotta have the vision to be able to adapt and overcome when things aren't going right. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're right. We, we saw them try that, trying to get the eagle up and we never saw them get the eagle. You commit two e drags, which is 60 housing space, plus a rage spell, which is one of your, you know, essential things for the attack. Mm -hmm. Even more housing space with the super minions, and then went completely opposite side with very little funnel. Mind you, it's a way higher percentage than Fuzzy's last attack here, so they're right. still fine as far as percent. But you, you like to think you want to get a three star here and just really put that pressure on. Yeah, it makes me wonder if this has been working for them in other wars. That'd be the only reason to bring it out here. But also, since they have been using it multiple times here, maybe it's a defensive play here from Fuzzy Wuzzy to try to counter an Electro Dragon attack because they did bring it up pretty significantly a number of times there as they played through the Open Finals. 93% still very respectable. Uh, I feel like we're talking yeah, yeah. like he had an 80% no, or did, lower. Did all right. It was still a very respectable attack. Don't, don't get me wrong. but. I, th I like to see, you know, that really hard hit there. Try to put that pressure on your enemy after a huge fail. And maybe they thought that was the attack to get it done. Uh, but it just kind of stalled up. I didn't like the funnel here. We saw yeah. that split from the E-Drags. Uh, didn't have a great funnel established. And they really couldn't just put the pressure through that Town Hall compartment. Yeah, when you have the Flame Flinger already working on that far left side there, if he maybe could have got a little bit more funnel there, got the heroes down to the bottom corner. There was definitely some possibilities with that, and I would be curious to see them use that more in the future and see how it's supposed to work here. But into Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy, we got Sir Will striking with a, looks like uh, Sui Lalo with a with a clone. We don't see uh, Sui Lalo with a clone very often. This could be interesting. Yeah, this, uh, I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. It looks like the Queen's going to try to go for the Town Hall, but already forced her ability out. So we're going to have to commit some spells here to make sure we get the Town Hall down. Rage and Invisibility to get that Town Hall down. Didn't have enough freezes really to commit to that Town Hall, so just goes ahead and uses the Rage there. King trying to distract the RC, doesn't get over there in time. So his RC is going to have to fight the enemy Royal Champion, losing some precious hit points. And there goes her ability as well. King's working in towards that Scattershot compartment. Great setup so far. We'll see where this Lalo comes in. Yeah, the downside of this top end Lalo entry is the defensive queen down at the bottom base here. Only one headhunter and a skeleton spell there. So definitely keep an eye on that, how they get that defensive queen takedown. But he's got a full CC pull here. Looks like another Lava Hound coming out on defense here. That's going to tear through his king. 
and leave that Lava Hound to just kind of chill it in the middle of the base. It'll eventually go to the top where the Barbarians are sweeping around with the Unicorn following him. What's going on up there? But he's got this Slammer going to the middle of the base here, trying to get the Multi-Inferno while the rest of the Lalo class is in heavy from the right side. And here comes this Queen takedown. This is going to be a critical part of the attack. And don't forget, we still have that Clone spell yet to be deployed. So the Poison and the Skeleton is going to go ahead and distract that Queen. Clone right there on the Balloon just to get a little additional pressure there on the scatter shot to get that down. Queen's still up, but she's poisoned. When the troops are under poison, they will attack a little bit slower. So she'll still fire, but not quite as fast. Queen's not going down here, Eric. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is going to be the oh. defense that Omnipotence oh. needed. Wait, oh, there's still more blues going to the backside. He's still got a decent amount of push. And that defensive queen did ultimately go down. The dragon fighter out of the stone slammer. Wait a second. This still has a lot of moving parts. And yeah, they are good. ripping through the Teslas. He needs to get the cleanup uh, dealt with up on the top side. It's those uh, lava hounds that... Uh, popped up there, ended up leaving up a couple pups there that burned him up a little bit, but the Electric Owl will turn right around and deal with those pups, and with 40 seconds left, he's got more than enough time to turn back around and get it done. I thought that was going to miss, but it just kept <laughs> on moving. Those bloods would not die, Vash. The great play there was the Warden ability on the Stone Slammer. It kept it up a little bit longer, and then, like you mentioned, made that Rider inside of the Stone Slammer, which was enough gas to get through that Tesla farm. Mm -hmm. Sir Will got to be feeling really good, and that's what I wanted to see out of Omnipotence, that really high pressure situation put that pressure on fuzzy wuzzy answers right there with that clutch three star so the percentage was really low but that's going to surge them forward now and they should be leading after that the third volley of attacks still will be down on percent but ultimately it comes down to stars first yeah how did he get that that queen down because the, it looked like there were skeletons the and pups i believe uh i think they just eventually wore her down with the skeletons and pups oh, there it yeah, is there yeah, it look. is yeah, yeah, he got it. The skeletons eventually <laughs> overwhelmed yeah, yeah. her. It was a clone spell. The clone spell actually came in clutch there to reinforce that area and help him get through the scatter shot. And that clone spell actually was what swung that attack. So the clone coming in clutch right there and good placement on it and good patience to get into a key spot there and make sure he got that critical defensive queen down. Yeah, uh, that's that's what they needed. Uh, good pressure there. And here we see it still way down on percentage. Mm -hmm. But remember, guys, wars are decided by stars, percent and then time. You went on stars, you don't have to worry about percent. If 59 doesn't hurt you, so they're up now two triples to one. So Omnipotence has to answer here with the next attack. They have to get that three. We've seen they can do it. We've seen they can get close, 96, yeah. 93. They just got to get over that little hump, get over that little mental block, get those e drags through those defenses a little bit more. Yeah, I guess we'll see if they uh, will break out the dragons or e drags uh, again here. But here we go. It is going to be Ash. Super Bowlers. They're going at it again here. The Super Bowlers used a lot this war. This one with a, a Flame Flinger. And we'll see how he wants to make their approach here. Typically done with a Warden Walk to start off. And it looks like he is going to be doing some uh, light troops down at the bottom just to lure out some Teslas. And. The king deploys down there. What? I was expecting a uh, flame flinger to come in from the bottom and go out to the town hall potentially. But he generally does want to get that flame flinger moving relatively early into the pack here. But we'll see what he does with this king. Actually, look at this. He's using the king paired with the flame flinger. That is something we definitely never see here. That's a very interesting approach. A uh, uh, heavy commit here for the town hall. Uh, use that king to kind of uh, take care of the skeletons, take care of, or tank at least, that mortar. Not necessarily taken care of yet. He's working on it. He's trying. Oh, get it. There we go. <laughs> king ability gets through the border. Tornado goes off, and I think he wants the king to activate the town hall. Well, he's got an earthquake, so I... This is interesting. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does get the activation as the barbarians get spun in the tornado trap into that town hall. They ended up not pulling the CC. The king not pulling the CC there is critical because he doesn't want the CC going over to attack the flame flinger or the warden walk coming in from the right side and even throws down some yetis down south to go and funnel even more. But look at the path that he's made into the middle of the base here. And honestly, you should be able to outrange the town hall as he stays away from it coming in from that far right. And the flame flinger will start to ping away at it and take Take it down. A very interesting approach here. But honestly, it's looking pretty strong on this approach. Gumspell going to do a nice job to keep those bullets away. One polar wonders down. He's a little bit curious what's going on in that town hall compartment. That's okay. He's got a pack of bowlers. Healers are starting to swap over and heal up those bowlers. Town Hall will go down no problem from the Flame Flinger. And that Warden ability is popped right here as he pushes through the center of the base with the second jump. We've got that Royal Champion coming to the top corner there. She needs to get her spray through that Eagle Artillery. Get these Eagle Artillery fights or strikes off of them. But the healers are in the middle of the base there. They are trying to get inside of the Rage. They're protected by the invisibility, getting those Lava Pups off of them as the Queen stalls up 
for a very long time, fighting off the Lava Pops after popping the Hound, and those bowlers continued forward with the healers and move into the back of the base there. But the Royal Champion does ultimately go down at the top here, and she might have been a critical factor in this attack here, but he still has whatever is inside of that Flame Flinger can come and sweep through and protect and wrap around the Queen here. So he's still got a lot of punch here and a lot of time to work with. Flame Flinger getting ready to pop. We got a Balloon and Valkyries. Valkyries can deal some damage really quickly. Queen still has her ability. Still has a minion for cleanup. Not too many defenses up. Valkyrie should clean up all this exterior. Mm. Need to put, oh wait, Queen pops back here. She's gonna take the jump spell to go get the scatter. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah. He's got it. He's got the cleanup all around. The Valkyries wrap in and that jump is still active to get him back to this scatter shot. It's a triple omnipotence, putting on some pressure here for Fuzzy Wuzzy. I mean, they have really good percentages. They have that percentage advantage. So if they, end up getting a defense of almost any percentage here, then this ends up swinging the war into their favor. So a big pickup right there. Uh, God, Gallup, are you, are you, are you okay? Uh, I, I think he, doesn't, he, I think he just loves in darkness. Yeah, he, uh, he's a monster. <laughs> hold me, I, I'm nervous. Great attack. He loves the darkness and loves three stars. Uh, really unconventional here. A, a heavy commitment to support that flame flame, but it works. It doesn't matter how unconventional you are. If you get a three-star, Eric, that's all that matters. Pressure is going to be back on Fuzzy Wuzzy moving into the next attack as they are down heavily on percentage. Looking at the scoreboard, 10 to 8. Uh, three-star here puts them back in the lead, but a two-star, and they, they fall behind again. Yeah, this is a really, really close war. The percentage advantage right there is really doing a lot of favors if they can uh, keep that pressure on. All I got to do is force any mistake here, and we'll see if Kevin can handle the pressure as he gets ready to go in with a, looks like a Sui hero lot. No, a Blizzard. Blizzard. Yeah, He's got Blizzard. the five invisibilities here. He's going to be opening with the Hound and a couple of balloons. Make sure you send in at least uh, the balloons to go pick up these archer towers on the entry there. The hound protects all the way in there to get the blimp all the way in to be able to connect to the town hall there. And with the invisibilities in the right there, he'll get the town hall down and everything around it. He needs to clear all the defenses out towards the edge of the base here so he can set the funnel. And he also got the CC pull out of it. That is a nice amount of value here and should set him up quite queen. nicely. Got the queen as well. Might. Oh, was trying to get the Royal Champion. She didn't quite pull some Tornado, though. Also, that's a good pull. Along with that Clan Castle, Queen will have no problem dealing with them. A great value Blizzard there. I love that. He didn't get the RC and the King, but they're weakened. So the Royal Champion should be able to be taken down no problem. Using the Sneaky Goblin now to funnel that Queen down towards that 6 o'clock, the southern position of the base. After that Queen deals with this Lava Hound, we'll see a little support coming in for her to help her push into the base. Just going to keep her protected here. She can handle a little bit of damage there. A unicorn can top her off here. She can power through that. All the skellies and the pups end up going into the poison. Nice placement, and it lasted just long enough to power through them to make sure the queen didn't have to waste a single shot on those ones. But now, here comes the ice golems to lead the charge as the heroes make their way in with a jump spell into the middle of the base here. Ice golems are going to start popping up, but the king's getting targeted by the single. He might want to invest a freeze into that, but the king steps away, and he continues to form the funnel for the queen who's going to enter into the base. I wonder how far she could go here. It would be nice if he had some spare invisibilities to keep her protected all the way to the eagle artillery, so he ends up going to ability maybe early. Do you think he reached his eagle, or is oh. that ground expo beyond there going to take her out? The scatter's the issue here. If the king tanked the scatter, she could have definitely got to the eagle, but the king went out of range. We get the Lalo starting from the top side. Royal Champion's going to try her hardest but she already lost her ability as well, so the Eagle's going to remain. But here we go with the Lalo from the top side of the base. A lot of base still to push through, and we still have that Royal Champion. Headhunters oh. get taken down through. They, the Warden ability faded there, so they didn't get the Royal Champion. Yeah, I still got the Electric Owl. She can take the last shot there on that defensive Royal Champion. She does, and it looks like she's got it under control. He does end up taking a lot of damage. He loses his Warden before he gets that takedown, oh, no. and the balloons are getting absolutely shredded here, and that is exactly what Omnipotence needed. Wow. They take the lead on percentage, and the stars are going to be tied going to the final set of attacks here. This one is a little bit lower percentage. You'll still climb a bit more, but... The percentage is so deep into Omnipotence's favor right now that uh, this is really going to have to be one of stars. Yeah, they, they have to get a defense on this last attack. They have to get a two-star from Omnipotence, and then they're going to have to triple. Pretty simple as that. There's no way they're going to be able to win on percent. After a 59 and 88, uh, Omnipotence is putting up 96, 93, three stars. Omnipotence keeping the pressure on. But if you're Omnipotence, you're feeling great about that. That attack looked like it didn't quite go to plan. 
if he could have got that queen just a little bit more tanky, she could have got that eagle, could have got a little bit more value in there. But Kevin could have come up with an 89% for Fuzzy Wuzzy, and they are down heavily now. Really bad down on percent. Yeah, you can see a little bit of disappointment there. Yeah, it's always it's always painful to see your army crumble before you like that, but you gotta keep your head in the game here. You got another attack to you can make the comeback here potentially, but honestly this war is controlled by omnipotence now. The first lead throughout the war for them and the, they just need to get the triple here. If they can get the triple here, they control their own fate and they can put it completely out of reach out of Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy. Right, just go out three star. Don't don't even leave it to chance. Just go three star, win the war. Even if they that's it. Yeah, just, just three star. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> that's that's uh, easy. No, yeah. no big deal. I mean, we, we do it all the time. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. I think we were talking about how many one stars we had earlier, though. Uh, but if we had three of those together, that's three. Stars. That's right. That's <laughs> what I'm banking but on in my war. They, they only get one attack, though, <laughs> Eric. But we've seen they can do it. They're putting up high percentage attacks. They're putting up really close attacks. 96, 93, 100 percent. And it's going to come down to Rook and his super dragons. We haven't seen Super Dragons as much, but Super Dragon players, they're still really, really strong. Yeah, now where do you want to make the approach here? Do you, it looks like if he comes in from the right side, an interesting uh, approach there if he does decide to go in and to commit into that right or top section of the base there because it does give a little bit later uh, uh, Eagle Artillery takedown, but notice the position of the defensive heroes here. He throws down a skeleton spell right on top of the multi inferno just to give some initial distraction. And he'll start to make his way in with the Super Dragons, get the Rage down. He's got that Warden that can protect the Blimp as the Blimp tries to go through the Dragons and make his way over the Town Hall. And he needs to get the Town Hall down. He needs to get all the defensive heroes under control. And he's got to get these multis out of the middle. We do have a Super Minion on the defensive CC, though, here, Bash. No poison to deal with it. Most times, Super Dragons are just going to deal with that itself. Tornado Trap spinning the Blimp, but the Blimp's going to land and get the Town Hall down. It looks like there was a Rider in there. Ooh, okay. <laughs> but that Super Minion's still up, causing some problems. Dragons will come over and deal with that now. Could have got a little bit more value out of the Rider. We're going to support the Queen here with the Royal Champion on the top side. I like this push. The Dragons are kind of at the bottom, and if we can get some of these Aerotar attacking defenses from the top, could have a strong finish. Still plenty of spell support as well. Yeah, just needs to get around this multi-inferno. He's taking damage all the way through. He's going to end up losing the Unicorn for the Queen, which is really going to hurt him on the back end. But he can pop that RC ability. He can just kind of avoid this multi-inferno until he gets back there with the Super Dragons. If this Royal Champion is able to stay alive all the way into this air defense, that will protect the Super Dragons heavily and preserve them on their approach oh. over to the multi. But they do end up now vulnerable as the Royal Champion goes down. And that air defense will be pinging away here, but there's a lot of super dragons left here. There's still a chance, and this warden is adding a lot of firepower behind these dragons. Gonna maybe save the royal champion's ability a little bit there. I think he was maybe hoping it would ping over and get that air defense. Air defense will eventually fall. Multi's gonna fall there, and Ooh. all that's left is an archer tower. Once that multi goes, <laughs> this is looking good, rook. This is <laughs> looking good, rook. Don't leave it to fate. Get the job done yourself. Absolutely, one super dragon gonna survive until the end here. He'll get this archer tower down, and he will lock in the triple and the win as they play behind the majority of the war, but they don't give up and they stay true all the way to the end omnipotent <laughs> is going to put it out of reach here as they make it impossible for fuzzy 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 to catch back up i love the fist pumps there rook's got to be feeling really nice great play there he stuck with it didn't give up his team's got to be excited they win their first match up here on stars they don't have to worry about leaving it up to that last attack very nice performance from omnipotence and I like this one. I love the skeleton spell here to distract that queen so he can get those super dragons working in there. Uh, king and queen work through the top, some, top side to help that. And then the blimp just comes in and gets that town hall. Yeah, that blimp almost didn't get the town hall with yeah. all the tornado trap and all the, you see all the traps that were following yeah. that blimp there? That was a lot. <laughs> and the super minion on top of that, the damage CC. I mean, there was a lot of things that could have gone wrong with that. And it was ended up being really, really close to her at the end. I wasn't sure if he was going to make it through, but those super dragons <laughs> just keep on chugging and carry him to victory. Ooh, uh, it doesn't matter how close it is, Eric. A three star is a three star. Yeah, and that's right. you, you get the victory for your team. You got to be feeling good. 13 stars, 97%. Their, their misses are 96 and 93 here. Very, very uh, great performance from Omnipotence. Fuzzy Wuzzy, though, it, again, we're, we're playing round robin here. Mm -hmm, this isn't mm -hmm. elimination or anything. We're just kind of jockeying for position. So you want to 
I always talk about momentum. I think that's my thing. Talk right, about momentum. Right. You want to build that momentum for your next wars, your next attacks. So it's going to be on Lord Kirk here to finish them off. And we got a Lalo. We even got a heal spell with this Lalo. Well, interesting take here. Absolutely. And one of the things that I always like to think about here is, would this plan have been good enough had they been given the chance? Because he didn't have a chance to change his plan here. He would have had to react to whatever happened with Omnipotence. And they were really under a high pressure situation here where if they had that other attack go with a miss by even one percent, this would have been the chance to go ahead and take the win here. So let's see if he's able to get this triple here and see if that chance was alive. Otherwise, it was uh, going to be faded to omnipotence either way. But he does get some uh, pretty decent value out of his heroes as they go to three different compartments here to go clear out this entire left side of the base. The queen is still moving. And if she can duck in after that single and pop her ability to get the eagle artillery down, that'd be some big value. But she's kind of veering off now. Oh, she comes back. But uh, we talked about it. They, they're going to lose confirmed here. They can't win on percent. They can't win on stars. So let's take a look at their upcoming schedule because that we this isn't our only day of play here for the round robin. So we see they got Flaming Turkeys coming up on June 24th. They got Empire on the first, Chaz back on the first. Two really tough teams. They got a pretty tough t schedule ahead, but that's where I talk about that momentum. Don't give up. Go in there with a strong finish. That way, these teams coming up, maybe you can build off a little bit of that momentum. Yeah, you gotta you gotta end in the top half of the teams here to get into the finals to make it through the challenge phase here. So this is uh, this they got a, they got a lot of work over the next few weeks here to really hone in and make sure that they don't have this happen again because the competition is fiercer. There's so much left. Every team has to play against each other once and. They, the, the first war just kind of sets the tone, but it doesn't have to be the final. Right, right. Uh, a really interesting take. I think we were hoping the queen would get that eagle down. You talked about a popping her ability getting through the single and the, the eagle. But that eagle being up the whole attack was devastating. Not to mention that multi mm -hmm. right there. And this one's just not going to hit home for Kirk, unfortunately. So it can run up the percentage. And this one just seemed like a little bit of an offbeat for Fuzzy Wuzzy. Uh, right. Just kind of like they were close, but also when things went wrong, they went wrong. Absolutely. And one way or another, it was fated to go to Omnipotence. They have secured their victory here. They made the comeback after the, the after trailing the majority of the war there. But a big, big pickup here, taking out a veteran, very, very veteran, high profile team like Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy and taking out some of these really, really good players. And that's definitely going to make a name for themselves here as they uh, make their way through this challenge phase. If you're omnipotent, you got to be feeling great. That was a that was a commanding performance. 13 stars, great per great percent. Kirk going to finish up here right about 83, maybe if these minions can get this last mm -hmm. storage. Uh, that one just it didn't quite go there. And same with that Super Bowler attack. Things didn't go right. The queen went down early. But it's not the end of the road for Fuzzy Wuzzy. We talked about their upcoming schedule. It's still a lot ahead for them. Uh, don't get down on yourself. Don't mentally beat your team up. This is going to be on the captain. Bring your team back up. All right, guys, we're still in this. Game's not over. Let's bounce back. Let's go get a win in our next war. But we got we got Omnipotence winning this one. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to stay somber here as they uh, get ready for matches later on. Is Gallup on. okay? Gallup, can we get a thumbs up? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Hold me. I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, GG to both the clans and congrats to Omnipotence for winning that war. What a great war. Man, their misses were not far off. I mean, we'll see. Well, I guess we won't see it here, but 96, 93, mm -hmm. 97.8 overall percent. Beautiful performance. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really close war and fuzzy wuzzy wuzzy. Like I said, that's a big name team to be able to take out. And if Omnipotence wants to strike some fear into the other teams here, that's a, that's a big one to do it on. And they actually, after you average in these new hit rates here, they actually will end up closer to tie. You remember those initial stats there? This is uh, swinging it into a more even overall stats. Yes, we've had two amazing wars for you. Make sure you guys stick around for more wars, more highlights and analysis. You guys are watching the Snapdragon Pro Series. The Snapdragon Pro Series is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Monster Energy, DHL, and the U.S. Air Force. Welcome to the place where dreams come true.
where everything you want can be yours. If and only if you're willing to work for them, you're willing to hurt for them, but most of all, you're willing to be first for them. Ha, look. I'm going straight to the top. I don't know how I would stop, like it or not. I got some goals that I'm hitting. You hear what I'm spitting? It's hot. Look what I got. Whole lot of passion and pain. The road to success is insane. Stay out my lane, cause I'm on a mission. I'm getting what stands in my way. Yeah, I'm a beast. I wouldn't play with me, baby. The way that I'm training is crazy, and I do it daily. You want to talk about drive? I got more drive than Mercedes. I've never been late. I'm in the room. It's a weather alert. You want to compete? Well, get better first. I got ten toes in the dirt, push through the hurt just to show them my worth, I'm the best. <laughs> yeah, I'm the best. I never stress. I know what's next. I'm who they test. Like we playing chess. But I'm unimpressed. So now let me flex. <laughs> yeah, I'ma work. Through the struggle and hurt. Cause I know my worth. And I gotta be first. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be first. Look, I don't want anyone's sympathy. I understand what it's meant for me. I give my focus and energy. If it's meant to be, then it's meant to be. But mentally, I'm undefeated. They hear that and say I'm conceited. Like there's no reason. Like I don't beat them and beat them and come back again just to teach them. That when you work under pressure, you reach higher measures. They'll try and bring you down, but you cannot let them. And only get better and focus on cheddar. Eye on the prize and you'll become a legend. Like uh, when I'm in the room, it's a red alert. You want to compete, well, get better first. I got ten toes in the dirt. Push through the hurt just to show them my worth. I'm the best. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the best. I never stress. I know what's next. I'm who they test. Like we playing chess. But I'm unimpressed. So now let me flex. <laughs> yeah, I'ma work. Through the struggle and hurt. Cause I know my worth. And I gotta be first. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be first. They don't know what's gotten into me. How'd I turn pain into energy? Do all the struggle and hurt, remember my work, and that's why I gotta be first. <laughs>
He did bring a Quake in case he needed it to uh, wake up the Town Hall, but didn't need it. Town Hall spun the Barbarians in. Town Hall is now a defensive structure. Flameflinger targets defenses, so after this Archer Tower goes down, Town Hall will be the target. Meanwhile, that Warden the whole time has been up there, just pegging away at the defenses, creating that funnel. We're going to see all of these bowlers come in and work up through the base. We have jump spells to get through the middle of this base, and I just love this plan. Not only was this a great plan, but this was a key moment for his clan. His clan was down uh, at this point. I mean, this was their first of the fourth attacks. So they were down a star. They needed a three star, and this was the answer. This was the momentum. So we got all of the bowlers working through. Notice that Town Hall getting ready to go down. Royal Champion gonna come in, support from the top side. And this just went to plan, in my opinion, for Gallup. Everything was exactly how he wanted here. Nice free spell on the single, Town Hall falls. And we're gonna have the Flame Flinger work up to the top side of the base. Royal Champion's working, gets down that Eagle. Meanwhile, everything else is just working through the finale of this base. You'll love to see it. Great plan, great clutch moment for this player. This is exactly what Omnimdus needed to put the war away. And we saw Fuzzy Wuzzy stumble a few times and that's what you gotta do. When your opponent stumbles, take advantage, get the three star and get that victory. Beautiful, beautiful attack, and it gave his team the win. And that's exactly what they needed. Clutch when it mattered most. And again, what a fantastic way to start off things here. We have an interview with Genghis Clan. Let's send it over to Glitter. Thank you so much, Paul. Yes, I am here with Genghis Clan. We get to chat a little bit after the dub that we saw Omnipotence take home. First of all, congratulations. Uh, I mean, I've got to ask because very similar to what we saw in that first war as well. When you see that 59% two star come through, like, is that just like sharks with blood in the water? Like what goes through your head? Uh, I just knew it was a big opportunity for us to take the lead and we took advantage of it. And all the, all the guys showed up today. So I'm proud of all of them. It was a good win. It really was a good win. Now talking about, starting off really strong here in the mobile challenge. What did the prep look like for you guys? Uh, we had a ton of base testing. Uh, shout out to Salty for building all the bases and extensive testing. Uh, without him, we wouldn't have probably won this war. So uh, just a lot of, you know, practicing attacks and building bases. I mean, you guys had almost a perfect war is very very close so how are you feeling overall about not only your performance today but then heading into future weeks of the mobile challenge uh it's gonna be a long uh seven games or six games so we just got to focus up and keep playing how we're playing can't get too excited obviously it's a great win and it's you know good to start off strong but we have another match against Push, and they got a perfect war. So we got to focus up still. Well, I think you guys are at least starting off very, very strong. Now, before I let you go, I do want to give you an opportunity here first. Give some shout outs to anybody that you might want to thank for following you guys along this journey so far. Uh, shout out to Salty and our whole team and Omnipotence, everyone else. That's part of the clan. They've been rocking strong. And yeah, I was not a cheerleader today, just watching my guys put in work. So I'm excited for the next match. Hope we get another win and go 2-0. Oh. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Best of luck in your next war. Thank you, too. All right. Got to chat with Genghis Clan a little bit there. And I like that when I ask how they're feeling after like a really solid out of the gate performance, his response is like, no, we need to look forward to push because we talked about it even before we started the broadcast. That perfect war, I think, is on everybody's minds. Yeah, push was really, really strong. I think it was the only perfect war we had on broadcast. So I think if you're going to be playing them today, you have to be a little bit worried about a little bit of an unknown clan, but kind of a strong unknown clan. Absolutely, and I wonder if, with Omnipotence if we're going to see a face reveal from Gallup if we end up getting them to pull in, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, Gallup. Oh. Put it out in the universe and we'll have to see what happens. But, I mean, talking about some potentially scary competition, 
War number three right around the corner, and it is War and Glory versus No Chance Ice, a.k.a. hashtag Second Chance Ice. Let's first start things off, though, by talking about War and Glory, a team that we have spent so much time talking about. And they are a very, very strong team. We saw them kind of falter in split one, but they qualified right through to the mobile challenge. Didn't have to play it through uh, in split two. We got Rigo Torres, Nick, Agent 33, Boone, and Jethro. A lot of strong players, a lot of creative players. A uh, really well-known team here, Eric. Absolutely. I would have imagined that they would have been our uh, front runner in the competition. Like, remember in, in the first ladder when they were like neck and neck with Chazmac, they literally uh, we're down to like one war whether they ended up uh, getting this first skip of the the first mobile finals like that was crazy But we have the the players here getting ready here We got the camera set up and these guys are gonna start to plan their attacks here and get ready for this first war of their uh, mobile challenge season Game faces are on preps are ready comms are going and these guys are just really really strong really creative uh, They read bases really well. I think they have to be one of our favorites, along with Chaz Mac, in this competition overall for NA, just a really strong overall clan. I don't want to say that too much because last oh, time I feel like true. I jinxed them, so <laughs> I got to be careful with that. I mean, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, cheer on another team here. Just, uh, I'll, I'll just keep my opinions to myself on that. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I mean, yeah. for the better. <laughs> just, just, just don't say out loud who you're right. For. right the Eric right. Jinx is real. We, we witnessed that. <laughs> oh boy, Eric, <laughs> Eric's just bad luck. But you can't let a jinx get to you. But we're going to be seeing them go up against my guys and no chance ice. Hashtag second chance ice. They struggled in that first ladder, but came through and got that clutch uh, qualification. We got Jared exempt from that. Apollo, Dobbs, and the legend, Tony Gunk. Probably eating Taco Bell, I would assume. Absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, put it past in there, but. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, oh, only three. I was half expecting a crunchy taco in his hand, in his mouth. <laughs> no, he, he's focused here. He's got to put his tacos away. He's got to get ready for this war here because their opponent is absolutely fierce here. And, I mean, they also qualified roughly the same seed there as Warren Glory. They were going through it the, in the second split there and they were able to get out there and perform and make their way into here so now they got to get out here and prove themselves they have their second chance and they need to make the best of it right yeah i mean you've been given the opportunity we've seen both of these clans falter so this could really go either way i, I we'll look at the stats soon but I'd, I'd like to say this is probably favorite in war and glory but it's esports guys anything can happen we've seen no chance come in when they need to and get that clutch mo clutch moments get those clutch three stars and secure their positioning so yeah exactly what i was expecting war and glory almost a full star ahead and three percent almost ahead there on averages yeah but you know what their what war and glory's kryptonite was in the first split it was those anti two star because yes. they really really struggled with them and we have seen a lot of them in the wars tonight especially out of the the couple of the teams that end up taking the wins today so far so very very interesting and we'll see if they've uh, got the practice in on those and are ready to take them on today well i've got the head-to-head -head in their times they've played against each other too and let me tell you Oh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. no. oh no. <laughs> Hold me. Warren Glory might be 5 0 against No Chance Ice, but I have faith in Taco Tony, which is what I think he should switch his name it to. Should. Okay, if I'm being honest, that's what I want to see. And we'll have to see if that if the, the tacos can really carry him through. 5 0 oh with those stats in Warren Glory's favor is a little bit scary. But once again, we want to know what you guys in chat have to think. Who do you think is going to be taking this for home? Will it be War and Glory? Will it be No Chance Ice? Let us know in that Twitch chat poll down below because it's looking a little lopsided, but we'll have to see. We will have to see because that next war is ready to go. go. <laughs> so we don't even have to wait for it. Take uh, it away. We got it. We got No Chance Ice. We got War and Glory. Uh, and we have to think War and Glory is a fan. I don't think we're going to see that War and Glory we saw in Split 1. Or maybe we just see their kryptonite of those anti-twos you spoke about. Maybe, because, you know, when you have a really popular team like that, they can play to their weaknesses. They, they see them more often, and they see them in live streams and in uh, different competitions here, and so they know what they struggle with, and they know potentially how to beat them if they reviewed the team properly here. But here we go. We are starting off right in with Taco Tony, or Tony Gunk coming out of No Chance Ice. And he's going to start us off here with a double clone 
into Hydra here with a blimp that's gonna need to take down the town hall and everything around it with the clones. Watch the spread of the clones here and what kind of value you can get out of the balloons here. If you can get a good split of the balloons here and spread them around there so they don't all just die into the town hall, blast and poison, but he ends up not getting the blimp protected with the ward ability, but he still ends up arriving it towards the town hall and gets the activation and should have no problem with that takedown, but uh, no spread. Yeah, no spread, no spread there. Yeah, needed a little side of spread there. It didn't happen with that tornado protecting that entry. Kind of read that they gave that entry for the dragons and the blimp, and those balloons get nothing. So a lot of spells wasted there, but he still got two skeleton spells which can support this royal champion. Queen's kind of caught up there over on the Lava Hound with that multi inferno on her. She's going to go down, which means that Lava Hound's now going to pull over and distract the royal champion. This is not looking good for Tony. Yeah, he needs to get the damage off of the Royal Champion before she switches over to the Hound so she can fight it. He's got the poison there. He can clear up these puffs. The biggest thing I'm worried about, honestly, is the defensive queen, and he already burned a skeleton spell there while the Royal Champion kind of sits back a bit. So I don't think he's had a chance to pull through this one. There's too much in this right-hand corner. He'll just need to get whatever he can out of the cleanup here. So at least getting down these pups will at least make sure his cleanup stays safe, and he's got another minute to... Oh, maybe that was a mistake there. He goes invisible with the Royal Champion, and now the pups end up taking out some of his cleanup. That's going to cost him some, perc some percentage here, and it's going to leave him down to 70%. He's going to have a minute wasted where those archers could have chipped away at the end of the attack there. But the Royal Champion moves forward. She dies out, and it is a big miss right out of the gate here against a monster of a team. Huge missed up there. A little bit more cleanup. Just a few minions, four or five minions in there. Gets that 80, 85% easily. So even mm -hmm. though it's a miss, maybe it's a little bit more bearable. The 70% is a heartbreaker. You don't want that out of the gate. But we saw earlier today. I mean, mm -hmm. a miss out the gate isn't the end of the world. But against a team like War and Glory, you, you don't want to do that. Against any of these teams, you don't want to have a big missed up right out the gate. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what War and Glory has on defense today to see if they can, uh, if they're able to end up getting these deep or if, uh, no chance ice i mean is able to get the defenses they came prepared to this but that blimp it just hit that tornado trap there were lots of red air bombs around it the town hall was frozen so he at least got it down right there but he took so much damage from all the red air bombs right there that he ended up uh, losing a lot of value of the blimp there that might have cost him in the end he ended up pulling the lava hound on top of that that wasn't doing any favors and he tried to keep his heroes away from the queen hugged the walls tight and went all the way in and pulled that cc so it uh, wasn't uh, helping him out any there. Yeah, unfortunately, a big misstep there and just not what they needed to start 70%. But you're right, I'm genuinely curious as well. If you're no chance ice, based on what you saw in split one, you have to almost run anti twos, right? Like, <laughs> right? All five of these bases should be anti twos, in my opinion. But it, also, if you're Warren Glory, after that performance, you're going and practicing against those anti twos, right? You're not, yeah. you're not this good of a team and just like, oh, that's a weakness. <laughs> Whatever. I guess we'll just ignore it. Yeah, reinforce that weakness. Get the practice. Get the proficiency in those uh, push legendly to get more right. day to day practice, learning how to just consistently take them down. And a lot of those anti two star bases is just being being able to play reactionary and. Uh, because you, you don't always know exactly how things are going to path into those bases, especially with a team like War and Glory. likes to lot, do a lot of Sui Hero Lalos. They like to do uh, these Queen Charges, and we'll see what they can do as they there open go. up Queen Charge, anti-two-star base. It's Rigo Torres coming in with a Flame Flinger to form half of the funnel, and he'll need to get that Queen all the way in to take the Town Hall since he already invested the Siege Machine early. One of the most fun Queen Charge attackers to watch. He's very, very good with this attack. He's been doing it forever. As long as I can remember, Rigo has been using Queen Charge Lalo. And you'll see him do some really interesting things. But he has been known in the past to time fail here and there. We'll have to keep an eye on that clock. But I think the goal here is going to push that Queen as far into this base as possible. We all need to clean up and this flame flinger to collapse in pretty heavily. The king is cut off the pathing from the far left hand side there to drive the queen to the south side of the base here. She will have to power through what looks like the king, the warden, the single inferno, and the Tesla farm over there. The CC's coming her way as well. So every single one of those are going to be time intensive things that he's going to have to power through and then eventually work his way into the middle of the base. And also look at the top of the base there. We have the queen and the royal champion that the Lalo is going to have to handle. And we'll see how he handles this but this queen charge is going to be absolutely critical to survive through all these heavy defenses and get delivered into the town hall in time 
And as this queen's finishing off these pups, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank a Snapdragon Elite Gaming. When winning matters, think of Snapdragon Elite Gaming. And a huge shout out to them for sponsoring these events for us. Queen's going to go ahead and rage up into the single. Rage spell is down to go ahead and work through here, but skeletons are going to distract. Uh, if he can get through the single, the warden, all this kind of stuff through there, the queen will either she's going right or she's going left either way she's going in for the town hall just a matter of time she's really healthy still has her ability he still has royal champion but that time is becoming a factor as we're ticking closer to that one minute mark yeah this is gonna be a very fast lalo he's almost forced to start the lalo in fact he's pretty much forced to start the lalo before he secures the town hall which means this queen now has even more pressure to reach the town hall he's leading the queen with the rage there the healers don't need to be inside the rage because the queen's not taking a lot of damage but he starts in the lalo he's got to do this lalo in under a minute the queen makes her approach quickly towards the core of the base there she needs to take the turn she needs to get the town hall down he's got a strong push going here and the queen is looking healthy as she makes her way in and will oh there goes oh. the healers <laughs> oh <laughs> she's, got a she's got ability she's got ability though so he can pop that rage spells up those balloons are falling though uh, tornado spinning her okay we get the t town hall secured 27 seconds still has royal champion in hand all the balloons are pretty much gone at this point but he's still got royal champion with ability remaining i think he's got enough to get through here yeah the royal champion and the balloons just need to get that inferno down he needs to get those balloons to quickly turn out of the storage and he's got enough time rigo torres <laughs> has absolutely got this triple on the books and that is going to put war and glory into an early lead here 30 percent and a star of what a stellar attack right there never a doubt in his mind like just casual just let me just get a little sip of water like eric what are you sweating for i got this that's what I do. I'm Rigo Torres. And that's what I talked about. He's known for those long queen charges. <laughs> He's used to that short Lalo. That's just what Rigo does. I love the patience here. Uh, like you mentioned, he was forced to start that Lalo or else he would have time failed. Uh, and I'm sure it hit the guys in his ear. Rigo, Lalo, Rigo, Lalo, Rigo, <laughs> Lalo. But this was a little bit scary because healers go down, queen gets caught in tornado. This still was kind of close to devastation, but not really. Yeah, yeah, no, he absolutely kept it under control there. That queen did her job she was delivered into the middle of the base there she got the town hall down her path was really long <laughs> there she went through a lot of heavy stuff to get there but she did ultimately arrive and uh that if he didn't get her there it would have been a one star so i mean <laughs> that's always a little bit uh scary there those anti two star bases we're seeing the anti twos they're gonna try to maybe play on the weaknesses from split one there and we'll see if that trend continues here but i expect it to yeah, I, but like we mentioned, you're not a team as renowned as War and Glory and not practicing your weakness. Mm -hmm. They address that. There's no doubt in my mind that they went and addressed that. We're going to have Dobbs coming in for no chance ice. Queen under fire early here. Rages up those healers. We got a queen charge Lalo coming in, but that queen has to get healed back up here with that rage spell will allow those healers to heal a little bit faster. King will come in to cut off that queen going into that next compartment. We should see Royal Champion maybe supporting that king but a lot of pressure early on this attack. Yeah, the Queen uh, went, rode all the way down close to her ability, but has fully recovered now. He needs to get some headhunters down. There they go to go help support getting the defensive Queen and King down there. There's the Royal Champion, as you mentioned. She needs to get the scatter shot under control, but the defensive Warden is right there. And if that defensive Warden dishes out some heavy damage to the Royal Champion, that could be a problem. And we'll see who ends up picking up the tanking. It is the Royal Champion. She should still have enough to get the scatter shot down, and she puts some damage onto that Warden statue as well. Well, the queen will finish it off and the world champion seems to have done her job there clearing the compartment with the help of the king and now this jump will carry the queen to continue this charge triple ice school and clan castle really not a threat here with the queen only under fire from one bow it's more of a time Whoa. issue see what he's doing with the hounds here he drops in the invisibility directly onto the air defense there to make so the hound ended up crossing directly above the town hall before oh. a pop to try to trigger the traps there and that was clever that was interesting and the town hall area is cleared of red bombs cleared of the twitter trap he'll freeze it to protect since the hound obviously isn't there to provide any protection that was really clever there bash good see a good sight there eric to see that i completely miss it that air defense is over there in the corner of the base but you're right that hound just flew through there activated the town hall that was really nice here from dobbs balloons are gonna fly in here we got the scatter shot going up this is looking really good i love this queen charge i love the entry for the king and royal champion he's a little cleanup up top but he should be fine here plenty of time over a minute left this is going to be a triple for no chance ice the response they needed they had that low 70 percent attack earlier 
well, we've seen they can three star. They know how to attack. They know how to bounce back. They, they're not going to get discouraged. They're just going to spin some bars around here as I talk and ramble about this cleanup. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And these balloons will easily power through. The queen survives to the end. The dragon rider is still moving. He lost his warden, but the electric owl is going to turn around and start working on the cleanup with all the pups. And he's going to finish it with plenty of time to spare. What a really, really cool attack here. Nice queen charge. That queen charge ran into trouble right oh, out of the gate there. That one minion. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Air bombs. Yeah, he found, he found them. He tried to find them with the invisibility pair with the hound, but they were not there. He finds them late, and it's too late to stop the attack there. Nice attack from Dobbs. That was that was beautiful, and uh, man, you got to be feeling feeling a lot better after that attack. I mean, Tony's attack didn't quite go to plan, but that one went a hundred percent to plan. That queen charge was beautiful, and here here's what you're talking about here. Uh, or well, I guess this is a little bit after, huh? Ah, I wanted to see it because I missed it. Uh, Eric with the eagle eyes. Yeah, this uh, this push to the town hall. If you don't have the tanking, you gotta continuously, especially when the town hall is activated on your approach with the balloons. You really gotta keep it frozen up all the way on the approach there, so you can delay that water but as long as possible. And the haste or rage will carry you out of the town hall poison and keep these balloons safe. And with that queen charge, just taking out that entire left hand side of the base there, and then moving in to the other side and taking out that bottom corner a little bit as well, just assisting down there, but the balloons had it under control. Nice attack here. That is gonna be the momentum that they hopefully need there because that was, that was not only just a clever attack, but that's a critical attack here. And if they get a defense, they can tie up the stars here. But our next attacker is someone we've been talking about all day. I think the Ooh. whole tournament is the four time Snapdragon champion, Nick. Uh, one of the most known attackers in this tournament. Uh, he's really creative, he's really strong, and he's going to look to keep his team in the lead. But if you're no chance ice, you're looking for that huge defense. Uh, a defense here gets you in a good spot, but he's got the super witches. You were asking about super witches earlier. Mm -hmm. Maybe the wrong clan, but we got super witches, Eric. Wrong Nick. <laughs> wrong Nick. Yeah, you're right. It was the, you're right. <laughs> we, we got the, the lightning that he can pair with the warden walk here. Now, notice it takes out a couple of the heavy long range defenses, specifically the ground expo there, and he got the scatter shot. Now he needs to get the warden to push all the way in and be able to connect to the hole that was created by the lightning. So the warden has a long way to go here and he's gonna have a blimp. Actually, he doesn't even need to actually go into the town hall compartment here. He can have the blimp sail over the top there and if he can get the witches to all circle around the same side of the base and work together instead of splitting around both sides, he should be in a good spot, but he didn't push the warden walk all the way, but he's gonna reinforce it with some balloons to go in there and finish breaking the ring of trash and defenses that connects the lightning to the outer group. So maybe this is still something that's a little bit uncomfortable for Nick, these anti-two stars. Uh, rushing that warden walk a little bit perhaps, but doesn't want a time fail. Super witches are known for being a time issue. We should see that blimp come in at some point with the warden ability, but these witches really not under too much pressure, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Here comes that blimp, and we'll see the warden's eternal tome just to make sure that blimp lands, but with tornado there, it's gonna land no problem. Yeah, he'll get his way through the defensive row champion to scatter shit up on the uh, left side there. The super witches are working on the inside path and the outside path here. Looks like he might end up having one of the super witches try to split off, but no, it stays with the pack here. He's got that town hall taken down there with sneaky goblins inside of that that blimp and now he doesn't really need to go into the middle base here but he does have a couple of troops that ended up taking the turn but there's so much that is wrapping around and they're staying together in this counter or this clockwise uh, formation that is just like a uh, three different packs they're sweeping around the outside and these witches and the super witches both spawning a lot of tanking out in front there so as long as he gets through these infernos he should have enough to power through it the world champion stays safe but the defensive king is up ahead and we'll have to see how he handles that Finally loses one of his Super Witches. Single is locked onto the Queen. She's going to get through it, no problem, even if she has to pop ability. And this is looking really strong from Nick. 43 seconds. So he, used, he cut off that Ward Walk a little bit early just to make sure he didn't time fail. I think he only lost one Super Witch here. He's got still three up there in the middle, bouncing those big boys all throughout the base. 30 seconds here. I, I, he's good. He's, he's good. good. <laughs> I, I don't think he, I think he didn't need to finish the warden walk. I think it was intentional that he stopped the warden walk early because those balloons that sailed past the warden went and finished up the last key targets to finish breaking the ring of uh, defenses to connect the outside of the base there to the lightning. And that got the funnel form there and that kept the entire of the pack together and that got in the triple. So a nice clean attack there from Nick. That same control all the way through. Nick. 
living in the darkness too. I mean, I think that's just a gamer thing. We just like to play with the lights off and just chill and <laughs> hanging out. I mean, everyone else has got lights on, I guess. Yeah, Nick's just doing his thing. But that was, you see, these guys have adapted. This was a huge flub. They had, I don't think they three starred at all during split one. Mm -hmm. Maybe one three star uh, in the elimination match. They struggled against this style base, but you can see they put in the work. They fixed those issues. They found the armies that are going to work on those bases. They found the approaches that are going to work on those bases. And you're seeing that's being rewarded with three stars as they're now ahead on stars and a huge lead on percent moving into our third attacks. Six to five and no chance ice with that 70% little yeah. bit behind. I mean, we're right in the same position that we were after the first set of attacks there because the triple was answered and they'll uh, maintain the pressure onto No Chance Eyes to continue to try to put some pressure back on them. So this could definitely be interesting. <laughs> I like where we're uh, heading with this war so far and we'll have to just see if they can get the defense that they need, but they got to get the triple first because if they don't, if they fall two stars behind here, then that is very difficult to make up for with these five attack wars. Especially with the way War and Glory is playing right, right now. They are on fire. They brought their... I think these guys kind of heard us talking about what's on the line, at the, <laughs> you know, at the end game goal here. But we get Exempt coming in with a Queen Charge Hybrid. One of my favorite attacks. This attack has been really strong for a really long time. And on the right bases, if you can get the right pathing set up with that Queen Charge and a, just a straight line for the, or even a L shape for that hybrid to work through, as long as you have an alleyway, you're usually rewarded with a really nice attack. Ooh, Whoa, okay. no! Okay, well, he needed to get that blimp to land into the single infernal compartment. He was aiming at the very corner of it, trying to go with a different angle to, oh, wait, he's, okay, he's gonna get the wall break and put the queen into the single inferno, but I'm not convinced she's actually gonna go in there. She continues to walk south, and now the healers will finally deploy, but the CC ends up pulling her back a little bit there. Does she turn back and go into the base here? That blimp is really gonna, not too many favors. He was trying to land that blimp in the corner of that Inferno compartment so he could then around around the blimp, uh -oh. around around the single Inferno, but uh, <laughs> this queen is not cooperating and that blimp was not either here, Bash. He found like every skeleton trap in existence <laughs> here. So queen's getting held up here uh, and I don't foresee her going back at all. She's no. gonna make her way around. So he's gonna have to adjust this plan a little bit and get this town hall down. This one's going to be a hard recovery. Uh, you can run the hybrid through the town hall if you want, but with that poison, it is tough. Yeah, there's not a lot of damage around the town hall, so realistically, he could invest the king and maybe a little bit for a funnel there. To He's got the sneaky goblin, so we can form the funnel. He can get his king through the town hall if necessary. The queen, she's going to continue in here and get the defensive queen down and get the scatter shot down. So she's still moving strong. She's outrageous, though, and she's got the freeze that she can used to protect himself, but her ability is going to be needed to be used here so he can hold onto the freeze there to make sure that he gets the town hall down. But he's just being patient here, continuing to wrap up some more value with the queen before he activates the eagle artillery. And now he'll drop in the king, eagle artillery activates, and here we go. Let's see how far he can recover this. The king should break in here with the yak. Remember, the yak's going to do that additional damage to the walls, break through there nice and easy. King's going to have nowhere to go but inside. Queen finally does go down there after she ran out of support. And we'll see the hybrid coming in right at the eagle compartment over there on the left-hand side. So it's kind of a little bit of, a lot of bit going on here, rather. Uh, Hogs, Miners, Warden, RC all in, and we got Headhunters on the king. His king's ability is popped, looking to get that town hall down. That's a huge moment here. There we go. King's locked onto the Town Hall, and it's going to fall, but still a long way for him a three-star. Yeah, with the Eagle Artillery taking down at least, he'll be able to get a lot of percentage up here, but he'll just try to throw these extra balloons up on the top side here as the Hogs and Miners make their way in, give a little extra support here for the Royal Champion. She makes her approach into the defensive Royal Champion, who's already waking up a little bit there, but he's not going to make it all the way through the base here. These Miners are making their way down south. The Warden's still supporting them. A big split here. Wait, hold on, there's still a little... No, oh, he's gonna run out of time. Seconds, yeah, <laughs> I was like, these, these miners actually stayed alive pretty well here. Like, they're, they're still moving. The Royal Champion ability's still intact, and he's, other than these single Infernos, he's not looking too bad here, but these singles are gonna be a big problem for him here, and time is the bigger issue, as that'll stop this, uh, any potential chance for more uh, percentage here. 85% two-star, and that is devastation. Not what you want for no chance. That one just couldn't get going the right way. Couldn't mm -hmm. get his queen going where she needed to. She found every skeleton in existence. Not to mention the blimp had a little bit of issues. So no chance ice looking a little discouraged there. They know they're down. They know they're up against the powerhouse, and it's going to be a tough comeback. 
not out of the question. I mean, we, we've seen earlier today some crazy stuff, mm. but I think War and Glory is just on another level right now. I think they're just hyper focused, ready to get those three stars. So, do you think the blimp was supposed to take the town hall there, or this? That's what I was thinking. I don't know. That's why I said, "Oh no," because I thought the blimp was trying to make it to the town hall compartment, rage up, get that down, because that angle is weird. Yeah, it was. All right. Well, here we go. Gritticus will come in another anti-two star base. I mean, maybe, maybe Warren Glory is playing 40 chess here, and they just yeah, threw the first open to try to get everybody to throw anti-two star bases, so they come in here and clean up. I don't know. That's, well, I don't know. I, that's maybe they are big. Br <laughs> maybe. Maybe they're so confident in how good they are, they're like, we'll just qualify through the next one. I mean, they were close <laughs> on the qualification. It wasn't like a sure thing. There was other teams that were right there with them. But maybe they're like, we'll show a big weakness here. And Get then, fed yeah. something we love. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. That, but let's, that, that's that's 200, 400, 1700 IQ. I'm just making up numbers now. Gretik is coming in with that heavy queen charge. Flinger supported on the left hand side. Gonna look to get this queen in towards that town hall. Lots of pressure as the single locks on. We got the super wall breaker there. The freeze will lock it up here. He will step in there. He will get this single inferno down. The flame flinger continues to work on the far left side of the base here. But once again, when you're using the flame flinger when the, with a queen charge lalo <laughs> you are relying heavily on this queen actually taking the town hall down otherwise you got to invest every little bit of extra resources that you have to secure the town hall and it looks like she's moving all right here but up ahead you see some major threats there the double ground expo and the scatter shot plus the town hall damage she has the invisibility and she could use it right there to protect herself if necessary he also has the freezes he will Great, make his way in there, and the Skellies will stall him up for a moment, but he should be able to get the Town Hall down, and we get joined with the Royal Champion and the Lalo shortly. There we go. Queen finally gets it, pops her ability. Royal Champion's going to support her along the line. Gereticus's beard game's on point, so is that Queen Charge game, as she finishes off that Town Hall, finishes off the Scatter, and here comes that Lalo right at the Eagle Artillery. Now, you do have to be aware of this Royal Champion in the middle of the base. As the Queen steps in that Poison, she's going to take additional damage, throws down the Invis. This is uh, going to be a tough finish. Got the troops come out of his flame finger, but they're ground troops. Yetis and Valkyrie come out of there, but he's missing this multi inferno. He needs to get something to take a strike at it. He ends up losing his queen and the anti two star base. Maybe it's not 40 chess here, giving him trouble on this one as this one is crawling to a halt and a low percentage here. Bash, this might be the start of a swing here and give no chance a second chance. Hey. I don't know. Third chance ice. This is what they <laughs> this is what they needed though. This is exactly what they needed. It's mm -hmm. not quite as low as their miss of the 70%, but it's the first step. You have to get one, then you have to get another one, mm -hmm. but you have to three star. You have to put the pressure back on. Gretikus has to be disappointed with the 81%. That core was just too much for that queen to take on. You, you mentioned it, the two ground bows, the two scatters, yeah. the single there, the town hall. He had to commit a lot of resources and just on that back end. It was almost ready for that Lalo entry. There's a lot of traps throughout there, but they're still in a nice position. And if you're Warren Glory, you're feeling all right about that. And here's that entry I was talking about. That the Lalo just struggled to get through. Yeah, this uh, Lalo is always a little bit difficult when you're pushing it through multi infernos. And with the multi inferno not getting any balloons to go after it early there, they got a couple into it, but they were able to stop them. That was, a, that was a rough Lalo there, and that multi did a lot of damage to him and really, really shut that Lalo down hard. Yeah, only one balloon went to it. Those other ones mm -hmm. kind of went around. So uh, if we see, I guess uh, if they get another low one, we could be pretty back to square, assuming no chance gets a couple three stars here with that 81%. Warren Glory still in the commanding leader position, but no chance has to come out and get a three star with this tech. No question. There's no, you can't do anything. You have to three star here. They don't get a fourth chance. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe uh, they do. Let, let's see what you have uh, for us. It looks like it is a... sneakies. Yeah, sneaky... I was going to say a sneaky bat rider, but no, there's a Lalo with this one here and a flame flinger. Okay, it's a it's a sneaky goblin town hall takedown with a Sui hero Lalo and a flame flinger. A very interesting attack here off meta a little bit. We'll see if you make it happen as he uh, gets those sneakies to go in here, clear all the collectors and storages around the town hall, triggers the traps. He's got most of the traps there triggered. Seems like he's got a safe entry and plenty more sneaky goblins to go in there. And looks like the invisibility will protect those sneakies. He'll get the town hall down. And phase one is complete. A lot of attack left here to go, Bash. 
DC starts to pull out also. But the one thing about the sneaky uh, Goblin takedown is it does take up a little bit of time. That was over 30 seconds just for the Town Hall with nothing else going on. We did get a few of the Clan Castle troops. Uh, it might be another Lava Hound, or not another Lava Hound, but a Lava Hound in there still remaining. That's yet to be seen, but did pull out some of those smaller troops. We got the Flinger in working on that mortar and the queen's getting ready to go down so a heavy push here from the heroes using that flame flinger as well royal champion now in on the right side and yeah, notice the queen is over to the right side as well the king is actually ending up taking off to the left and that could be a little bit of a problem because it's kind of still in the targets of the flame flinger but he's actually going to go down over there there's the rest of the Ooh. cc pull and it's going north it's going no oh, oh it takes the right turn and heads over to the heroes flame flinger stays safe he's got the poison down and RC is going to push all the way to the middle. He pops up Warden, Warden. and Protective. I didn't realize he even still had that as all the heroes work together. But with the Warden being used with the main force there, with the heroes, that means the rest of the Lalo, as it comes in from the left side, has no Warden support and leaves it very vulnerable. Uh, yeah, no life aura to give them extra hit points. No Warden's Eternal Tome to protect them for those few seconds. So this is going to be a tough finish. Does get to the Royal Champion. Needs the scatter shot to fall. It does. We got a uh, Dragon Rider, a few more balloons out of that Flame Flinger. Queen's pushing through here. She does not have ability, but has a freeze. Freeze spell goes off, gets the Inferno down, and there's not too many more defenses. This is looking all right for Jared. Yeah, he's got a lot of Lava Pups here that are generated from his Hounds popping that are keeping that air defense under control. The Warden is set to ground, and he goes ahead and freezes <laughs> the air defense. The Warden was working with the other heroes, so now he transfers, and now he's giving that health aura. The haste will carry him into the Wizard Tower, and the health nice. aura will get him through, guys. This is going to be a triple, and this is what they needed. This is a big, big pickup answering the miss from War and Glory and getting the triple here is absolutely huge, but they need to make it happen again to be able to make the comeback in this war. Right, that's what they needed though. That's the first step. Yes, yes. You, you need the th triple there. Great attack, beautiful attack. Well planned, well executed. Love the sneakies there. Mm -hmm. But now you need one more defense and then you gotta do it again. So a long road. And then road. we gotta see where the percentage is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, a long road, but no chance ice. Still not out of it. Uh, I like this one a lot. I love the Town Hall takedown. The huge commitment. This is a crazy commitment to those heroes. We had multiple Ice Golems. We had the Queen, the Royal Champion, the Warden all working together. The King pulled off the Tornado Trap. And then from there, the Lalo was able to sail through. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to point out that he manually opened up his Stone Slammer. Or is that not Stone Slammer? Is a Flame Flinger to right. get the Dragon Rider and the Balloons to join in with the rest of the force there. So they all worked it together because otherwise, the Lala would have started to take the target, the Flame Flinger would have spent the rest of the attack there just trying to catch up. So right. just get those troops moving because they weren't going to get any value chasing. Great identification to pop that open. Also, that Rider is going to provide a little bit of additional tanking. We mm -hmm. talked about that with the Warden not being there. So this one's, uh, it's Warden really... was there, though. <laughs> well, he eventually got there. <laughs> got You're right. There. He eventually came over. He's like, I'm on ground, but I... here's an aura. I got you guys. I got an aura. Mm -hmm. a, a defense here could sway this war. I mean, they're still questionably going to be down on defense, but we're going to have Agent 33 coming in with a smash of sorts. Lightning spells, healers, P.E.K.K.A.s, golems. Is he, is he trying to know his arc here? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is going to be done very similar to what we saw with the Super Witch Attack out of Nyx. So it is a very effective way to take these anti-two-star bases. You can do a lot of different smash attacks, whether it be Super Bowlers, Super Witches, or P.E.K.K.A. Smash. When you pair it with the Lightning, then he just needs to get the Queen to go the right direction here. And down south, to get the Eagle Artillery out of the way here is a very optimal way to go here. And he's got the Flame Flinger as well that he hasn't started yet. I'm curious to see where he ends up putting it as he blankets the bottom baser with a handful of balloons. Queen's going to start working, and she should have no problem getting down that enemy queen as she's one shot right there. You hear that call out a lot in other games, but queen is literally one shot here. Uh, has that warden supporting this queen charge, and here comes the P.E.K.K.A.s. Just a little smash here. P.E.K.K.A. smash going in the middle. You got headhunters in for the enemy king, and his king's down there at the bottom to push everything up and through the middle of the space. Still no flinger, though. No flinger. We'll see what he does that maybe he ends up even swapping it out to something else there's obviously some good uh siege breaks value over on the right side he does swap out for a siege breaks now right as i say that so we'll see what he can do over there but he needs to get through to the town hall here he's got 
no jump Ooh. spells, and luckily some open corpses. Look at the queen, though. The queen misses the funnel with that uh, wizard tower that he tried to snipe off with some balloons over there, end up not going down. The queen has veered off path. He'll try to correct that path with the world champion and drive her into a different route. There's so many different routes for her to choose for. You can walk her way in here and get this town hall down, and the healers stay right with her. But is the other half of the attack here staying protected enough there without the healers to survive this is going to be the question. That queen was all over the place. Siege Barracks took a little bit of damage, so didn't get its full life expectancy with those free wizards out of there. RC is taking a little bit of damage, but she should be able to get through the scatter to alleviate some of this pressure on the queen. Queen still has ability, rage, and a freeze. Oh, Royal Champion still has ability as well. Denton Seer down there with the ability. So this is looking really strong for Aja. Absolutely. This is a defensive Royal Champion on the back end of the attack there. There could be a problem. He puts the Rage down, but the Royal Champion offense is not covered by the Rage. In fact, nothing is covered by that Rage, so he's not getting any value out of it. And that's going to make him lose his Queen as well. Oh, no. He should have put that Rage onto the Queen and her healers. And that's going to shut the attack down. And it ties up the score. But where does the percentage land? I think it might still yeah. be into Warren Glory's advantage here, as this one still rides all the way up here. And we'll close at 86% as the Hound pops. Oh. And <laughs> put it by with uh, they should still be up on percentage. Remember, the miss was a 70% miss, so still mm -hmm. gonna be up on percent. I think uh, 12, 13 percentage points there. That one was looking good there for a moment, and just faded. Uh, I think you mentioned that misplaced rage uh, didn't maybe on the queen get them through the rest of the base, or at least a little bit higher percentage. Yeah, I tried to get it down there, but I mean, this good, good adjustment here with the spells. He recognizes that the. Queen has split off there, and she can still pick up some good value, and he just turned it into a Queen Charge. Rather than having them all join together, get the separation, take advantage of it, and just continue on with the Queen Charge. But he should have continued on with the Queen Charge a bit longer here, because it ultimately cost him the Queen as he had a couple defenses on the backside. He might have been able to pull through there, but he still had the Lava Hound that could have taken out the Queen and stalled her up there because the healers were getting targeted at that time, so he might have been doomed either way. I'm looking at it, yeah, they're still up by three percentage points here. That's 70%. So just a little bit of a misstep there. Mm -hmm. But if no chance, three stars here. One more defense. <laughs> Anything can happen. I mean, we've right. seen these anti-twos be a problem. We thought maybe uh, maybe the 4D chest, but I think it's still an issue. I don't think that's as big of an issue, but it's still an issue. We're seeing that right now. Queen Charge Lalo coming in for Where's Penny. Uh, looks pretty standard with the Log Launcher. Could this be that Log Launcher charge that we talked about where it's a really huge risk all the way across the base and it's kind of looking that way. Yeah, going with the King to go into the Eagle Artillery compartment. We're not seeing anything additionally invested. Nope, now we are. Here we go. The Warden and the Log Launcher deploy with the King and they will cut the Queen off. The Queen cuts them off as well and drives them all in the compartment while the Queen continues down the line. She's going to need some access into this Molten Inferno. Otherwise, that Molten Inferno is going to potentially target her healers there. We'll keep a close eye on that as he continues to make his way into the base. He does actually have the Log Launcher open up access to it. And there's the CC pole. Log Launcher is going to get the strikes of these headhunters. <laughs> they're dodging logs in there. And he is not able to get those dealt with there with the logs. But that's fine. That Log Launcher is still throwing some shots into that single front of the middle of the base. And his multi inferno should go down Queen. here, I think. Queen! Ooh. Queen! Ooh. Ability. ability is forced here. That is not what he wants. You need that queen ability up as long as possible. The RC and the scatter shot, just too much pressure for her to take on. Uh, we have Royal Champion still working through that top side. Queen can still get to this town hall. He's still going to jump spell two rages and three freezes. Plenty of support here. He's just got to keep an eye on that queen a little bit. Jump will get him over to the town hall. Needs, uh, needs a rage to get this queen top back off here full health. Yeah, might want to lead that rage a little bit. They're going to freeze it up for now. The Warden is dishing out some extra damage with the Queen. He'll leave the rage behind pretty quickly. He'll lead the Queen with the rage now, so she steps into it. Now she steps into the Town Hall damage, and she's inside of the rage there, and her healers are inside of the rage. Now he's got 16 balloons and one Lava Hound. Plenty of minions for cleanup here. He loses his Warden, but the Queen Charge is going to end up staying to the south side of this compartment and avoid the Town Hall poison all the way through. So if he can get this top compartment down with the small amount of Lalo, then he should be able to handle this. And he's got plenty of spell support to make that happen and shut this guy to shot down. He could keep this queen raged up and really, he's fine here. Like he's got plenty of time. A lot of the base is down, still a full minute left. Gonna support the queen here just with a few balloons, few minions for cleanup. Just trying to make sure he doesn't have any time issues on the bottom side of this base, pulling out skeletons. And then there's what, seven defenses over here, maybe eight, nine defenses for the 
Lalo to finish up. The Queen's going to help out. Just freeze that scatter shot, and the Lalo will have no problem getting through here. Two freezes, Rage left. Where's Perry getting the three star, Eric? This is what they needed. This is huge right here. Put the pressure on to War and Glory. Swag Woo! the rest of the spells and 13 stars on the board here for no chance eyes. I think they definitely got their second chance here, but it's not over yet. War and Glory has one more attack to go and they can still attack. They still have that percentage advantage. Yeah, you, you had to get a three star here. No question about it. And this one was a little dicey. I was worried. Uh, the queen gets under fire from the royal champion. The scatter shot. Uh, a lot of pressure on the top side with the clan castle coming out. I was worried, but beautiful patience, beautiful recovery. Stayed with it. Great jump spell. Great use of the rages to keep that queen up. And now it's going to come down to this final attack. These wars today are nutty. Just back and forth wars, really close. This is what I love to see from these teams. No chance did their job. It's up to one glory now, Eric. Yeah, they've they've overcome everything that they can so far here. And when the pressure's on, Perry delivered. This is exactly what they were looking for. This is a huge moment right for there for them taking potentially down one of the biggest name teams in Clash of Clans Esports right there. But here we go. Benny will come in for the final attack of the war. More anti two-star bases. And we'll see if it is indeed their kryptonite here. He's got this blimp sail in to go form the funnel. The queen under a little bit of damage there right out of the gate there, but she gets to heal it down. He gets the funnel formed there with the Yeti Bomb, taking out the Inferno, taking out the Eagle Artillery, and catching a bit of this Tesla farm all in one fell swoop. But this queen does a lot of incoming damage here with all these Expos that are surrounding this town hall. Great use of the rage with the headhunter to take down that king. But you're right, the queen's going to step up here and she's going to be under more and more fire. King will try to alleviate a little bit. He'll take on the scatter, but the queen now has four bows on her. That is going to be rough. First bow drops down as she's making her way in towards that town hall. King's getting taken out. Clan Castle now out. She's going to have to deal with them as well. Yeah, he did get a couple of Black Mines pulled out of the path of the Queen's healers with a couple of Coco Loons. He goes invisible with the Queen, which makes so that the Lava Hound does not see the Queen and doesn't target her and doesn't pull aggro off of her while she fights that Town Hall down, which gives him exactly enough to power through. He needs to get back around her and get these Headhunters off of the back of the Queen there. She ends up going to ability. Still has, uh, no, he lost his poison, so he's gonna have to clean up these pups one at a time. The queen's still under heavy, heavy fire here, and he is far from over here as he tries to alleviate the damage oh, with queen. the Lalo coming She's in. down. Queen is down. Royal Champion's coming in to support. And this is what we've seen. We've seen them try to queen charge these heavy compartments, and the queen can't make it through there. We see that here. Eric, this is crazy. This is going to be a tough finish. Queen is still up. He has a headhunter, but he needed that headhunter in. Oh, there's a headhunter in there. Okay, he mm -hmm. snuck one through. Still has balloons. Royal Champion's going to be a little bit of an issue here. He's got his Royal Champion. This is going to be a tight finish for Benny. It's looking all right, but a lot of key defenses up. Multi, Royal Champion. I think his time is the biggest thing here. He's got the freezes. The Warden is still alive. He'll power through that single Inferno. RC ability can get him through a handful of the Teslas and Archer Towers, depending where he wants to use it. He does end up taking out two Teslas and an Archer Tower. He does end up end up having to tank the beams of the Molten Inferno, freezes it as he sends in the last couple of balloons. Good distribution of the balloons. The Royal Champion clears out the right-hand corner. It's going to come down to the wire here. He's going to have to circle back over to pick up the multi, but he got all the defenses down except for that Wizard Tower. He's got the triple. He's got it. He's got the triple. Wait, time. Time still the factor here. Seconds. He's got to clean up fast. This is the entire war on the line here. 22 seconds, Royal Champions. He's still got nine buildings left. 18, ticking away. Three storages. They're working as hard as they can, but the Queen, or the Royal Champion, rather, had to take out that Wizard Tower. 94%, oh. 10 seconds. It's coming down to the wire for Benny. Can he get through the storage? Two buildings oh. remaining. Eric, I don't know. Oh. Eric, he's not going to no, make it. No, no, no. 99%. Oh, oh Benny. Benny. Dream. Benny not no. able to get the win there, and you can see it's all smiles over here for the other team as they take the win. They got their chance, and they were able to seize it. There we go. No chance. Ice didn't give up. The boys are smiling, excited. You got to be feeling good after that comeback. I thought they were going to be. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I love you guys. No chance, Ice, but I thought you guys were done for. After the 70% back-to-back -back triples from Warglory, great persistence. They put out these bases that have gave one glory problems and it paid off. 99% time fail to win the war. What?
Absolutely, <laughs> and like these anti two star bases, they gave them trouble here, holding War and Glory to 12 stars here. It does uh, more than they were able to get when they were playing through split one, but that is still potentially their kryptonite here, and we'll have to keep an eye out if they're able to handle them moving forward. But guys, this is wild. A big, big pickup here as the underdog team takes down the team with a four-time Snapdragon champion on it with wow. Nick on that team. That is wild. Commanding percentage lead there for War and Glory, but ultimately it comes down to stars. Mm -hmm. 13 to 12, the anti-twos hold strong. And that's just a time fill. He had the units. He just needed 2.6 <laughs> right. more seconds. He needed one spear from that Royal Champion. Oh, Benny's got to be feeling devastated after that. But again, it's not an elimination matchup, so they're mm -hmm. still going to play more. Not the end of the world, but no chance. Ice has got to be feeling great. Absolutely. That was a wild, wild war, but it's only the first war of this round robin. They have to all play each other, and there's plenty of room to make up for, so War and Glory is far from done, but a nice start here from No Chance Ice. GG to both clans, and congrats to No Chance Ice. Guys, make sure you stick around for more wars, more analysis. You're watching a Snapdragon Pro Series. The Snapdragon Pro Series is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Monster Energy, DHL, and the U.S. Air Force. On the miss of snap any minute casually when it stop tripping on me stop dissing on me i got a dream can't take it from me my fire's burning i'm always learning tell me where to go man i'm on a journey i can't explain it i get excited keep a 300 keen leonidas strap in because it's gonna be a long ride working on me every single day and night there comes a time when your worlds will collide if it's holding you back, push it right to the side. Ain't got no time for no care. I work too hard to get here. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get here. I don't got the time. Put me in, coach. I've been going hard. Time to let it show. Everything raw. Give it to me now. Let me have a spot. Man, it's going down. Gotta get it here. I don't want to wait. Take what I want. Then I go train. Gotta get a win. I won't lose the game. This is my year. I ain't gonna break. Strap in, cause it's gonna be a long ride. Working on me every single day and night. There comes a time when your worlds will collide. If it's holding you back, push it right to the side. I will never settle, mind over matter, get the gold medal on another level. I will never settle, mind over matter, get the gold medal. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get me up. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get me up. On another level, I will never settle, mind over matter, get the gold medal. Welcome to the place where dreams come true. Where everything you want can be yours. Wow. If and only if just, uh, you're willing to work for them. You're willing to hurt for them. But most of all, you're willing to be first for them. Ha. Look, 
I'm going straight to the top. I don't know how I would stop, like it or not. I got some goals that I'm hitting. You hear what I'm spitting? It's hot. Look what I got. Whole lot of passion and pain. The road to success is insane. Stay out my lane. Two chances, three chances. How many more chances? Are they gonna are they gonna take? Are they gonna need to make it to this next level? Ice in their veins, a single percent, a single second, and one opportunity to, to get that win. And boy, Eric, did they take it with both hands. Absolutely. What a crazy comeback there. And that seems to be the story of the day here. Team after team are getting these crazy comebacks. They don't give up, they keep rolling, but there was one attack that caught my attention here, and that was from Dobbs. Dobbs from No Chance Ice had this really, really cool uh, queen charge into Lalo, where he charged the queen into the eagle artillery here, but I wanna pay special attention later in the attack here as he goes for the town hall takedown, but a nice queen charge that was supported by the King and the Royal Champion. Now notice how they have multiple different lanes here that they're going down. So the King and the Royal Champion handle one lane and with a basically two large compartments on the edge of the base there with both sets of heroes. The Queen Charge taking out one compartment, the King and the Royal Champion handling the other and then getting the CC pull and then keep the Queen Charge moving to continue even further beyond there all the way down towards this other multi-inferno and move into the backside there to meet up with the Lalo at the end for the cleanup. So a really, really nice way to enter the base here. The Royal Champion able to reach over the walls there and pick up that scatter shot that was kind of islanded off in the middle of that compartment. A nice uh, setup here. There's that CC pull that uh, the Queen was obviously going to have to deal with. He had to make sure that he pulled it and made sure that the Lalo's able to make their way through. But look at this invisibility over on the right side. That invisibility over on that air defense was absolutely critical to putting the Hound right into the area above the Town Hall. The Hound was able to pop and that activates the Town Hall if he didn't already have the activation. And then he starts to freeze up the Town Hall. But more importantly, it clears the typical big giant red bomb farm that we see typically behind that town hall and make sure that the balloons can move through there without having to be worried about that and kind of help secure the town hall takedown by securing that tornado trap trigger nice and early as well. So now the queen still moving with the charge on the other side of the base there, moves around and tries to get into the scatter shot. Obviously she didn't take the path to the scatter shot. So the balloons will be able to sweep in there and overwhelm it. But guys, this was a really, really cool attack. Love to see what he did with the hound there. That was a little, just the little nuances that can really make a big difference in the attack there and be able to clear all the traps around that town hall. Such a cool way to execute that attack. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that before here, uh, Paul. And look, it just goes to show that at this high level of play, like one spell placement mm -hmm. can make the difference of, of pass or fail at this level. The bases are so well designed. They've got base builders from all over the world coming in. And in order to beat these, you got to be the best. And today, clearly, it was enough. I, I'm getting word that Glitter's standing by with a special guest. I was going to introduce her, but I think I'm going to let her do so because I know this is someone she's a fan of. <laughs> Not just me. I think everyone is a fan of Sir Tony Gunk, a.k.a. affectionately now dubbed Taco Tony. Hi. Welcome back. How are you? I'm doing good. How's everyone else doing? Okay, we're fantastic, especially after watching that war, and I have so many questions for you. So starting with before we even get to what happened in the war, you were going into that 0-5 against War and Glory, going up against one of the scariest teams in the challenge right now. So what was that like? Did you feel added pressure? There was definitely some pressure because War and Glory has beat us so many times, but those losses um, throughout the ladder play have been one building, three buildings. We lost on a 99% time fail during the ladder stage as well, so maybe a little bit of karma going into <laughs> that one. But um, anyone can beat anyone in this meta, and, and we, I'm really confident in the team that we have right now. So, yeah, I mean, you guys really pulled that one out there. Now, not to roast you at all, but I do have to ask, you came out of the gate with the two star, the 70%, right? Now, how do you rally your team after that? Yeah, it was definitely not the start I want. I usually like to start off with the triple and I felt confident things just didn't go my way. Um, so we just focused on the other bases, kept our plans alive. We knew we had to win on stars after that first hit. So just big shout out to my team. Um, Dobbs has been amazing with that invisibility trick he's been doing. So hopefully we don't see it used against us now, but 
really just <laughs> focusing on our attacks, taking it one base at a time, and, and team effort, just trying to stay positive. Now, how stressful is it for you when you're watching the final attack, you're watching the time slowly tick down, and the percentage is slowly ticking up, like, like what, just having to sit back and watch that all happen, what's going through your mind? Oh, it was painful, and as soon as the attack was started, I'm calling for a 99% time fail or, or something like that, and throughout the attack, when RC got the healers, you know, everyone's calling a triple, just trying to use all the Jinx power in the world. Maybe Eric was thinking it too, because it ended up working out for us. Now, you know I have to ask, okay? What was the order today before you started? Because I, I have so many people that are waiting for me to ask this question. Oh, same order as always, the, the Chalupa, Chicken Quesadilla, but maybe I need a second round to, to pick myself up there because <laughs> just wasn't getting the job done. <laughs> well, hopefully you can get that second round of Taco Bell and get yourself prepped for the next war. Obviously, before I let you go, some final shout outs. Oh yeah, uh, big shout out to everyone else I said last time. There's so many people I'd love to shout out. Um, my team, all the base players we did. Big shout out to the friend of the members, Fade, um, Badstag, McKendro. Uh, big shout out to my friends, Putty Rose and Big Vale. I mean, there's so many people I could shout out. Well, thank you for taking time to chat. It's always a pleasure being able to talk with you. Congratulations on the incredible war. And I'm excited to watch you guys play again. Thank you, looking forward to facing CMG tonight. All right. Listen, I'm not going to lie. I know we're not supposed to play favorites, yeah. but he might be one of my favorite people to talk to, okay? Yeah. How can he not be? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's pretty entertaining. I mean, really great attitude, even after the fail. Just a really yeah. positive guy. You got to love that. I mean, it, it's it's good to see from the players. Absolutely. Gives so much credit to his team. And, and they really did have to work as a unit to really pull that one out because yeah. it was so, so close. And now we'll have to see if that trend continues in the next war because I feel like that's what's been going on all day. And, of course, <laughs> that means the next war is going to be between Flaming Turkeys and Push. So now we need to dive into that matchup because you guys have talked about it a few times. We've seen the incredibly scary, perfect performance out of Push, and then we've got the unknown of the Flaming Turkeys. Right. Flaming Turkeys, I would say, is our biggest wild card remaining. We got Trust Me Under, Ethan, Dustin, Easy, and Vibiv, and we don't really know a lot. We still don't know a lot about these guys, Eric, but they came out and they secured their spot. They're here to play, got their game faces on, ready to go here today. And not only did they secure their spot, but they did it in the upper bracket. They went right. undefeated in their open finals, and they were able to secure the spot here today. So this is definitely a team to be looking forward to. And like we're saying, one of those Cinderella stories where you see a team that has uh, no prior showings to and then just randomly shows up, and that just kind of shows the spirit of the Snapdragon Mobile Open, where anybody can just show up and participate, and maybe they're the next big thing. It's the era of everyone, and Flaming Turkeys is the perfect example of it. I loved watching them play uh, when we cast them before. It was a really fun war. Uh, they put up really nice performances, really nice stars. So we'll have to see if they're able to keep that momentum. I mean, like you mentioned, undefeated, qualified through the top bracket, not the elimination bracket, not the lower bracket. They went straight through. So these guys, they're here. They're, they're ready to go. But let's take a look at their opponent on the other side here, who had a, they put up a really, really impressive cool. showing. Also went undefeated in the upper bracket to qualify for their own spot here. We got Flame, Zuko, we got Champ, uh, ECJ, and John. And these guys in the last round there of the the uh, first, or I guess second split, I guess, they put up a perfect war. So they're coming off of a big one. They put up really, really solid scores all the way through. They got game phases on. They are ready to go here, and we'll see what they got for us. I believe our only perfect war on broadcast. So, so very impressive. These guys were someone we haven't seen a lot from, let's be honest, but they came out the gate firing and firing and firing. I think that was the uh, the rock, paper, scissors war, if I remember <laughs> right. And they have an Eric, so you got to be excited. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd love to see it, but they, they had good fundamentals all the way through here. I'd love to see their attacks and love to see just good fundamentals all the way through. And these, like you're saying, even though they, they were taking out War and Glory, we just saw War and Glory put up a really, really good fight there. But those anti two star bases, I wonder if we see those on defense again here. Right, right. It's. It's, it's a double-sided thing here. It's not just how you attack, 
but how you defend as well. And that's been a huge storyline, and we'll continue to watch that. But taking a look, look at this war. Oh my this gosh, is this is so even. <laughs> by far our closest matchup of the day statistically. Uh, basically 12 stars to 12 stars, basically 91 to 91 percentage. This one can be anyone's ball game. I'm so excited for these two clans to play this matchup. I mean, you're talking about close and you want to know their their head to head too. Oh yeah. It's just as close. It's it's only one and oh. They haven't even gotten to see each other that much. Oh, okay. So I, I mean, when you've got stats like that and a head to head like this, it is probably going to be like what we just saw in right. the previous war. I'm here mm -hmm. for it and I'm excited to see how it plays out. And of course we need to ask chat how you think it's going to be playing out. Will it be the flaming turkeys with the phenomenal name or will it be the perfect war coming out of push? Which teams coming out on top? We'd love to hear your opinion as always at the bottom of Twitch chat. Let us know because this soon to be very close war is right around the corner. I hope you guys are prepared for yet another <laughs> headbanger. <laughs> These wars have been so exciting today. This is going to be so much fun to watch. I'm, I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go. I, 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 th I think we're about ready to go, right? Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. It's, it is time for you guys to take it away yet again. Right, we got Flame from Push coming in, and we saw this from them. This seems like one of their go-tos, the Clone Bomb Hydra. We're going to use those two clones to clone up what comes out of the blimp, and we saw this kind of variation also with the more Dragon Riders. Seven Dragon Riders. That's not really traditional for this style of attack. Yeah, but uh, going heavy on the Dragon Riders gives you a lot more ability to take down defenses, but less ability to take down heroes. I we typically see this with it going almost an exact reversal of the ratios of dragons and dragon runners there, but we'll see what he can do with it as he gets his king to go in after the defensive world champion. A headhunter gets through there. And where's his queen? His queen is down at the south side there, working along the south ender to pick up that air defense after she steps in. He's got all of the defensive heroes under control except for the king, but there's a dragon on top of that. Oh. And the clone blimp there getting some pretty solid value. A lot of those cloned uh, Blues there escaped the Town Hall poison and they took out a massive hole in the base right there. That's friend. what these guys are so good at. And I've seen these guys, I, I play Legends League a lot. I'm not as good as anyone here, by, but I see players from the clan push. So you got to know they know how to play Legends League, which is this is a really popular Legends League attack. So you know that they're really good with it. And getting that spread on those clone balloons is essential for these attacks. It's so interesting to see this ratio of the Dragon Riders and Dragons. It works. It makes me nervous because if you end up having a defensive hero staying up and starting to pick off Dragon Riders like crazy, it is a bit of a risk there, which is why people typically go in heavier with the Dragons and lighter on the Dragon Riders. But they have completely reversed it. And honestly, these Dragon Riders just clean house through this base. And he's still got those defensive heroes under control. He's got that King still standing on the far right side, but he's not going to do anything to stop this. So I'm just taking a note here. Use more riders in my clone bombs. Got it. I'm on it. I'm going to be a better player immediately. <laughs> but push. I mean, they're, they're taking off right from the, where we last saw them. Three star after three star. And they start the war with a perfect three star. This was great. Look at all those remaining troops. Mm -hmm. Beautiful attack from Flame. Beautiful spread on that clone bomb. You almost think as Flaming Turkeys, you have to bait that town hall with tornadoes. We need to see that come into play at some point in this war. You know what they like to use, right? Yeah, I mean, if you know what they like to use, then you can build your base specifically to try to stop it. You can put your traps in positions, even if you didn't have to build new bases, just setting up your traps, a lot of internal uh, black air bombs to try to catch a lot of these dragons deep in the base while they're away from the ward ability. But that blimp always has a nice extra bonus, not only taking out the town hall area, but it triggers all the traps on the way through while it's protected on the ward ability, which gives a nice lane for those dragons and dragon riders to move along. But it's always a matter of can you get the defensive queen and royal champion out? If you have a good plan for those and you can handle the defensive CC, there's honestly not a lot that can stop this many dragon riders after that huge chunk of the base there is removed. That was a beautiful attack. You saw Flame pumped up there at the end of the attack and with his clan mates. You got to be excited. That's how you want to start off a war here in mm -hmm. the mobile challenge. A three star. So I, not much to say about it. It is, it's a three star. It's a, it's an effective attack there. Definitely, uh, I could see that shift in ratio. I mean, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to get burned by it if they try to throw that in there and don't know exactly what they're doing with it. But right. they, they handled it well. It was a really, really well executed 
uh, attack there with an uh, abnormal ratio that can burn a lot of people. It's burned me many times there, but they seem to be really comfortable with it. I felt like you were taking a shot at me personally, you know, like, oh, Bash, you'll get burned if you try it. Don't do it. I, I got you. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down, buddy. I won't try it. <laughs> We got Flaming Turkey is going to look to respond, but push off to where they left off the last time we saw them. It's going to be on the turkeys to answer, and we got a Queen Charge hybrid coming in from Vibuff here, and we get, so far, we got the uh, Siege Barracks selected. Remember, we'll get a P.E.K.K.A., a few extra Wizards out of there. Looking like we're going to Queen Charge into this Town Hall. Got to be aware of the single, got to be aware of the Clan Castle as he pushes into this compartment. We need to get these Bomb Towers down. The two bomb towers in this town hall compartment always makes it a very very viable target for a queen charge into hogminer hybrid get those bomb towers out of the way early with the queen charge because she can handle them a lot better than the hogs and miners can but he also needs to be paying attention to the cc pull here it's going to be late he's going to be able to take the town hall down before he pulls the cc and nice coca loons in there finding some black mines ahead of the queen's healers and just clearing the area of the minefield here we go queen for the town hall beautiful seeking air my our Coco Loon catching the Seeking Air Mine, rather. Queen's going to rage up, get that Town Hall down, no problem. Then she'll continue to push in. We see that King over there with the Siege Barracks on the top right-hand side of the base. Over there at that 3 o'clock position, and here comes the Hybrid. He's creating that alleyway. Think of it about like a bowling alley. You want the troops, aka the bowling ball, going right down the middle of the alley. And here we go with the Hogs, Miners, World Champion, and the Warden. Now we got the Clan Castle finally pulled, but the Queen's not by it. Uh, RC's right there. The poison is controlling the defensive CC right there. He's got a lot of miners in there. He may want to heal in the middle of the base there because he's got the double multi inferno. But he'll go ahead and ward ability through it. That keeps everybody safe in there, including the balloon that's uh, surging out in front there <laughs> the as well. The balloon's catching everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to dish out some more damage here. He loses the healer to the uh, queen's healer, or he loses a, a healer to a black mine over by the queen. But the queen goes to her ability, takes out the defensive queen. RC pops her ability, works her way partially through the Tesla farm. If he gets through that scatter shot, there is a ton of hogs and miners in that right side. So the road champion has a critical job, and at least the separation of the hogs and miners will give him a chance to at least split up the pack here. So the scatter shot's not striking everything <laughs> at once, and it looks like he's got it. He knows he's got it. And they start off with the triple, flaming turkeys opening up with that triple back and forth and look at that those headhunters following the hogs of miner just helping out a little bit 52 seconds plenty of time no issues there queens at full health and vibov got the response that they needed a three star 100 percent with the queen charge hybrid one of my favorite attacks to see when it goes that well that was smooth that was well thought out beautifully executed by the flaming turkeys yeah that was a that was like a perfect base for a queen charge right. hog banner. really good base identification right there we can see the cc up in the middle base there away from the single inferno so you can fight the cc either with the raw champion like he did there or well just no matter what you just want to make sure that single inferno and the cc have some separation so you don't have to fight a cc while you have a single inferno locked on to you and pick up all those bomb towers with the town hall really really strong way to set this up and their base identification was spot on right here as this hybrid just ripped this base to shreds. Great spell usage on this one as well. I'm gonna just say that, like the spells were on point. Queen got through and here we go. I mean, this we haven't seen this yet. We haven't, we haven't mm -hmm. seen that back and forth off after the first attack. Uh, no one has to catch up. No one has to keep their foot on the gas. Well, I guess they both need to keep yeah, their foot do. on the gas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess just keep your feet on the gas. No one needs to catch up. <laughs> That's yeah. right. We'll just, we'll just have them both go for the perfect war there. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, I feel like push, like their average attack stars from the, the stats that we looked at before the war were saying 12 stars, but they feel like they've had a higher performance with that when they played through uh, the the open split. So that, yeah. that those numbers might be heavily swayed there by what they did in the in the latter phase there. So I'm definitely curious to see if they can keep this three star train rolling because they are absolutely holding some momentum right now. Yeah, I know when I play through the ladder, like maybe, you know, you don't do as well. You catch a little bit more traps. Maybe they caught some of those baited tornado traps, kind of threw off their favorite strategies. But we got Danny Zuko coming out with another queen charge hybrid. First for push, but another queen charge hybrid back to back. We're going to have the flame flinger hybrid. I've seen this variation and I like this a lot. If you can keep that flinger up, you can get so much value out of it, and then you can get so much value out of your Queen Charge, and you don't have to worry about the Flinger. It's just going to go over there. It's going to get this Mortar down. It takes a shot from the Mortar. The Queen's going to look to get the Town Hall down. Mm -hmm. But the Flame Flinger taking a bit of damage there. It does weaken it overall, but most importantly, it can 
alter its delivery time of the troops that are inside of it because he does want those to join in with uh, wherever the hybrid uh, deploys here. So making like a pincer style attack here where the queen cuts into one corner completely opposite of the flame flamethinger and creates a lane all the way through the middle of the base here. And the CC is pretty offset from the town hall here. So we do need to be careful with that. We have the bomb towers separated out to the, the left and right side of the base there. So that may uh, alter where he wants to actually throw down his heal spells and with all the multi infernos and the scatter shots This is not going to be an easy push here for Zuko and uh, I'm a little bit nervous here with this one here bash This feels like a difficult base to send a hybrid at He's got the king coming in he's gonna set that alleyway send the hybrid in here right on the left hand side Everything's in king queen All the high hogs miners royal champion warden does catch the king in that warden ability going to push through the middle of this base. We got yetis coming out of that flame flinger. Queen's still working. We got clan castle troops now working. Going to have to get through those headhunters so we don't lose the heroes. Yeah, the pathing into this multi inferno has given him some trouble here. The queen also running into trouble there as she gets locked on by the center single inferno. She does make it through the defensive row champion and he's really struggling with these multis. He finally gets one of them down. But uh, does he get through that expo down there? Yes, he does. There's still some miners that are alive there. They're still pushing here. The queen lost their healers, but she's still alive. The king has his ability. There's still a little bit of life left oh, in this single. attack here. It's slowing down a little bit, but if that heal, he might be able to make it through here, Bash. They're working. RC's fading. She's out. Queen goes down. King still has ability. King is tanking right here. Miner's going to go over to the scatter shot. He's got plenty of miners up. I think Zuko's going to get this. Scatter shot <laughs> falls. Push, showing the versatility, air, ground, they don't care. They're going to three-star Danny Zuko. You should be proud of that attack because it was a tough one. Yeah, absolutely. You can see that uh, that moment of relief when he realizes that he's got the triple right there and goes right into celebration. Absolutely killed it. And uh, that that's a that's a big pickup right there because that was a tough base for a hybrid. I feel like that was it. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. Maybe he knew exactly <laughs> he was doing it and I just don't know. Uh, but that... That I would never try a hybrid against that base. That seemed like it was a very anti hybrid style base here with the bomb towers not in the town hall compartment, the multi infernos wrapped across the top of the base, and even that flame flinger took some heavy damage right out of the gate. Yeah, and the alleyway was really weird here because it was, it was an L shape, but it was mm -hmm. like kind of a weird L shape. Yeah. Uh, look at that. <laughs> Danny Zuko so excited. Once he knew that he got that scatter shot down, he got the three star, throwing up the threes. You got to be excited about this. This team, Eric, they've came to play another three star back to back. Flaming Turkeys. I mean, Flaming Turkeys showed us they know what to do, also. Yeah. Let's see what they got moving into their second attack. But, man, what? That was wild. That was wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the concentration is pushed to the max. <laughs> <laughs> they are absolutely killing it. They already have matched. If they just two star from here, they have matched their uh, season average right. right there. And they have come to play here. They have definitely stepped it up here as they move in towards the, the finals. If they can get through challenge, this is a this is a big, big push from this team right now. <laughs> get it? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, the puns. I love their approach. They're really aggressive early. They keep the pressure on. They, I mean, coming out with two three stars. That puts so much on your opponent. And we got live on your TV uh, coming in with a bowler, super bowler smash rather, starting that Warden Walk. Warden's under some heavy pressure early, but should maybe possibly be okay? Uh, we, Warden? I think he might make, okay, he'll rage it up there just in case there. He's gonna get distracted by some ground skillies for a moment, but he'll quickly power through that. The Electric Owl actually burns up those ground skillies really, really quick and keep this Warden Walk moving fast. Now, the Warden is holding the tension of the Mortar, and he also got all the Tesla's drawn out at the Town Hall, so this Warden is actually gonna jump the wall and work across the left side as he gets pulled by the Pekka, but watch out for that air defense in the healers, and it looks like that Flame Flinger should be able to handle that Town Hall, as we see no more trap pop in that area, so. Already got it activated there with the Earthquake on top of that, but these uh, his air defense pinging, pinging away at his healers here is going to be a problem. But look at that. He ends up taking it with the Fire Spirit damage over the wall there with the Flame Flinger, and now the healers are looking healthy. He did have to commit a freeze to that air defense, maybe pull the Warden a little bit early. Warden ability goes off, uh, protecting those healers through the middle of this base. They're going to get right through that multi. The Flame Flinger now over on the Town Hall. This is going exactly how he wants it to. He's just going to keep that push going through the middle of the base. 
RC is now in at the top of the base. Pops the King's ability to keep that pressure on, and he's got a good push through the middle of this base. Yeah, really good momentum. The King ability going to surge all over the outside, which pushes everybody else into the last couple defenses, but he has no access spells to get into the scatter shot here, so he's just kind of coasting his way through, but the Royal Champion jumping the walls there. The Warden actually assisting that Royal Champion pretty nicely and sticking with her as she steps all the way through. Her ability still intact to go and freeze. Nice uh, stretch on the freeze there. Catches the Expo with the scatter shot. Pops that RC ability. And if the Queen with her ability can handle that single Inferno, he gets that Expo down. And he still has whatever's inside of his flame flinger on top of everything coming in from the top side. This is done for. Turkeys with the response. Back to back to back to back. Three stars from these clans. They came to put a clinic on. Beautiful read here. Great super bullet smash. I love that start with that little warden walk and then support it with the flame flinger to get the town hall down. Look at that. I love the player cams. Look at the celebration. You got to be feeling pumped. Pressure's not getting to him. Absolutely. He even reached out to me before the broadcast today, and he told me to keep an eye out for him, and I will definitely be keeping an eye out for him. He absolutely killed it, and he keeps the war tied here for Flaming Turkeys as they go against a team that obviously, like we said, has <laughs> a lot of momentum on their side here, but a very, very nicely done attack here. Like, like you said, the use of the Warden Walk to go hold the tension of those Expos and those Mortars so the Flame Flinger can make its way in and get maximum value and it ultimately survived all the way to the end and never took a single strike and it maximized all of the potential value out of that Flame Flinger that it could have. Love to see it, man. These attacks are just so great to watch. Just really, they're not like really close. Most of these have been pretty overkill attacks. So these plans are going really well, going mm -hmm. to plan. These clans have came to play. So far, we're tied up six six, two three stars apiece, neck and neck. Who's gonna? Are, are we back? Rock paper scissors? <laughs> are, are, are we back? Push? Are you back? Rock paper scissors again? You know, Push has got rock, so. <laughs> We already declared that, so we'll see what Flaming Turkey throws, but so far the base is not holding on defense. We, we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. Big factors, the defense is not holding up for either squad. Yeah, but I mean, the, the structure of the attacks there have been really, really solid. Beautiful. Really, yeah. really strong fundamentals, and that was uh, what caught my attention about uh, like push especially and uh, flaming turkey is really impressing today. Like I said, both teams. If we g remind you of the the initial stats uh, going into this war here, they were both averaging a 12 star war. They've already got the triples to get that, and they're going to push the limits in this as he starts off with John. Uh, John with in. a Blizz Hydra looks like Blizzard. So super wizards invisible out of the blimp raged up, getting great value. Get a scatter shot. Get the eagle artillery. Get down an air defense, I believe. Lots of value in that compartment, and then going to come in and just set some pathing for the Hydra to work through this base. It looks like going right at the Town Hall, kind of a risky play here with regular Dragons. Yeah, but getting that Eagle Artillery down out of the way very, very early makes sure you can go through the Town Hall and uh, move into that area of the base there quickly, as long as he can get in there and destroy the CC. Now look at the Sweepers. The Sweepers are both pointing up to the top of the base there, so he's coming in behind both of them. He gets that Town Hall activated, pops that ward ability. He's fighting off the defensive CC, and all the defensive heroes are right there as well. So he needs to get through those heroes and keep his heroes protected, and he does end up drawing a Lava Hound out of the defensive CC, which is what I'm a little bit worried about. He wasn't able to get the Dragons in there to destroy the CC in time to stop that pull. His king takes out the enemy royal champion there, still has his ability in hand, but those dragons are fading kind of quickly. Still has all hero abilities minus the warden, which we saw earlier to get through the town hall. Here goes that king's ability. Now we got the royal champion working in behind him. Queen kind of went off and did her own thing, but she's got to work in towards that scatter shot. I, oof, I don't like this one, Eric. This might be the first misstep here for Push. Yeah, he's running out of resources. Still has that defensive king on the backside. Queen's getting wrecked. Royal champion goes to ability. King goes down. And this is going to fall apart, and it's going to be relatively low percentage as well. He'll pick up a bit more and try to climb it up into the 70s, but this is a big, big miss. And the first break in the momentum of push. They threw rock and flaming turkeys had paper. Oh, no. This one should get up near 70, over 70% 70 here as these minions work through, but that's a big misstep. This point in the war, we've seen both clans can bring it. But maybe they saved the bases they didn't like for the midpoint of the war here. I mean, usually you've 
Find a base that you like. Throw someone at it. Because you got to remember, time's an issue. These are short mm -hmm. wars. You only get, what, like eight minutes to plan that first attack or so? Yeah, yeah. They, they have a very short amount of time to plan. And then they keep that pressure on all the way through. They potentially have to change their plans mid-war, depending on what is actually happening as they make their way through and how the war is progressing. If they need to take a higher risk plan or a lower risk plan, depending whether they have the lead or not. And uh, sometimes they'll play it a little bit more safe and go for less risky plans. And when a, when a more risky plan could have been the better option on the base, so uh, unfortunate push here for John as his team potentially falls behind. But I guess we'll have to see what Flaming Turkeys has as a fortunate way for that one to turn down. We've, we've seen these 70%s. Mm. We're like, oh no. <laughs> End of the world, no. Armageddon, it's over. And Armageddon then over. the team comes back and it's a really close war. So it's not the end of the world for these guys. We've seen that, but 73% is very low. If Flaming Turkeys can keep the pressure on here with another three star, or even if they falter a high 90%, they're gonna have a huge advantage moving into the fourth round of attacks. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. And uh, the now if uh, Flaming Turkeys can get a little percentage, like you said, they, uh, they threw paper, and when rock meets paper, it's a turkey. You see it? <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> but, oh, Eric. I know, I know. That was, that Eric's was clever, out right? here, you know, tracing his hand. I am, I am. I had a little beak on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. But a huge opening. And this war, that is the opening you need. You want to take advantage of it. You can't go out here and 70, what if they 73% also? You can't 73% this tech. You no, want a three not. star, obviously. You want to get a high percentage of tech and they're capable. We, we know they're capable. They're here. They're in the mobile challenge. And it's going to be up to EZ with his queen charge, Lalo, going right at the town hall here, right out the gate. Queen's in. Wall breaker in, or is she going to go around and then come back? Maybe king dive on the town hall? I don't know, but whatever it's going to be, it's going to be easy. Easy. <laughs> Let's go. It looks like he's going to go around the town hall here. He doesn't go into it. He's just clearing out all the trash next to it and just kind of clearing the way. He does put a wall breaker down afterwards, and he delays his healer so we can get a good angle of approach here as he approaches this infern or this uh, air defense. And if he can get another wall break into the infern... Oh, look at the... Oh, I think I see the path here, Bash. Look at this... Builder compartment here. These three battle builders in a row here. If he could get his queen into that compartment, and he's oh he's, he put the wall break in, but they didn't target that. They went to the expo there, which is still a really strong compartment, and he'll not be able to reach the town hall from here, but he's going to be able to pick up a lot up at the top side and joins it with the flame linger to work on the outside of the base. I see what you're saying. They're going to potentially snipe the town hall as he was driving by, but he wall broke on the exterior there. It almost feels like he's going to try to get the king in there, but now that wall break goes for that compartment. But I think the queen. Might might be too far at this point. You can get her to turn back around here. If he can collapse in heavy from the left side, he could definitely get her to take the turn potentially. We'll see what happens there. But the Flame Flinger taking some strikes into the scatter shot. Does it move into the Queen range? It does not. It's just outside. And uh, oh, that balloon, watch out for that balloon there. It might end up activating the Town Hall if it hits a trap and crashes on it. Uh-oh, it's right and, over uh, it. the Queen is taking the turn back towards uh -oh. the Town Hall right now. I think <laughs> the Teslas are drawing her up here. She's going to go north, and that's going to make her attack a wall to go north on the King's base in. rather than go to the Town Hall. Okay, this is going to be interesting. I'm not sure what the Queen's going to do here, but yeah, she is attacking the wall, and she's uh, avoiding the Town Hall, and yeah, that's going to force him to lolo. Oh, he's in trouble here, man. Oh no, King is in up north. I thought for sure King was going for the town hall because the exterior wall broke oh. there. Can't, oh. Is he taking a Is he playing games with this town hall takedown right now? He does not have the town hall secured. He's got a handful of extra balloons, but he keeps the queen charge even without the healers moving all the way to the middle of the base. He puts Our in the wrong champion though. Okay, she'll oh. go in there and secure it. <laughs> I thought he was playing with fire there, but look at that. Even uh, ground skillies in that town hall compartment is going to distract him off for a bit, but he should still have enough to take it. Wow, he's really not he taking did. any chances in yeah, investing the balloons into that. it too. Royal Champion had ability, which would get her back almost to full health. Mm -hmm. Didn't need those balloons committed there. And this one's going to be a misstep. This one's going to, it's not going to be quite as low as percentage, but it's not going to be a three star. This is still going to be anyone's ball game. Uh, I, 
this is really close on their percentage here. What was the last one? 73%? 73. This one's barely crossing 73% as he only has a few more seconds to get some more percentage and you'll climb it just barely above what we saw out of the Mr. from Push. So after a really, really strong opening, both teams slip up simultaneously and we're only separated by four buildings now in this war. I'm so confused by this attack. I'm still trying to figure, I mean, very great effort for Easy. But he exterior wall broke there. Why not send the king in? And then the king can almost go in, support the queen. Yeah. And then Lalo with the RC up top. I feel like he could have got a little, it might not a three, but maybe got a little bit higher there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was trying to wrap the queen behind the town hall there, but she yeah. just, she passed just barely wrong there and didn't get where he wanted her to go because he did have to wall break open the town hall compartment to get the other wall breakers to target those internal compartments. So right. it could have just been setting up the future wall breaks, not specifically open up access for something to enter there. And that's always a thing that we like to see from these, uh, these uh, pro players here to just really set up cool wall breaks and uh, get the queen into interesting spots there with uh, minimal investment as possible. But unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. We're into the next attack here. It is Champ coming in from push. And Champ's coming with that clone bomb. Three clones, a triple clone bomb, a big investment. Nine spell investment here with the clone bomb. And we see the dragons in, the riders in, and the blimp is going to fly all the way across the space. This is a huge risk. Gonna have to be aware of that sweeper. It's gonna push back one side. This blimp could easily not make it here. I'm worried it's not making it. Uh, it's gonna fall a bit short here, but he's got the clones. He can use the clones to reach out Chain. like an arm towards the town hall. But Chain. holy red balls! He, he, <gasps> he was late on the last clone. Oh my gosh, how's he gonna get the town hall down now? He's, what was in the CC? It is super mean, so at least he doesn't have to worry about a Lava Hound intercepting his Royal Champion. And his Queen, queen is it. still gonna reach in there and pick up the town hall. The balloons, actually the town hall never activated there. So honestly, he's in a really good spot. He freezes up the town hall, saves the Queen getting through the town hall, but also catches a single Inferno with that. That actually worked out to his advantage right there, being that the Town Hall never activated and he still had plenty of force to take it. So now, all defensive heroes are down. CC is dealt with. He's got tons of dragons alive. The Queen, unfortunately, is gonna die through the Town Hall poison. Ooh, that might be the kicker. Low. That might be the kicker right there with the Queen dying. Yeah, dragons are really low. I think he missed one of his clones also, so wasted mm -hmm. three spell sl slot there. So another misstep. We're seeing, that's a huge risk, going all the way across the base into a sweeper. You, the almost, yeah. You bring three uh, clones, you almost have to drop one of those clones, bring a few more freezes, freeze that sweeper to make sure you get there, maybe even freeze that single Inferno. Or zap the sweeper. Yeah, yeah. Two, two lightning, you're right, just zap the sweeper out. Well, I like how he tried to recover it there though. It was countered by the trap placement. He put the clones down and they reached out towards the town hall like an arm from the blimp drop there to make a just a big line of clone balloons to reach out to try to get the town hall takedown to happen but unfortunately the midpoint of the clone reach there end up as soon as they spawned they immediately got hit by a barrage yeah. of red bombs and interrupted the the chain so it never ended up having the clone spell above the town hall actually clone anything which prevented the town hall from going down so it was the red air bombs that countered this blimp and these uh, clone spells here so watch this blimp yeah, maybe even a little bit early on the Warden ability, maybe send that blimp a little bit too early, because that's a long way to go all the way across the base. Mm -hmm. That one pushback doesn't let it get there, but you're right, here comes the clone. And then that third one was just a little too late. By the time those bombs got it, mm -hmm. they blew it. But the Town Hall wasn't activated. Maybe some of the death damage could have got it activated, but maybe he's in a worse spot than if it is activated. Right, if it doesn't take it. If you yeah. activate the Town Hall and you don't actually take it down, then it actually works against you, because then it starts dealing out damage to everything else that's trying to make their approach to it. And that approach damage is usually what ends up taking out the majority of things. Once the troops reach it, they arrive, if they arrive in enough force there, then they're able to take it. But then that Town Hall bomb and poison tears up anything that actually does reach it. And that's how he lost his queen. And that might have been the difference in the attack there because almost everything was sitting inside of that Town Hall poison and it just tore up to pieces. We've seen the misses be big misses and We've seen when they're three star, they're great three stars. Yeah. So these these clans like to take the risk. They like to go all in on their plans. Mm -hmm. But when that backfires, we get 77, we get 73, we get 78. But again, Turkey's still up a few percentage points, still in a commanding spot. Even if they don't triple here, you put up a 90% attack, then you put push in a must three star situation. That's a fact. Uh, but a triple here, obviously, force them to to win it on stars there because 
like they have one big miss, but the other team has two big misses. So the percentage uh, realistically is very likely going to end up in uh, Flaming Turkey's favor here, but we'll see what we can do as we see Dustin come in with this queen charge into Dragon Riders and an anti two star base. Okay, all right, this blimp is going to go to start going. off, and uh, we'll see what he can do to form a funnel here for the Queen Charge, because generally the Queen Charge has to take the Town Hall down. Blimp is in, Yeti's out of it, going to go ahead and take down nice. that multi-target Inferno. Does not get the Clan Castle pool, however. We've seen that a lot of times when you're committing that Blimp that early, you want to get that Clan Castle pulled out. But Queen will have a nice path here to charge up into the base, and maybe even in towards the Eagle Artillery. Yeah, but he needs to finish breaking the ring of trash there and make sure the queen stays off to the right. He's clearly trying to get her to go in through the eagle artillery. He's also going to need to cut her off up ahead there. He's going to need a heavy push from the right side of the base there to make sure that the queen takes the turn. There are a lot of open compartments there throughout that area of the base. So the wall breakers, their AI is going to be completely messed with and it's going to be a maze to weave the queen into here. So the other support troops are going to be critical to create this pathing. I'm a little bit worried here, Eric. That queen's definitely going around. He could throw the king in now from that right-hand side and cut her off. King is in, but he's got to get her, get him moving quickly to cut her off and push her back in. If he doesn't get that queen in there, it's going to be a hard path for these riders to get all the way to that town hall. Yeah, and he's still got the two defensive heroes uh, along the other side of the base there, the queen and the royal champion, which uh, definitely can be a threat in their own right. So not only does the queen need to take the town hall, but she needs to deal with at least one of those heroes so we can use the Warden and the, the Headhunters to go after the other one. And whichever one the Queen goes for, the Lala will want to start, or the, the Dragon Riders, I mean, will want to start to the other one. But it looks like the King, with his Cut ability and the support of the Royal Champion, cuts the Queen off, and she goes exactly where he wanted her to go. And his King deals with the defensive Royal Champion, and that will make so that he can maybe get the Headhunters across in and get the defensive Queen down. Royal Champion's actually going to help out with this Lava Hound and the Town Hall takedown. Wow, Town Hall went down instantly under that Rage. Nice. Lava Hound pops here. Now it's just going to be up to the Riders to sail through this base. Queen's going to have no problem staying up through here. And she should stay out of the poison. She, she's not going to be under much fire after this. We got a scatter shot and the Queen on the back end with still a couple Headhunters yet to be deployed. Yeah, but now the Town Hall poison fades. So the Queen goes back to full fire right here. And she's tanking the scatter shot, which is keeping the damage off of these Dragon Riders. He goes invisible, literally catches everybody with that invisibility, freezes up the defensive Queen. And his Queen needs to hurry up and step in there. The uh, Headhunters are arriving, though. They will step in there. They will get the damage onto the defensive Queen. But they end up getting sniped off there. They, oh, this is actually. 20 seconds. He's not going to make it in time. Time is going to stay tied here as we go to the final tags, but it is going to be higher percentage and it will be a percentage advantage into Flaming Turkey's favor. I would say they were almost underdog in this match here I would and agree. they are holding strong against a team who had massive potential and a lot of momentum coming to this match here. 88% and honestly, I believe that puts it into must three star territory. I'm pretty sure that push, well, I guess it would depend on final yeah. attacks, but yeah. in men mentally, <laughs> you have to three star here. That's my, that's where my head is. You have to three star here. You don't want to leave it up to that final chance. Three star and a defense wins it for push. Two star and a decent two star for Flaming Turkey wins it. This is anyone's ball game. These wars are crazy today. Back and forth for all of these clans. Yeah, every single point of percentage that Push is able to get here is going to be one more that Flaming Turkeys doesn't have to match, but Flaming Turkeys has the percentage advantage, so they can force them to a triple if they can get a triple here because we are tied, and it is a, it is a decent percentage advantage into Flaming Turkeys here. So if they're in a strong spot here, they control their own fate, and they can definitely take this win and make that Cinderella story happen. This is, a, this is a tough one. Eric, you got a three-star. Uh, wow, quad clone. Four clone spells. Ooh. We're committing 12 spell space. <laughs> Actually, we're going to commit the full spell space because the rage is going to go with the clone also. So these dragons are going to have no spell support. Essentially, all the spell support is going to come in on this clone bomb as the warden ability is going to protect the blimp Ooh, to the nice timing. Nice timing on that ward ability. Catches literally everything, including the blimp there, as it has that reach of the clones oh there to my. spawn tons of clones outside, but tons of red air bombs are going off. The Twitter trap catches a lot of them. Oh, he did not. He didn't get a lot of value out of that, Bash. That he is did not get as much value out of that as I thought he might. And the defensive queen is now going to get locked onto by the dragons. He'll get those down, but... Ooh. He's got the Hound coming out too, and his Queen right now. He's in. He might be in trouble here. I don't think he got. 
nearly the value that he needed out of that. Yeah, that tornado trap, the red air bombs went off. He's still got plenty of dragons up. Queen's mm -hmm. gonna work on the hound, but he's got, look at that corner. That right corner just looks devastating. Tesla farm, scatter shot, air, uh, archer tower, just so many air targeting defenses. Queen had to use her ability for the lava hound and the king's gonna fade right there. He'll run up percent, but I just don't foresee this one getting there. Yeah, he's still got a lot of dragons. Queen goes to ability, but she's unfortunately having to use her ability. She had to pop it into the Hound, and now she ends up wasting a lot of her shots there into the ground skellies. He's and healing. Now, yeah, she's getting a little bit recovered there, but she has to hang out a long time there to get these dragons yeah. to turn in. I don't know how much health these dragons have, but can't imagine it's enough to move through no here. Way. Every percentage point is going to make a difference here because that's going to set the stage here for the final attack here from Flaming Turkeys. And with their percentage advantage, they have that as a buffer on top of whatever these dragons continue to pick up. So they're not done yet. There's still a chance for Push to win this. It's just going to come down to Flaming Turkeys. And like I said, they control their own fate as this one runs in at about 90%, 89%. Right you, in there. You need as many buildings as possible here because you're down by 14%. And I'm pretty sure this is going to make it so Flaming Turkeys just need 75, 76% to win it if my math is correct here. Not quite what Eric was hoping for. A huge commitment. Quad clone plus the rage spell. All of your spells committed to the center of the base. Catching that tornado. We, we talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. Baiting with the traps. Tornado, red air bombs. Got the balloons, they just couldn't spread and disperse throughout the base. Yeah, you need to get them a little bit more spread out there, but that uh, tornado really, really groups them up heavy. And you see it again here, this uh, blimp sailed in. Now watch that warden ability, it was so perfect there. Caught literally everything, including the blimp. The blimp clears a bunch of the traps on his way in. He gets the outreach of the clones there, reaching across the base, chaining from one to the next to try to get a good distribution. But so many of them got caught in that tornado trap and held at the town hall poison. It just shut down the majority of the value out of those clones, and it ultimately crippled the attack here. And I mean, when you put that much into it and it doesn't pay out, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, it was looking like it was looking like he had a chance to recover this, but once that Tesla pump or farm popped up <laughs> over there, that's tough. A Tesla pump, Tesla farm, easy for me to say around a scatter shot is tough. So got to the 89%, but I'm mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the magic number here is going to be 76% for flaming turkeys, which every attack has been above that so far. So you'd like to think they have really good odds moving into their final attack, but anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're seeing so many anti two stars on top of that. You can even see a one star, a high percentage one star could also swing it. So I don't want to call what's going to happen here. Good luck to flaming turkeys as they get ready for their final set of attacks or final attack, I guess yeah, I should final say, attack. because this attack determines the war. Right, right. And here we go, guys. It's going to come down to Ethan with a queen charge. Hoggies. Uh, I was looking for miners, but I don't see miners. Yeah. So queen charge hogs. Heavy commitment. We get a blimp so far. Something pulled off the clan castle. I didn't quite see that. OK, a little interesting move here. This is a little bit risky, needing just percentage, really. Yeah, oh, queen point. ability. OK, OK, OK. The, he has a long way to go to the town hall. He's got the blimp that he can use to go after the town hall here, though. But he was able to draw the CCS. We could fight it in somewhat safety, but he's still under some decent damage. The Hound is still alive and is now going to meet up with the Queen now. She'll engage the Hound there after taking out the Warden. And he'll put in the Flame Flinger from the last. Oh, this is. Oh, <laughs> this makes me really nervous here because he just <laughs> put down the Flame Flinger. So if the Blimp was in charge of taking the Town Hall and now it has to be the Queen who doesn't have an ability. Oh, he's playing with fire right here. I guess if you're a flaming turkey, that's your job, but we'll see if we can make it happen. Gobble, gobble, Eric, but there's so much pressure. I'm just looking at this town hall compartment. We uh -huh. got two boats, we got two scatters. Clan castles dealt with. We got a single, we got battle builders that are going to heal up things around. This is going to be a tough entry, and well, first of all, we got to get the queen there. She should circle back here with the jump spell down. She's taking her time, and that Flame Flinger is starting to go down right now from the bow. Right. It'll have whatever's inside of it surge out there and finish that expo off. Looks like a Dragon Rider and a couple of balloons. Also, keep an eye on any damage to the Queen's healers potentially coming at her from traps that could uh, shut down this Queen charge. But the jump does give him access to reach that Town Hall, so he's still hanging in here really strong. He still has to road champion the Hogs and the Warden. The Hogs don't need to do a lot of damage themselves, but they just need to make a meat shield for this 
Warden and Royal Champion, and also the Headhunters get in there, get the defensive queen engaged and taken Ooh, nice. down. The queen goes invisible. He takes the town hall down, and he's quickly climbing up the percent. He's got a minute to close down. This is moving really solid, and he's got it 100% under control there. No queen ability, but he might not even need it. This is what they needed. Just get to the 76. Get that three, not three star. Get the three star. I mean, that would be beautiful because this is a really off meta attack based on what we've been seeing so far today. It is a flood attack, but really relied on this queen charge to push through the base. Scattershot still up on the back end. Royal Champion's going to come over there, and Flaming Turkeys are going to get the W. Ethan, it's got to <laughs> feel good. This attack was all over the place. He, Eric, he three starred with that. He did. He did indeed. He lost the queen ability right out of the gate there, but Flaming Turkeys comes out swinging in the challenge here wow. and locks in the first win. And and upsets the momentum that Push had after they came off of their perfect war. I I was a little speechless at that gap there. Great person. He lost his queen Twelve ability miles. right out the gate. Great persistence, great use of the spells. And that just shows you the importance of spell placement. His spells made that a three star. If he didn't have that great use of the spells through that town hall compartment, keeping that queen alive, keeping her raged up, no way he three stars this. I mean, he might even one start, but Ethan did a good job making that queen invisible, pushing through this compartment and getting all those defenses down eventually. Yeah, that was such a risky attack. I mean, the, <laughs> there was definitely a lot of safer approaches into that base there, and he chose one of the riskiest options. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> Flaming Turkey is playing with fire right there. That is uh, absolutely crazy. And I uh, got to give him a good, Big congratulations right there. That was a big <laughs> win. And what a moment right there to be able to pull that attack off. Yeah, that, that was fun to see that reaction. Gobble, gobble, the flaming turkeys get the victory. You love to see it. This sport back and forth the whole time, but they went out on stars. They had the commanding lead on percentage after mm -hmm. that three star. GG's of both those clans. Absolutely. That was a wild war. But I mean, I feel like every war tonight yes, has been insane. I don't been. think we've had every single war has come down to the wire here. Has any any single one of these wars here not come down to the last uh, set of attacks here to determine no. the winner? No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, it's, That's what you want to see, though. In the mobile challenge, you want to see these guys bringing their A game, being excited, being pumped up, ready to go. And, and we've seen that. I think the only attack that didn't matter was on the fifth volley of attacks because mm -hmm. the other team was the, the second. It's crazy. It's crazy. GG Flaming Turkeys. GG Push. Again, remember, guys, not an elimination match. We will see these guys continuing to play a little bit later, but what a war. Wow. Absolutely. And uh, like I said, this is a round robin competition, so every single team has to play each other once. This is only the first round, and every team has had one chance to play. And we have our initial standings that have started to develop here. And Maybe we'll see some teams dominate over the other ones, but I mean, we still got some really, really big wars up ahead here. Yeah, guys, don't go anywhere. We got more wars. We got more analysis. We got more stats. You guys are watching the Snapdragon Pro Series. The Snapdragon Pro Series is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Monster Energy, DHL and the U.S. Air Force. Welcome to the place where dreams come true. Where everything you want can be yours. If and only if you're willing to work for them. You're willing to hurt for them. But most of all, you're willing to be first for them. Huh. Look, I'm going straight to the top. I don't know how I would stop, like it or not. I got some goals that I'm hitting. You hear what I'm spitting? It's hot. Look what I got. Whole lot of passion and pain. The road to success is insane. Stay out my lane, cuz I'm on a mission. I'm getting what stands in my way. Yeah, I'm a beast. I wouldn't play with me, baby. The way that I'm training is crazy, and I do it daily. You want to talk about drive? I got more drive than Mercedes. I've never been lazy. I'm in the room, it's a red alert. You want to compete? Well, get better first. I got ten toes in the dirt. Push through the hurt just to show them my worth. I'm the best. <laughs> yeah, I'm the best. I never stress. I know what's next. I'm who they test. Like we playing chess. But I'm unimpressed. So now let me flex. Ha. Yeah, I'ma work through the struggle and hurt. Cause I know my worth 
And I gotta be first. Huh. Yeah, I gotta be first. Look, I don't want anyone's sympathy. I understand what it's meant for me. I give my focus and energy. If it's meant to be, then it's meant to be. But mentally, I'm undefeated. They hear that and say I'm conceited. Like there's no reason. Like I don't beat them and beat them and come back again just to teach them. That when you work under pressure, you reach higher measures. They'll try and bring you down, but you cannot let them. And only get better and focus on cheddar. I on the prize and you'll become a legend. Like uh, when I'm in the room, it's a red alert. You want to compete, well, get better first. I got 10 toes in the dirt. Push through the hurt just to show them my worth. I'm the best. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the best. I never stress. I know what's next. I'm who they test. Like we playing chess. But I'm unimpressed. So now let me flex. <laughs> yeah, I'ma work through the struggle and hurt. Cause I know my worth. And I gotta be first. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be first. They don't know what's gotten into me. How'd I turn pain into energy? Through all the struggle and hurt, remember my worth, and that's why I gotta be first. <laughs>
but Ethan did it anyways. I love it. I love the confidence in your attack, in your plan to get there, to make sure it happens. You got the three star. You secured the victory for your team. You got to be feeling good after that attack ball. I, and you said it. He didn't have to go for the risk. But he knew at that point, basically got this one in the bag. We yeah. might as well go all the way put up those additional stars. And again, the team that was coming in is, I think some folks might have predicted them to be the yep. underdog in Absolutely. this, again, especially considering how strong push looked, you know, as well. But I think after this, they got to be feeling confident. And for a day one match, that's exactly what you need to carry that momentum through throughout the rest of the program. And obviously got to see the attack here. It looked stellar, looked solid. So let's talk to the man himself, Glitter, standing by with Ethan to hear more about that match. Thank you very much, Inviram. Yes, that's correct. I do have Ethan here ready to chat with us. First of all, we got to see your reaction <laughs> while that attack was going on. I mean, how much pressure did you feel like was on your shoulders heading into that final attack? Um, When the when I lost the queen ability really early on, I was like, just save the two-star, just save the two-star. <laughs> but then once the, once the town hall went down and then I realized all the other defenses were low HP, I was like, Oh, it's actually a three star. And I started celebrating. I, I mean, you had Bash really stressed out and I'm here for it. So thank you for making that very enjoyable for me. OK, now I do have to ask you, we've talked about it a lot on the desk and we even just heard them talking about it when they were doing the analysis. You guys are a little bit of an underdog coming into this. So what is that like when you're going up against so many vets in this challenge and then you have really strong performances like this? Um, well, being the underdog sometimes works in our favor because uh, it's un usually unexpected for us to uh, go all out and, well, beat the stronger teams. But then when we do, it just shows that uh, we're up here. We're up here at this level and we can compete with them. Okay, now I asked you last time how you guys came up with your name and you gave us a fantastic answer. So I, I need to ask you now another just more kind of fun question. What is your favorite part about playing Clash of Clans? I mean, you looked like you were having a great time. Um, well, f personally for me, I started playing back in like the uh, the first year when Clash of Clans came out. And uh, I always enjoyed the fact that this is like a really good strategy game. You have lots of different strategies you can use to uh, be take down the bases. And uh, throughout all the years, the motivation is still, still going and I still enjoy the game today. I love that. We definitely saw you enjoying it, especially after getting that three star when you needed it, clutching up in the moment. So before I let you go, I want to give you an opportunity to do some shout outs. Uh, well, thanks, every, thanks everyone in the clan that was like, OK, we got to test bases. You got to get everything ready. And uh, the bases definitely held up well for the most part. Well, maybe not my base. I completely <laughs> failed setting it up, but but. For the most part, our, our bases definitely did well, and uh, definitely I'd say that to that. Okay, well, thank you so much for taking time to chat. Hopefully, we'll be talking with you soon. Thank you very much. Okay, listen, I don't think he's given himself enough credit with his base because he brought it back with the three star at the end when it mattered. How many times, I guys, I can't, you can't keep doing this to me. How many times does it really need to come down to that close of a situation? It's too stressful. I, I mean, it is stressful, but I love it. As far as these wars, this is what I want to see. I want to see not blowouts. I want to see it coming down to that final attack, both teams still in it, and just having a chance on these final attacks. Yeah, we haven't really seen any like low scoring wars either. Every single yeah. war has been uh, between uh, 12 and 14 stars here. So this has been a really, really solid performance out of every single team that has played tonight so far. They're all absolutely killing it and are keeping these wars tight. I, and this is just the first day. Okay, we have weeks of this left. So I can't <laughs> even imagine what they're going to be pulling out of the woodwork after we get past this first time, this first week here. But we, we're not done. We're yeah. still not done. There's still more wars to come. The next one right around the corner is going to be Chazmac versus No Chance Ice. We'll start talking about Chazmac, but after what we've seen out of both of these teams, I I don't even know what to expect anymore. And we, we've seen both of these teams play earlier today. Both had a really strong performance. Chazmac came out, faltered a little bit, but bounced back. We saw this roster already. Nick, Lex, Nose, Ghost, Max, and Peifu. These guys are really strong. Uh, they're really confident in their attacks, and they know how to bring it. After that first war, a little bit dicey.
see Eric, but they got the victory. That's all that matters. Yeah, they started to buckle under that pressure a little bit there. Got that uh, one star that uh, set them back a little bit there, but they ultimately pulled through here. So this is a really strong team, and they're the team to beat to is what most people would consider. But then again, you look over at the, the other side there, and you're you're looking at a, a team on the other side that just felled one of their rivals, felled their absolute rivals. So their work is far from over here, but they uh, definitely have some more to do. And we, we saw this, uh, not, not only do they attack well, but Ghost is such a good base builder. And we saw his base defend right there for the mm -hmm. one star, uh, which was pretty commanding. And then Lex came in with that clutch triple there at the end. Oh, man, I'm so glad we have player cams. Shout out to production for making that happen. Player cams make this so much more exciting. Ghost with that beautiful E-drag hit. So these guys know how to bring it. And honestly, I'm excited for this war because I think I think we expected this from Shazmack, let's be honest. But their opponents, their opponents kind of surprised us. I think that everyone would agree War and Glory was the favorite against No Chance Ice in the first war, but that didn't stop them. Jared, extend from that, Apollo, Dobbs, and Tony Gunk got the job done in their first war. Yeah, and now they if they could get this win here, that would be Massive. such a big deal here Massive. for this team. If they already took out War and Glory, they can take out Chazmac as well and take out the two teams that we would consider the biggest threats here in the competition. Get them done right out of the gate there. Day one and to get those wins, that would be so huge for the momentum and really, really set them up nicely to make it into the finals. And what I love about these guys, and we're going with the hashtag second chance ice, maybe even third, fourth, fifth chance ice at this point, but they fell behind early, didn't slow them down. Uh, Tony Gunk had that 70%. We talked to him about it, mm -hmm. but the team rallied together. They got behind him. They got behind Taco Tony and made it happen. And that's what you love to see. I'm looking at those stats. I mean, honestly, not that far apart. I mean, a little advantage for Chaz Mac, but not crazy. Yeah, I'd say these teams are, I mean, we would generally consider Chaz Mac the, the favorite team here. They were the first to qualify. They were number one seed. They yeah. dominated during the latter phases of the tournament, and that's what got them here in the first place. And they, like we said before, we have players like, uh, well, in fact, all players all across the board here on yeah. this team that have uh, championships already under their belt. And with a four-time champion right there with uh, with uh, Lexnos, I mean, you right. definitely have some powerhouse players all across the board here on that team, and that's a daunting thing to fight. Yeah, which means one once again, we're going to have to pick your brains here in chat. We need to know who you think is going to be coming out on top in this war. Will it be Chazmac or will it be No Chance Ice with another upset up their sleeve? We'll have to see if it is the veteran squad or not. It's going to be yet another interesting war, and I don't want to keep us waiting any longer than we need to because it's ready to go. So once again, Bash and Eric, take it away. Let's go. Where's Perry coming in right away? We got Queen Charge, Hydra, Clone. Okay, we got a little bit of everything here. <laughs> a little bit of uh, <laughs> everything we've seen today into this attack. Queen ability Ooh. early. Oh, no. Yeah, that was even before he engaged the king, but he dropped right into a couple of Teslas right there. And it just overwhelmed the Queen there. He did get the wall break to be able to go into the Eagle Artillery compartment. And with the Queen Charge Hydra attack, we generally want that Queen to go into the Eagle Artillery compartment. But she's not even potentially going in there. It's the Teslas drag her around the corner. Are these Corps going to play mind games with her? No, she does step in. But her pathing might be thrown off just enough to cause some problems with this. Queen finally going for that Eagle Artillery. But already a huge commitment from spells from the Queen ability. King's going to finally come in, just set that bottom funnel for the Hydra to come in. We will have a blimp looking like flying across to the town hall here. So a pretty big risk. I'm here for it, though. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm loving it. Let's see if we can get to the town hall. So Warden ability will be used on the blimp, and hopefully it'll fly all the way to the town hall. I definitely keep an eye on these healers as the Queen fights off the CC. The healers are staying safe, but the Sweeper continues to knock them around over there. But that Sweeper knocking around the Queen's healers means it's not knocking around the Dragons here as he sails that blimp through. He's got the clone. He can use the clone. And what's in there? Clone it's Yetis. a clone Yeti bomb to take that Town Hall. And if he could get that Inferno out of the way there as well with it, that would be a nice extra bonus. But he doesn't invest a Rage into it. So literally, all he got there was the Town Hall. And then all the Yeti mice there that were bursting off afterwards were just dying in the Town Hall poison. So this Queen did ultimately go down. And where's Perry? Is looking like this one is going to crawl to a halt here as he completely misses the core of the base and the Queen charge falls way short. Wow, that's uh, devastating. I'm just watching this, trying to see where he might be able to recover a little bit of percent. But there's a lot of tough 
base, our buildings remaining on this base. Single target Inferno, two multis, uh, Scattershot. King still does have ability. He's still got a little bit of cleanup troops, so he can still run this percentage points up. But definitely not to start for no chance ice they were hoping for. But that's never stopped them before. We've seen this numerous times where they don't necessarily start the strongest, but they know how to come back from behind. This is the world champion with that freeze spell, so now his world champion is going to be forced with the ability. I don't think you can get a second chance if you don't give them the lead first. So. Oh, true, true. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's maybe it's just their style. Let's see if they can uh, now recover from this later in the war here. But it looks like the king actually is one of the last things to go down here. He's got a little bit more as he drops in a couple more to go after the last shot Ooh, on the nice. air defense. Good. Uh, the debt, he can't see the HP of that building himself, so his team is going to give him some scouting information there to try to figure out what's at low HP and find out where he can pick up just a little bit more percentage because every point is going to potentially make a difference in the end. 86% for Where's Perry as they fall a bit short on that one. But uh, we'll see what happens here because last time Chazmek started up in the war, they, they were able to hold on, but it ended up being really, really close there. Yeah, not, not the start, but again, it's... We've seen them play from that position before mm -hmm. where they don't triple out the gate and they're fine. There's a lot going on here. I like the clone bomb from the Yetis, but with the tornado, just didn't get the value he was hoping for. Like you mentioned, maybe a rage spell in there instead of a couple of those freezes because he had a lot of freezes left over the end. Right. Maybe he gets just a little bit of additional value out of that pretty big investment. Let's be honest. I mean, yeah. clone Yetis, pretty big investment, but 86% still respectable and not something you can't overcome. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it just a couple small amount of paths. I think a lot of what happened there was losing that queen ability yeah. early, and he invested a lot in the queen. And when you're trying to do a queen charge, and you still need the rages, and now adding a clone and stuff like that, that right. was a that was a lot of resources that the queen needed that he didn't have available for the dragons. It maybe wasn't the plan for the base, but we'll see. If this plan is able to get done here as Nick breaking out his signature super, which is love to see it. Let's see if it can make it happen here as he starts off with a little bit of lightning to go and take out that entire compartment next to where the warden walk is starting and then he can go in through the eagle and cross the entirety of the base here with this log launcher. And as Nick gets started here, I want to take a quick second to thank our sponsor, Snapdragon Elite Gaming. When winning matters, guys, think Snap Dragon Elite Gaming. Huge shout out to them for sponsoring this event for us. So here we go. Super Witches are in. We got a log launcher looking to push through the middle of this base. The big boys are out. They're going to tank the single target Inferno Queen. King's going to go ahead and cut off the funnel and push everything up into the middle. Uh, Witch is coming back to deal with the clan castle with the Queen. And we should have no problem getting through there. Log launcher doesn't get caught in the warden ability, but it's tanked enough. Yeah, it's fine. He's not taking any damage onto it. He did end up he almost ended up having to go to an auto ability on the ward as those headhunters locked on from behind, but they were able to turn around, get that under control, and it wasn't a bad spot to pop that uh, ward ability anyway. So now moving to the middle base here, he's got to jump to get him into the town hall. He doesn't actually need to enter the town hall compartment. He can reach it over the wall there with the queen and the super witches and with the king, collapsing in that right side there with one super witch out there supporting him, and now the triple ice golem that came out of the log launcher. He's uh, got a lot of support out there, and that support is going to be enhanced by the Royal Champion moving in from that right side now. Good push through the middle of this base, but the witches are taking a lot of damage. Has to come at the freeze. Witches get distracted by the world champion. It's going to be on the queen. Queen does not have an ability. He's running out of spells. Still has a freeze, still has an invisibility. Royal champion could snag the town hall, but you'd like to get it before the royal champion gets there. Ice Golem still a freeze spell. Finally committed there. Warden's going to help out the queen and town hall. Finally falls for Nick, but this is looking like a tough finish as he's running out of spells. Still got another minute though. The king is still live down south. RC ability still intact. He'll pop it to clear the Tesla farm, but that pushes RC directly into the town hall poison. It'll fade soon. He got the defensive Royal Champion down, so if he can get this scatter shot under control somehow and maybe get the Royal Champion through it, that will be one of the critical points to attack here. But this queen is still moving. There's still Super Witches alive. All those ice <laughs> yeah. golems are still alive somehow. He'll go ahead and skip a couple of defenses here to push the Royal Champion all the way in. And look at the Warden. The Warden is holding the tension 
of the scattershot and with the road champion wow. skippy those buildings <laughs> wow. he takes the scattershot <laughs> and he's got the triple but wait uh, maybe not he doesn't have a lot of time left here 15 seconds i think he's gonna get it in yeah, time yeah he's got that's it. what i was gonna say he had enough beef behind the coming up the three ice golems never died out of the clan castle <laughs> three ice golems were the clan castle troops and they stayed up the whole time that one was a little bit all over the place but a clinic on the super witches and you mentioned that's what he's known for he is so good at that attack i love that entry a little bit risky in the middle there but it eventually got the town hall down and the royal champion was just so well supported yeah i love that last invisibility that was so clutch there to make sure that scatter shot went down and it just skipping a couple of buildings with invisibility yeah redirect runner over those buildings while simultaneously protecting that road champion that was such a cool way to be able to close out that attack there and if he didn't get that road champion to a scatter shot he might have not made it through that attack so that might have been the factor that changed <laughs> the result but we've, we've seen no chance ice in this position before i mean just a few hours ago yep. <laughs> so they they're they can't be sweating but if you're Chaz Mac, you got to be feeling good that's what you want to see from a team like Chaz Mac. put that three star on put that pressure on early even though no chance ice is used to be playing from behind and mm -hmm. maybe being that underdog uh you still don't want to be there uh but it's gonna be up to Dobbs next we saw that beautiful Lalo from him earlier we're gonna see this blimp coming in for the queen compartment here and then we'll have a queen charge Lalo coming in a little bit later Rock a balloon and a couple of Yetis pop out of there. Take the defensive queen down. Get the scatter shot out of the way there. Can use that compartment. Not only pulling the CC, not a full CC pull though, but it does form the funnel for the queen and drives her in while the king comes in on her left flank to work his way into the scatter shot. Already has a funnel for him as well. So he should eventually take the turn in there and go after that eagle artillery. No drama with this initial setup here, but I'm um, still a bit, uh, Worried about what he does to get this CC dealt with here is the queen is going to go right down the gut of the base there. There's a channel that sweeps all the way through the core. But other than the multi inferno in this expo, he's going to be uh, right in the range there at those single infernos up ahead. So that could potentially be a big threat here for her. And still has to get through the town hall, but we likely see the balloons go through there after this queen gets a lot of value. A couple Coco loons coming in here, and here comes the rest of that clan castle you spoke of. We got a couple super minions and one remaining headhunter in there. The queen should be able to disperse of them, no problem, with the rage spell on the healers. We got an invis. There's that there invis is. again, Eric. Likes to use that invisibility on that air defense to redirect his lava hound all the way across the base to catch as many traps as possible. Catches the tornado, Ooh. activates the town hall, skeletons coming up. Beautiful play. Absolutely but he needs to get the town hall frozen as the blues make their approach there. He will rage it up there. They will step into the rage there with that freeze uh -oh. locking up the damage there. And oh, that, okay. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. boy, oh boy, the uh -oh. world champion's there, right there. <laughs> but he just lost his queen in the chaos and he will ultimately get the world champion to pick up the hillis. So that'll keep this charge moving. He can just turn the queen charge into a world champion charge. And even though the queen couldn't reach some of the stuff on the backside, that world champion definitely can. Remember guys, she just hops right over the walls. Not like a queen who needs to bust through them. She'll just jump right over and get where she needs to be. Plenty of spell support here, raging up that world champion to get through that scatter shot she's still got ability in hand and this is looking like it's got a really nice shot here for Dobbs I love his play on these Lalos but it's fading quickly I may have spoken a little bit too early haste up just to Haste isn't really going to do anything there. <laughs> It'll help him get to that expo a little bit faster because he needs to get that expo down and release some of the damage off of his Royal Champion. And she's no! not going to get it off uh -huh. in time. And she drops. It is going to be a defense. And no chance eyes misses this one. Their chance was, uh, was they had no chance. <laughs> oh, rip. Oh, oh rip. Eric with the puns. I think if he could have got a couple more balloons from behind, caught in that warden ability, maybe got mm -hmm. the town hall down a little cleaner, saved a little bit there. Uh, it was a really good approach. Queen just, uh, I think, went down to the singles there, maybe in the middle, kind of like what you spoke of. Again, another high percentage attack, but you, you, you got to get a three star at some point, guys. You can't keep falling behind here, but that's fine. It's, it's only the second attack. We're not sweating. I'm not panicking, chat. You guys are panicking. Don't worry about it. A uh, very well thought out attack, just not quite hitting the mark. Yeah, they just need to rally this team, get them uh, in some triples. As soon as they get that first triple, let that uh, momentum carry them forward into more and just build the confidence for the team. If they can get a defense right here, they are still 100% in this war. 
and they can definitely start to stage a, a comeback here. But uh, Chazmec, obviously the veteran team here, a lot of good players. We'll see if they can get this triple and put a two-star lead, which uh, they were in a two-star lead earlier tonight. Yeah. And then they, <laughs> they threw that two-star lead oh. and almost ended up losing. So I don't know, you, there's always, always an opportunity at some point in the war, and you just need to make sure that you're set up to be able to take it if it presents itself. Uh, no chance ice percent is at least a little bit better this time from the Falters, but if Chazmac three stars here, it's going to be tough. Uh, mm -hmm. We got Rainberry coming in. I don't think we saw Rainberry earlier, maybe a little bit of a substitution, but we got a Zap Lalo here, six lightning spells and an earthquake. What are we looking to target with a Zap Lalo, Eric? If you're doing a Zap Lalo on this base here, then you're just trying to split the Scattershot and the Town Hall compartment so that you can get the King and the Royal Champion to go into the Scattershot. The Queen will need to take the Town Hall down, but by splitting those two compartments, you end up making so that you have no extra damage coming in between those compartments so that the heroes can maximize their value right there, and that's what we're seeing here. They didn't go after Inferno, just went after some Expos and some other defenses that split the compartments, and as long as the heroes, specifically that Queen, is able to clear that Town Hall compartment, he will need the King and the Royal Champion to reach all the way in and connect to where the Lightning was used to make sure that there are no uh, defenses that would cause balloons to go around both directions. So the setup here is solid, and Rainberry, obviously a seasoned veteran here when it comes to Lalo attacks, and uh, always impressive to see what he can do with this attack. Take notes, guys. That is key information there. Great read there by Eric, and exactly what we're seeing. So the King and World Champion still working through those ice golems there, and here comes that Lalo from the bottom portion of the base. Tons of balloons, still has another Lava Hound, still has the Grand Warden and the Siege Machine most likely a stone slammer yet to be deployed through here. We'll have to deal with that enemy royal champion there on that left-hand compartment. Notice how he keeps the king and the royal champion alive and moving. They picked up value far beyond the compartment that they started in, but he is struggling into the eagle artillery a little bit there. A couple of traps in the area there, a couple of a uh, bit of damage there coming at the balloons, but he had more that are now making their way in to finish off that eagle artillery before it can get more strikes off the ward ability takes or deals with the incoming strikes here and the slammer ends up going to the outside of the base there drops out of drag runner into one of the multis freezes up the other freezes both of the multis and saves the king from the defensive warden this is looking absolutely crushed what a picture perfect zap lalo and we see a lot of times when people zap out the infernos but you don't necessarily have to zap out the inferno as you can clearly see here as rainbow makes it happen for chasnak they are now up by two stars. That was a clinic of an attack. It was so clean, so well executed. I think everything looked like it went to plan there. The warden ability perfectly captured. Uh, uh, nice room, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> perfectly captured the headhunters to take down the royal champion. So nice little substitution in there. Rainberry coming in and picking up the three star. I feel like something, we're missing a joke here, Eric. You know, as soon as he turned that camera, before I even saw his shirt, I was like, that sure looks like a military barracks. And then I see that it says army on his shirt. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, thank you for your service there, Rainberry. Uh, but here we go. This is another look at this Lalo attack. Look at this Warren ability, absorbing the fire from the scatter shot, protecting the headhunters through the world champion. The, make sure that she goes down there. But then as soon as he comes out of that warden ability, freezes up these multi-infernos and locks in this triple. This is such a important attack right there to get that two-star lead. Absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> love it, Rainberry. Love it. Uh, as Eric said, thank you for your service. Uh, I'm assuming that is the case there. I mean, yeah. Eric, a military man himself. So if anyone's going to know, it's going to be Eric. But a commanding lead. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because we saw this position earlier. Mm -hmm. But Chazmac, they're doing what they're supposed to do. Put up those three stars, put that pressure on. No chance I, they have to respond here. No, no question about it. You have to three star with this next attack just to make them feel something. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a cat gets nine lives, but how many chances do they get? You know, like how how many chances do they have to get a miracle to swing the war into their favor? I mean, they they got to tap out at some point right, right there, and they just got to start bringing it. But here we go. We got exempt from dat coming in from no chance ice. We have a queen charge into Lalo here, and we see these queen charges so often coming in completely opposite the town hall and. 
prioritizing these Eagle Artilleries, but he's going to want to get this blimp to pull the CC, make sure that he's got a funnel on that side for the Queen, but also take out that entire compartment, or at least the majority of it. Gets the Inferno, and that Air Defense will be the other critical defense. The Queen can reach the Arch Tower, and the funnel is formed to drive her into the Eagle Artillery compartment. A full clan castle full as well. We had Lava Hound, Headhunter, and Archers in there, so the Queen will be able to deal with that without too much pressure as he moves through the middle of the base. We're seeing so much Queen Charge Lalos. A lot of people ask me, like, what's the best attack? What attack should I use? I don't think there's necessarily a best attack, but if you want one of the toughest attacks to learn but the most rewarding, I think it would be Queen Charge Lalo. It is an attack that's always strong, and you will always be rewarded once you learn the skills of how to execute this attack. Absolutely. It's one of those attacks that is... Uh, it just has so much versatility to it. There's so many different ways that you can approach a base, and there's so... If it's done, if it's executed well, there's almost no way to stop it other than Black Mines taking out the Queen Healers. But that's why these Cocal Dunes come down. They go in there searching for the Black Mines, keep the healers safe. It takes a little bit off the Lalo, but is 100% worth the investment. The Queen drives through the Road Champion, in through the King, and now he'll support the Queen and try to actually cut off her pathing with the Road Champion coming in from the left side. And if this Queen takes the turn and goes in, Good spot there, but he's got a jump spell as well, so we can use that to co control our pathing. But oh, she might be in trouble here, Bash. Yeah, Queen not wanting to go in with that storage right there. I was maybe expecting the king to go in there with the royal champion, but does not do that. Royal champion seeking shield does pop off. Maybe uh, gonna push that queen all the way in. Great invisibility, oh. so he gets to the scatter shot. He's out of invis now, but he can freeze right there. Queen, oh, he barely misses that scatter. The enemy queen pops over and takes her down. Yeah, he tried to invest into it, and he ended up having the, the Royal Champion steal some of the queen's healers for a moment, drag them into danger, and ultimately got them killed. So this queen is down to two healers. He now puts the jump to go in from the left side. I think he's going into a path correction here, as I think the queen was supposed to go into the channel that crosses through the middle of the base, and with her not going there, the Road Champion almost picked up the slack and was able to get the pathing back under control here, but no chances potentially in a tough spot here as he drives his way through this town hall. He's going to rage up these balloons and pop his ward ability to get through, and we'll see if this queen can still pick up enough value to make him through. Queen ability gets through the scatter shot, and the enemy queen's balloons are working I, if he's got freezes here if he can get through this scatter shot he's got a really nice shot on the back end of this base go ahead and freeze that scatter oh barely misses it from firing oh no tornado trap goes off this is going to be tough for them to get their queen's going to come back over and try to support just a little bit out of time oh three two one oh good call yeah another misstep oh no yeah, I was <laughs> I was so engaged with the Queen Charge, it was so exciting. <laughs> he, he kept that Queen Charge moving, like she ran into uh, some problems there, but I, I think maybe that Royal Champion needed to be, be deployed just a little bit earlier to get the Queen to take the turn into the middle of the base there. He clearly was trying to cut off her pathing, and she just didn't want to cooperate. She did not want to take that turn. She ended up wrapping all the way out to the outside of the base there, and he made some interesting adjustments there. It was almost able to just revamp the planet to something completely different and still pull it through anyway, so a nice chance, but uh, he's not exempt from that too, Sar. <laughs> oh, no. Eric, the <laughs> savage mode. <laughs> oh, I apologize for my co-host here, guys. He just can't help himself. But moving forward, Chazmac <laughs> looking in a commanding position. Uh, we kind of talked about this earlier. War, if they do miss up, Mm -hmm. They're fine. Like, they got a really commanding spot. They're up two stars. They're up two triples. And the percentage is going to be in their favor. I mean, no no chance I'm not putting down bad percentage. But when you're putting up three stars, obviously, that's as much mm -hmm. percentage as you can get. Absolutely. He looks like we got Peidu starting off with a, a bat spell to control this Archer Tower and air defense to sneak in a couple of balloons. That clears all the traps all the way up to the town hall here. But it funnels the queen and gets a partial CC pull. So a couple of archers and a headhunter come out of there, which is uh, gonna leave a Lava Hound inside of that defensive CC. Wall break the queen, and it's a queen charge hybrid attack here. He got one bomb tower to the way here, and they'll try to get the rest of the CC pulled here. Who gets and it? And he ends up getting the hound there, and he can fight the hound before locking on and activating the town hall. So this setup is very nice to start us off. Queen's going to go ahead and engage that Lava Hound as it comes over here. Going to check for any Seeking Air Mines. So the Queen's looking to get this whole compartment out and deal with that Royal Champion as well, which she should have no problem. And then we'll likely see the Funnel come in. We have a Siege Barracks selected, which is a really traditional Siege Machine for a Queen Charge Hybrid. Using that Baby Dragon just to cut off the Funnel 
and maybe looking to push that king a little bit inside by cutting off the funnel up top here. Queen finally gets down to Town Hall, I'm working on the Royal Champion of the Bow now. Yeah, but the Eagle Artillery is activated, so he needs to get this king moving. He puts the king and the Siege Barracks together. The king will loop into the base there and circle back as the hybrid cuts off his pathing and forces him to stay to the outside, but just trying to thin the pathing out here a little bit there. He will need either a Warded ability or a Heal Spell through the Bomb Tower, the Multi, and the scatter shot there. And he opts for the Warded ability nice and early in attack here, but look at the Queen down in the middle of the base there. She's getting targeted by the single, but she has that invisibility ready. He's paying attention, multitasking as he makes his way through, keeping the Queen charge protected while also getting these heals into critical positions and this is moving very nice now that king pops his ability to go through the eagle artillery queen's ability was forced also by that single he had to pop it so she didn't get too low king's gonna go here and pop out this eagle artillery and we got a great path here for the hogs and miners to finish through this base all those really going to be remaining that's going to deal crazy damage with that scatter shot but it looks like there's so many hogs and miners still remaining that this should not be an issue we got an archer tower up top our archer cleaning that camp up top and pavu looking strong chasmac coming out the gate firing here seeking shield and here we go last few defenses chasmac three for three eric <laughs> they do not want to have the same fate as the rival warren glory no chance was able to take down warren <laughs> glory but chasmac is a roadblock they are struggling to move through that was really well executed man that that one had a lot going on. That was a really tough queen charge into that compartment. There was a lot going on. Great use of that hog to pull out that hound before he got to the town hall. Yeah, absolutely. You want to make sure that you fight the CC in safety right there. And if the town hall is activated, beating down on you, or you have a single inferno chipping away at you, and you're stuck on a lava hound, it can force you to invest a lot more resources into the queen, which means you have less to protect your queen later on, or to protect the hybrid if they move through. But really, really good heal placements, good early ward ability there, and it ended up powering him through. And he's happy about that one, guys. That is three <laughs> stars up here for Chasmac now. Yeah, three for three, these guys going to town and no chance ice oh what the <laughs> <laughs> love you but uh you guys uh, we gotta get a three star and need a, a huge 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 mistake from chas Mac, which at this point i don't think we'll see they're on fire they're running through these bases mm -hmm. but that's okay that's fine because it's not elimination this is round robin every clan will play every clan and we talked about this they already took down warren glory they one did. of the favorites uh I think it would have been a long shot to expect them to take down both of the favorites, but they're showing that they can hang here in the mobile yeah. challenge. And I think that's really important. And we see another queen charge hybrid here from Tony Gunk going to move his queen right in towards this town hall compartment. Tony Gunk missed in his war against uh, Warren Glory here, out for a little bit of redemption in this one here as he charges this town hall compartment. We see. The Town Hall compartment here has the CC next to that single Inferno, pretty deep in the base here. No bomb towers in this Town Hall compartment. It's an interesting base to try to throw a Queen Card hybrid at. So we'll see if it uh, is able to make its way through. But one of the things that we're trying to set up here whenever we do these Queen Card hybrids is we want to try to keep the Hog Miner path to the width of a heal spell to make sure that every single Hog and every single Miner gets the protection of the heal spell as they make their way into the base here. So we'll see if he can thin that pathing enough here and make that happen. Trying to get that clan castle to pull with a couple of hogs. Doesn't want to waste too many more. So the clan castle is not going to pull out. So he's going to go ahead and run in the king in the barracks on that left hand, uh, right hand side rather, excuse me. And then here come the hogs and miners right up through the middle of the base. Queen's going to work her way through and try to stay away from that sequence target inferno. Meanwhile, we got the clan castle pulling out. We got archers and a lava hound, which not a big deal. Just going to hold up the world champion a little bit. The world champion, one of the hardest hitting uh, offensive powers in that area of the base there. Everybody else is basically just a glorified meat shield in front of her so she can deal out of damage. So the Lava Hound does slow him down significantly, but he's got the wizards that came out of the siege barracks that are helping him clear up those pups along with the electric owl from the warden so he can power through that quickly that is one of the biggest advantages having that electric Good owl queen. to really give him some punch here but these infernos in the middle are causing some problems and there goes his queen and tony gunk is not gonna get the redemption that he's looking for on this one. Oh yeah just devastating here the queen just too much honor wasn't able to get that clan castle pull and just a heartbreak over an attack just not their war here for no chance ice unfortunately he's trying to get as much percentage but this is basically going to seal it for chasmac barring mm -hmm. absolute catastrophe 
they should have no problem finishing this one. And honestly, Tony, just a little bit of an off day here. Both of his attacks pretty low. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, but I mean, it also goes to show you how prepared Chazmac came into this this uh, tournament today. Like they had a lot of prep time to prep here. They were the team that didn't have to play through. Actually, they qualified in the first split and they made it through in the ladder, topping the ladder above every other team and was the first team to qualify, which means they had the most time to prep bases and get ready for this. And this is such an important path to concentrate on. This is an important tournament for them where they could sacrifice other tournaments to make sure that they perform well here, that they have their best bases to perform here to give them the best chances because this does feed to the World Championship and there's a lot of money on the line here. So their priorities are set and they're, they're showing here at this base building. I mean, especially if you're a newlywed, you know, $50,000 <laughs> total prize pool goes a long way. <laughs> you could be referring just, to there. You know, just, just saying, but uh, someone ordered Tony Gonk a crunch wrap or something because he's just off his game today, just not going his way. But again, it goes to speak to Chaz Max base builders. They have some of the best base builders around. Uh, Ghost, personally, one of my favorites. So, you know, I, mm -hmm. I play around here and there, and I love getting bases from Ghost. But even though they're down, look at this. Tony, he's, he's still having a good time. He's still feeling oh, yeah. good. Uh, second chance ice. They, they're just happy to be playing tonight, to be honest with you. Let's have some fun wars. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to keep the spirit up there. And uh, somebody like uh, Tony definitely keeps yeah. the spirit up there for his team. They Their chances to make the comeback here is, uh, is minimal. But there's so many other teams that they have the opportunities to beat right. down the line. So it's like, like uh, even, if they, even if they don't make it through here, there's... They don't need to be every single team yeah. to be able to make it to the finals. They just need to perform well enough to stay in the in the top end. And we'll see if uh, Ghost can push Chazmac into this uh, victory position here. So with nine on the board here, they are ahead by a massive margin and potentially could go up four stars here as we see another Super Witch attack. Not with the lightning on this one, though. We see the Super Witches match with the lightning a lot of times here. And this one just going heavy on the rages. Heavy on the rages. Maybe C1 committed here to the Warden just to get through that scatter shot a little bit quicker as time is always an issue with the Super Witch attacks. We do have the Log Launcher selected, which you think will help push him through the base as he'll likely come in near that top side of the base, that 12 o'clock position. Here comes that Rage committed to the Warden, hoping to get through that scatter shot before he starts those Witches. And sometimes if you drop this Warden into a high damage area or a Tesla farm, it can be a little bit risky. And if, the, if something happens with the Warden block, then you do end up risking the one star because you have such a long approach across to the Town Hall. But there's always, always a risk of a one star with this style of approach here because you don't know exactly how the things are going to pass. He'll try to control it the best he can by getting some extra troops on the right side of that log launcher in just a moment here. There goes the king to deploy over there. He tanks the defenses down the line to make sure that log launcher stays safe while it opens up and gets some critical shots there into the infernos across the middle of the base, but mostly prevent or controlling the access to only open up the compartments to drive him towards the town hall and pick off the critical defenses along the way. We do have Triple Ice Glow coming out of the Clan Castle, which they will have that little bit of a freeze, which will slow things down. But with the healers staying away from that freeze, Warden ability, this should be no issue. The Log Launcher is still working as well, and he's got Ice Golems of his own coming out of the Clan Castle. King's ability is popped to get through that scatter shot, and now it comes in the Royal Champion. All he's got to do is get the Town Hall down, and he's looking really strong through here. Yeah, it unfortunately does go to his Queen ability. The Ice Golems start to pop across the middle of the base there, and he's got one more Ice Golem that's making its way towards the Town Hall. It'll go ahead and freeze the Town Hall, but I think he actually might have burned a freeze onto the Town Hall right before that Ice Golem popped to try to stop the damage. So Queen's down. Double freeze. He lost his Queen. Okay, get this Town Hall down. The Super Witches are on it. The Healers are there. He should get the Town Hall. Yep. And I think the Royal Champion, if they can, if she can just keep the witches out in front of her, which it seems like they're staying out in front of her, then she can just wrap around the outside and the witches can control all the defenses to stay safe over there. Yeah, he's got this one. Still has a freeze in hand. Uh, Royal Champion should have no problem finishing this one off. Just a couple defenses left. Plenty of cleanup in. King still up. Great attack here from Ghost to get the three-star Chazmag. Four for four. Perfect so far today. Or not today, rather. In this war, I should say. Putting in a little commanding war here it's, uh, towards the end of our day. I mean, that, that's nice. That was a really well-executed attack. Yeah, this is what you expect to see out of our uh, number one seed here. They they are the team to beat. Everybody would call them the team to beat there. So they've definitely proven it here. They've uh, they've uh, had 
that the last war was a little bit dicey where they ended up with uh, yeah. the one star after they had a solid lead and almost through their lead, but they still clutched it at the end. They have so many clutch players here and they show it time and time again. And uh, Ghost obviously is uh, awesome with these uh, smash attacks here. And a lot of these guys, they're like, when I think super witches, I think, uh, I think uh, Chaz Mac Gaming here because they, over the course of the different seasons here and all the different tournaments, they consistently are strong with this attack. And it's always impressive to see what they can do with Super Witches when very few other teams actually end up using them. Right, we see a uh, Super Bowler smash quite a bit. Not mm -hmm. so much of the Super Witches these days, but we see it really effective here. They're two for two for in this war. And I think it's just that ability to read the bases and see, they, they kind of mm -hmm. know that attack. So they know how to get that pathing, how to get those Super Witches to get the maximum value. And a lot of these times we see the Super Witches still up at the end of the attacks. Mm -hmm. Those gonna be on Jared from No Chance Ice to close us out. Good luck to you, Jared. Unfortunately, this one's all for not as the war is over. That's not a big deal. They're just having fun. They're gonna look to finish strong. And like you mentioned, you don't have to be every clan, but let's just try to finish strong. Uh, as Jared gets going here, let's go ahead and take a look at their upcoming schedule because we do have round robin. Everyone's going to play everyone, and they're going to be playing Omnipotence and Flaming Turkeys on the 24th, then into Push on July 1st, Empire and Fuzzy Wuzzy on July 8th. So still a long road ahead of them and some really winnable wars in there based on how they perform. Yeah, absolutely. They already took out War and Glory, which is one of the biggest threats there. That is already a huge amount of momentum and not able to carry it into this war here, but they could definitely walk away today with their heads held high because they they did uh, they did struggle a lot this war here, but that might just be testament to Chazmac and the nerves getting to him a little bit there going against a team that is as daunting as Chazmac. And hopefully they can uh, pull it back and pull off the same kind of wars that they did against War and Glory against their future opponents. and. We'll see what their chances look like into or to making a through challenge here at the end. But they definitely have uh, held their own today and got a big win and unfortunately uh, a big loss as well. But they're they're far from out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you said it all right there. And ending today facing War Glory and Chazmac, going one and one is not bad for this team at all. Like, yeah. honestly, you got to be feeling good playing those two teams and going out of the day one and one. So I feel like you know, the, this team knows how to rally the troops. They're going to bounce back. They'll, they'll be fine. Uh, they got a really nice schedule ahead of them, some really winnable wars, and, and they can hang. A little bit of an off war here, you know, maybe something about Chazmec bases just they couldn't read them. I, I know I've had that personal issue. It's just like sometimes like, I don't like any of these bases. Eric, you <laughs> like a base? Someone hit a base because I have no clue. <laughs> I really like this attack that they're doing right now, though. This was uh, Sneaky Goblins taking the Town Hall, the big kill squad, and then the small Lalo. I love to see this attack with the Dragon Riders and the Bats, but be able to have all these extra spells to invest into the Lalo to keep the Lalo protected. They are able to power through that bottom compartment. Look at his heroes. This queen is still moving on the top side. The Royal Champion still alive with her ability that she pops right there to clear out some of the back end defenses. And I think this is going to be their first triple. A little bit too little too late here as uh they they were going for their uh their next chance a little bit they got to they got to cash in those extra chances earlier <laughs> yeah absolutely a beautiful attack from Jared to close out and that's what you want absolutely you know don't just give up don't throw in the towel and we saw him use that attack earlier with 20 sneaky goblins mm -hmm. he got 19 there and he loves that attack he he's really good with it and we see why i mean you mentioned the extra spell support nothing to be ashamed of from this team they they're on the right path one on one after this first day, and they got a, they got more wars ahead of them. But this, I like this one quite a bit from Jared. Uh, but we go we go to Chazmec, and chazmec has got the chance for I don't want to say it. But <laughs> <laughs> you just jinxed it. All right, too late. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they could definitely pull it off here. If, uh, well, you said there was a potential uh, roster stream because we know like uh, Lexnos is out on his honeymoon in Hawaii. So after they won that uh, first war, maybe uh, they tagged in Rainberry and let Lexnos actually go hang out with his newly uh, wed wife there. So <laughs> yeah. we'll see who comes up for the final attack here from Chaz Mac. But every single player, even their alternate, as you saw there out of Rainberry, is. 100% capable of winning these wars and getting these perfect wars. So definitely a, a solid roster all along there and their base building team as well. Yeah, and that's one of the toughest parts of this is having strong substitutes because most clans, you have five that you can lean on, right? Like, you know you're five, <laughs> but that's having that sixth that's going to be able to sub in when someone's not available, when someone's, you know, maybe going and getting married or something, you know, 
having that sixth player that you can really rely on is huge. And as you mentioned, Lexnos may be going and enjoying a little time with his wife. We got CMG Max coming in with a Skelly Bat Donut here. Okay, looking to get out the Infernos and the Expo here. Or maybe it's just Bat Donut here. I don't see the Skeleton spells deployed. There's just one in there. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and uh, look at the upcoming schedule here for Chazmac while we're at it too. They already have this win locked in, but their next war is going to be against War and Glory. That is going to be the second war of the day there on uh, the next broadcast next Friday. That'll happen at uh, 5 30 uh, p.m. Pacific Standard Time if you want to come check out that big highlight match. That is going to be an absolute banger between these two teams, which uh, hopefully uh, War and Glory can uh, step it up after their their other one. Are they playing again tonight? I think they, they are. They're later on tonight. That's going to be a good war, and hopefully they can go into that with a one and one uh, We'll see how they do, because that's going to be a rough time there uh, if they if they go in and end up losing two in the row when they're such a big team to look at. But <laughs> that matchup, Eric, could be a preview of the championship. Let's let's be honest. So a preview of the finals right. moving forward. It's hard to say. I mean, we're really early into the round, Robin. We're, we're not even the but you know let's get <laughs> it's gonna be a good <laughs> make sure you guys have those notifications on next week you know eric and i'll be here ready to cast for you guys ready to give you guys these amazing wars but max is looking to finish strong here look at how late that stone slammer was in as this lalo is just working through the base this is looking so strong for max absolutely still got a haste here the slammer and the hound will very likely pick up the tanky on the scatter shot, but it's like frozen all the way, and he gets inside the middle range with pretty much everything before it actually wakes up out of the freeze. There are a couple of red bombs that went off. That actually burst the hound, which causes the hound to trigger the rest of the red air bombs, and he'll easily power through this, guys. This is the perfect war locked in, the second perfect war of the season here that we've seen in the in the studio here, and the first one of the challenge. So a big pickup here and I mean, that was a monster win here for Chazmac and definitely showing their dominance as they are one of, obviously one of the front running teams here to be taken out here and uh, are our favorite to win this thing. I don't want to jinx them, but I mean, they're, they're looking pretty good here. Yeah, I, you got a, a perfect war. <laughs> you can't get any better than that. Yep. They came out, they put on the performance they needed. They did exactly, you got to be feeling good. Look at that, all oh, smiles. You got to love it if you're Chazmac. Uh, really just a strong performance. I felt like the they picked the right basis for the right attacks and just were really prepared for this war. Bounce back from that first war. Or, uh, well, I guess they won earlier. I was yeah, thinking yeah. no chance ice winning, but uh, <laughs> no bounce back needed. They just go out and improve to a 15 star perfect war. Yeah, and their defensive performance as well. Just completely shutting down. No chance. They got one triple through. So a decisive 15 to 11 war here. And they definitely came prepared yeah. for this. Yeah, that was uh wow. GG to Chaz Mac. Maybe I uh maybe I didn't take you guys seriously enough. My bad on my prediction, Chaz Mac. You don't get too mad at me. <laughs> I predicted him. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you obviously picked the front runner every time. But I had a st you know, my guys no chance ice. Those are my guys. They're yeah. a front runner for the reason though. They're yeah. a front runner for a reason. Yeah, they've been here, they have the experience, they've shown why they're here and Man, what a great war to lead us into our break. Guys, don't go anywhere. We just had a perfect war. We're going to have more wars for you guys. We're going to have more stats, more analysis. You're watching the Snapdragon Pro Series. The Snapdragon Pro Series is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Monster Energy, DHL, the U.S. Air Force. Welcome to the place where dreams come true. Where everything you want can be yours. If and only if you're willing to work for them. You're willing to hurt for them. But most of all, you're willing to be first for them. Ha! Look, I'm going straight to the top. I don't know how I would stop, like it or not. I got some goals that I'm hitting. You hear what I'm spitting? It's hot. Look what I got. Whole lot of passion and pain. The road to success is insane. Stay on 
out my lane Cause I'm on a mission, I'm getting what stands in my way Yeah, I'm a beast, I wouldn't play with me, baby The way that I'm training is crazy and I do it daily You wanna talk about drive? I got more drive than Mercedes I've never been lazy, I'm in the room, it's a red alert You wanna compete? Well, get better first I got ten toes in the dirt, push through the hurt Just to show them my worth, I'm the best <laughs> Yeah, I'm the best I never stress I know what's next I'm who they test Like we playing chess But I'm unimpressed So now let me flex ha. Yeah, I'ma work Through the struggle and hurt Cause I know my worth And I gotta be first ha. Yeah, I gotta be first Look I don't want anyone's sympathy I understand what it's meant for me I give my focus and energy If it's meant to be, then it's meant to be But mentally, I'm undefeated They hear that and say I'm conceited Like there's no reason Like I don't beat them and beat them And come back again just to teach them That when you work under pressure You reach higher measures They'll try and bring you down But you cannot let them And only get better and focus on cheddar Eye on the prize and you'll become a legend Like, oh, when I'm in the room, it's a red alert You wanna compete, well, get better first I got ten toes in the dirt Push through the hurt just to show them my worth I'm the best <laughs> Yeah, I'm the best. I never stress. I know what's next. I'm who they test. Like we playing chess. But I'm unimpressed. So now let me flex. <laughs> yeah, I'm a work. Through the struggle and hurt. Cause I know my worth. And I gotta be first. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be first. They don't know what's gotten into me. How'd I turn pain into energy? Do all the struggle and hurt, remember my work, and that's why I gotta be first. <laughs>
the Lalo through the Eagle Artillery. Notice how he did not drop the Warden initially into this section of the base. He waits and drops the Warden in from this left section of the base so that he can get direct access with Headhunters inside of the Warden building to go after that defensive Royal Champion. That is absolutely critical to protect those Headhunters and make sure they don't have to go through the defensive King over on this side. The Headhunters arrive to that Royal Champion, they take her down, and now she can't be picking off balloons and he can just ride through that ward ability. As soon as he comes out of the ward ability, he's got the freezes, lock out the multi infernos. It was a picture perfect zap Lalo here. Every single bit of the attack here was what he needed to do to get the triple here. And just another nail in the coffin there for no chance eyes as they just completely dominated this entire war. Perfect war and a 15 to 11 victory. What a show they put on for us here in Vroom. I mean, I feel like that's sort of a microcosm of the whole thing. You know what I mean? You talk about so many small things executed to perfection over mm -hmm. and over and over again. And I, you know, sitting in the back, Glitter and I were watching this and we're like, are they going to do it? Are they going to do it? Every single time the next one kept rolling on through, like, mm -hmm. are they, are they going to do it? Because here's the thing, you know, we came in with really high expectations for them as a team. And I feel like for them in this moment, this was them proving, yes, the hype is real. Yes, absolutely believe it's only day number one. They still got a lot in store for us here. And speaking of what we've got in store, an interview with Drew is next up on the menu. Let's send it over to Glitter. Thank you very much, Enviram. Yes, I've got Drew on the line here to chat with us after that perfect war. Now, I know that it's only the first week of the challenge, but you're 2-0. One of those was a perfect war, so how are you feeling overall about the team? So, first off, thank you for allowing us to be here, and this opportunity is, we're forever grateful for this. Uh, Good war to uh, Empire Gaming and good war to No Chance, good friends of ours. It was very exciting after, you know, the first match that we had. It was a little less than what the expectations were. But going into the second war and then getting the second perfect for ESL Challenge was definitely what we expected. I mean, speaking of that first war, what do the comms look like for you guys? Like, after you have the first war, like you said, it's a little bit less than what you wanted, but you do still get the dub. What, like, what are those conversations kind of resetting yourselves for the second war? So the, you said it exactly. It's resetting ourselves. Every war is going to be different, and we have to take every opponent as if it's the finals. And every team plays differently, so we just had the right bases set, and the traps were awesome. Ghost is an amazing base builder, and everyone on the team contributed the right way that they could, and it showed, thankfully. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> the second perfect, that's a fantastic way to start off the challenge. Now, I, obviously, we have seen some really incredibly close performances here today. So heading into the future weeks of the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge, uh, which teams are you keeping your eyes on? Oh, it, it's, you know, next week is our biggest week, I believe, uh, going up against War and Glory. And it's our only match of the night. So we want to make that one count, especially with Nick and Nick versus Lex. And Nick will be home from his honeymoon. Or Lex, I apologize, will be home from his honeymoon. And it'll be it'll be good. Lex will be in his environment back at his home and uh, not in a coffee shop this time. <laughs> I mean, he still did okay being in the coffee shop on a honeymoon with distractions. Still showed up and performed. So impressive, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe we should send him to coffee shops more often. <laughs> Maybe that's the new good luck factor. Um, also, I need to thank you for the interview earlier. You always do such a good job anytime you come on and chat with us. And the cutest, cutest dogs ever, dude. Oh, yes. Thank you. I was hoping. <laughs> yes, I love my puppy. I was so, so jealous of the puppy snuggles, of course. But before I let you go, I will give you a final opportunity here. Do some shout outs for yourself and your squad. Oh, shout out to the guys, man. Shout out to the supporters. But, uh, it just comes down to accountability for us. You know, we test in day in and day out, and uh, hopefully our, our performance and our execution says the rest. It most certainly does. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us yet again, Drew. I'm very excited to see how you guys do throughout the rest of the season. Us too. Thank you for the opportunity. God, always so nice. Always so nice to talk to him. I don't know if you guys saw those clips with the the floofs but he has the cutest <laughs> cutest dogs 
Yeah, the, I, I saw that. Apparently, they're like the number two and three fans or something of CMJ. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. First of all, I've seen some really hype fans in the chat. But yeah, always a great interview. Shout out to Drew for joining us. And uh, what a commanding performance from CMJ. I thought they were going to do well, but I don't think this early on I was expecting a perfect like that, like first week. And on their second, I mean, they, they could have been tired. It was their second war of the day. They bounced back even stronger than they were in the first war. And that is the mark of a fantastic, great, strong competitive team. And I know, obviously, it's week number one. Okay, can't get, can't get too hyped yet. But they are setting a tone. And I think that's really important because it's illustrating the competitive level that we have here at the Mobile Challenge. I cannot be more excited for it. Speaking of the competitive level, we've got one more war. This is it. All right, this is the last war of the day, folks. It's going to be between Fuzzy Wuzzy and War and Glory. So we'll start things off with Fuzzy Wuzzy. But I think this is going to be another close one. Yeah, this uh, this one has potential to be a fun one as well. Uh, Fuzzy Wuzzy slipped up a little bit earlier. Not quite what we were hoping for from them. We got Soham, Kevin, 20, 267, Beck 29, Sir Will, and Stamus. Uh, we saw them earlier kind of falter just a little bit. I believe they played against Omnipotence earlier. And Omnipotence came out really, really strong. So you know that Fuzzy Wuzzy is going to look to bounce back here, Eric. Yeah, but their opponent is also down a war for the night. So both of them are going to want it. They don't want to end the day at 0-2 here. So definitely they're going to be fighting hard for this one here. But these are two teams that really, really are familiar with each other. And they have been playing against each other for years. They know exactly what to expect. And they, they know each other's strengths and weaknesses. This is going to be an interesting play here. And I'm uh, curious to see what kind of of bases we see on defense and how prepared they came into it but uh yeah i mean i mean they both need to shake off get a reset like we were talking uh, there in the interview there make sure they get that reset and just get ready to get into their confidence and uh make this happen today and their opponents are no slouches either it's war and glory honestly an upset let's be honest it was an upset earlier today we go to with nick agent 33 boone and jethro they played against no chance ice and they lost a very close intense war but we know that's not gonna hamper them these guys have been here before these like these are some of the most recognizable names in na uh and we know that they can bounce back and put on a good show so i'm really looking forward to this war yeah, they just got to shake it off. That's all there is to it. They know that they can perform here. They consistently are able to do it. They have a really, really strong uh, bases, like you see there, getting these defenses, some crazy attacks here, like this one from Rigo Torres. And uh, they, they can clutch it where they need to, but uh, they just got to they just gotta get out here and make it happen today. Yeah, and taking a look at the stats, about what I expected. <laughs> but we saw this earlier. Yeah. Warren Glory was heavily favored. It's esports. Anything can happen. A huge advantage statistically for War and Glory. But will that translate to this next matchup here against Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy? I mean, they've got the advantage statistically. Yeah, they've got the advantage in the head to head. They want they're up four to two against oh. Fuzzy Wuzzy. So we'll have to see if they're able to bounce back from that first match or Fuzzy will take this one home. And of course, chat, we want to know your opinion. What do you think on the sixth and final war of the day? Will it be war and glory or will it be Fuzzy Wuzzy? It all comes down to this. This Ooh. is the last moment, the last time of the day that I get to send it to you guys for the first week of the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge of Clash of Clans. So please take it away. Guys, make sure you have those notifications on. Follow on the social so you know when we go live. Fridays are going to be lit moving forward for the Mobile Challenge. And this is going to be a great war to close us out here, Eric. We got War and Glory and Fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy. And we got the man himself, Rigo Torres, starting us off. And you know, I don't even have to look. Queen Charge Lalo. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. And once again, we're going to be generally wanting this Queen Charge to go all the way in and take in the Town Hall down, but he's got to set the path to get her there. And typically, some kind of Siege Machine can set the path in. The other heroes can set that path in. And he needs the Queen to go after the Town Hall. Otherwise, the Blimp is the thing that has to make it happen. He puts in a Wall Break. That Wall Breaker, okay, where's it going there? It goes all the way around there. I didn't really get the wall to open up where he actually <laughs> needs to get the queen to go in, but that's fine. She walks her way in, and I'll take out this multi Prudo, pick off the queen, and start to move over. And uh, he didn't use that blimp there to go set the funnel. So maybe the blimp has a different purpose here, and he's going to use it. Maybe that single Inferno? I'm thinking that single Inferno up ahead here. 
Uh, okay, I see it. But notice, Eric, we talked about this in the first war. Ooh, look at this. Ooh, Rocket Balloons. Okay, freeze, nice. Okay. Great, great reaction time there. You have to be on point with that reaction time. But we noticed in the first war that anti-2, and it seems like we're seeing that trend continue against Wang Lui. Run those anti-2s, make them work for it. We know it's not their strongest suit. They've improved. Uh, obviously, in that first war, they improved, but it was ultimately their downfall. They couldn't adapt and overcome these anti-2s. Need this queen to jump into this town hall compartment and get it down. It looks like she should go in right here. Yep, there she goes. And she should have no problem getting the town hall. Uh, switches over to a stone slammer, actually. Yeah, as soon as the queen takes the path from the town hall, he's got that stone slammer as a alternate uh, siege machine, and it's going to get more value than a blimp would now that the town hall is secure. But you know that the blimp is ready to be Ooh. the primary method to take the town hall down if the queen wasn't going to go in there. I guess that's a secondary method. But the queen is going to be under a lot of damage in the middle of base there, and she's I don't think down. she's going to survive. Yeah. yeah, she's going down right there. She almost went down through her ability there. She barely had a little bit of health left with the healer's rage up, able to get her back up. But we saw that uh, this earlier. The queen went down early. But with that stone slammer out in front of, oh, well, wait, stone slammer's gone. Wait a second. <laughs> with the, the hound out, something needs to get out in front of the protect these balloons. Still has world champion in hand, though. There's so little threat on this left side of the base here for air troops that the dragon runner, the balloons are just going to completely overwhelm it. And the RC ability still intact here. This is crushed. Rigo Torres will lock in this triple here to open up for war and glory. What a beautiful attack. And uh, the queen charge fell short, but not before taking the town hall down. That was its primary target. And had that queen water dropped to the left side, could just uh, sit the blip in. He had multiple different plans there for multiple different scenarios and he was ready for anything and that's why he's one of the best in the game yeah go rigo by far one of the best queen charge allow low players and that was just really nice and you can see adapting waiting reacting see what's coming out coming out of the clan castle see where the queen's going and he changed his plan on the fly he knew what he needed to do he knew how he had to adapt this plan and it went perfectly for him queen did go down in that town hall compartment but a great warden ability here great royal champion to get through the rest of the space and that's the start war and glory is looking for and that's the start they had last time mm -hmm. but putting that pressure on fuzzy wuzzy let's see if they can respond with at, at minimum a really high two but you'd like to see them get a three here yeah and they're definitely capable of it i mean these teams have a lot of history together here and uh a lot of these players have been played in the same clan before, yep. so like they are intimately familiar with these uh, with these other players on the other team, and they know exactly what they're capable of. They know who can pull off those clutch plays, and they may be able to even plan around it. And I mean, not always, but we we can uh, play to their weaknesses and their strengths here and see what they can do on defense. But uh, Fuzzy was he's uh, obviously I would say the underdog here. I mean, yeah, not, not my butch. I mean, if there was a team for War and Glory to fear, I'd say Fuzzy Wuzzy and Chaz Mac would be two of the teams that they would fear the most. Yeah, it, uh, statistically, we saw the advantage. I mean, it's right there on paper. We're going to have Stamus coming in. And last time he did that log launcher charge, and it looks like he's going to do the same thing, where he's going to commit that log launcher to the king, the warden, and just have a really heavy kill squad there, and then look for that queen to make her way all the way across the base. Going to have to keep an eye on her. She's under pressure. There goes that rage spell. King's into this compartment. The log launcher's going. Just going to look to set great pathing for this queen to make her way all the way around this bend and to the town hall. No delay between the kill squad and the queen charge starting, so it's uh, a really fast approach into the base here, which leaves plenty of time after this kill squad ultimately dies out for this queen charge to continue across the base, use those jumps, and get to that town hall. But she has to go through the multi-inferno and the CC first. The Lava Hound is uh, going to hang out with those yetis in the middle of the base. If those yetis can get through there and take out that multi, he's in a perfect position there. And it looks like they're going to make that happen. Maybe, I hope so. He's going to go to the warden Ooh. first. Uh, to uh -oh. turn nope. yetis. Oh, they don't go there. They, uh, oh. they almost take oh. it. Oh, it's so <laughs> it's close. So close. <laughs> well, look, at this balloon. look at this balloon. There's one balloon. It's trying to go, but the RC's it. in a step of rack, and she's going to take care of it. And look how far those other heroes went all the way across the left side of the base. Honestly, you could put the Lalo through the town hall right now and just like sacrifice it all and just use the warden to give him a little bit of boost. They could uh, sacrifice the town hall and he could still clear out the right side of the base here. This looks absolutely crushed. This is this is really, really, really nicely executed right here, but he's not quite out of it yet. This is probably one of the most satisfying attacks to watch when it goes right. And Stamus is looking really confident with it. So has plenty of spells to support this queen. A lot of pressure remaining. Queen does have to get to that single. She still has ability. Rage spell in just to help her out a little bit, but should eventually get to that town hall. 
freezes in. Uh, and here comes that Lalo, like you said, just kind of like sacrifice it, but also to push that queen in as she, he's only got one more viz for this queen to get that single. He's got her ability. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> she true. She's still got her ability. She steps through the jump, locks onto the single Inferno, can pop her ability to take the Town Hall down, and the Lalo will not be needed to make that happen. He will end up having the balloon survive. He'll just direct target the rest of the defenses around the edge of the base here, and he's got more than enough cleanup. That was very, very nicely done and a well-deserved celebration there from Stay Away as he knocked it out of the park there and is going to be starting off with a triple. We start off with the tie war against, uh, I mean, if there was another rivalry between any team, it would be these two right here because these are uh, players who, like I said, they have a lot of history between each other. All square after one volley. These clans are coming to play. I love that attack. It's one of the toughest attacks to execute, but if you know and you understand how it's going to work, what you need to do, you can just do so many cool things with it. Like that base was crushed before the Lalo started. It's basically a cleanup Lalo at that point. Uh, the queen could have probably got most of that down by herself. Let's be honest. Beautiful, well-executed attack. We're all square. We are, and uh, the, yeah, that queen charge, she really had to go through a lot of base there, but he had like almost exactly the amount of resources that he needed to get her through. And that's the beauty of this attack here is with the other heroes all working together, you typically don't need much, if any, spell support to go work with them. So you get like every bit of your yeah. spells that can be working with the queen charge. And then if anything goes wrong, you can just dive bomb the Lalo into the town hall to secure it. So definitely a really cool attack there. and. Always risky, always risky. Super risky, but that's a that's a confidence thing. You could see after the first war, they're they're not shaken by it. You know, mm -hmm. they still have the confidence to go with that full send all the way across the base. That really risky play, and they're rewarded with the three star by it. Sometimes teams, you know, fall behind, maybe go zero and one out the gate, and then get a little too conservative, almost shoot mm -hmm. yourself in the foot. Two stars, you know, not really three star plans. We got Agent 33 coming in next. He's got a Super Witch Smash. We were talking about the Super Witches and the Lightning Spells, and we see that here. Lots of Lightning value here. Oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Massive <laughs> Lightning value here. Yeah, Warden, Single Inferno, and two Ground Expos that it can connect to with a Warden and wow. a Queen working together here at the point of symmetry of the base here. So it doesn't matter which way they go here, they will be able to just react and uh, then put a funnel up ahead of them. But uh, it's another anti-two-star uh, base, which uh, War and Glory, uh, they have struggled with them a bit here throughout their their road through both, both the open finals and the challenge phase a little bit here in their last war. That was ultimately what did them in. So we'll see if they can pull through here and finally get this recovery on these. But he's got that blimp, and that blimp can take the town hall, and he can reach everything else over the walls without having to go into that compartment. Uh, I, I see what you're saying here. So maybe you just push those witches into that one layer of walls with the king and then just eat that blimp right at the town hall, take it down, mm -hmm. witches, and the queen can stay on the outside and pick everything else off. I love it. Triple Ice Gloom, the clan castle will slow things up. You want that blimp to get through there. Oh, beautiful All warden, right. oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh, great warden ability. Absolutely. He just needs to land on the town hall. Very likely to be sneaky goblins in there. If they can just destroy that town hall, he's going to be in a good spot there. But I, I lied to you. I said that if they can reach everything. They can't reach that multi-inferno over the wall. So something is going to have to reach in there and take that down. And the Royal Champion being used up in the very top compartment of the base there. She has the support of the regular witches and the super witch up there. But he goes ahead and rages her up, freezes up that single inferno, try to keep her alive. I'm kind of curious to see how he handles this multi-inferno because the Royal Champion is looking like she's going to stay to the outside. and. Everybody else is going to round around Ooh, it. A skeleton brought her back. She's going to... Oh, wait. Oh, nope. I thought she was going to go right for it there. But she goes down to the bomb tower. Uh, yeah, you're right. Something's going to have to backtrack there. There's no wall break or anything. So that multi is just going to deal massive damage here. We do have one Super Witch at the bottom. Yeah, I'm seeing that coming in there. Oh, there's here comes RC. There's all the big boys. I found them. They're all <laughs> over on that other side. They're beating through a wall and giving that Super Witch access. Those big boys will go all the way to the Multi-Inferno and they should be able to take it down there. They hit like trucks and they do. They got it under control. And that one playing with uh, literal fire right there with that Inferno. Rounding around it with no specific plan for it. They just ultimately we were able to handle it, and Agent 33 puts the second trip on the board here for War and Glory. Eric, where the heck did those big boys come from? Uh, like, uh, they weren't with the witches. Yeah, they <laughs> they, they just chilling. They appeared out of nowhere, pulling rabbits out of the hat, pulling big boy. 
Oh, this is, that, that was wild. A very well executed attack from Agent. Stuck with it there. And I love the plan there. Uh, no plan for the multi, but really with the Super Witches, as long as they're being healed, it's not the end of the world. By the time mm -hmm. he got through there, like most of the base was down. Anyway, super safe blimp. We talked about that before, where it's a bunch of goblins, a few minions, and then just the rest of sneaky goblins, which if you hit a tornado trap, any bombs or anything like that, the regular goblins will tank all that, and then the sneaky goblins can come out, so you don't have to commit that rage spell. Mm -hmm. He actually used a rage spell on that royal champion up top to get through that single and push into the middle of the base. Yeah, and I, I almost feel like uh, Kirk recognized the zap value right there and the potential, and he tried to put those Teslas over there to try to mess up the, the funnel, and yeah. they weren't able to do it because he invested the king or the queen and the warden in there and just let them choose which way they wanted to go and they're able to reach all the way in, not the wait on a warden walk, which could ultimately make you time fail, but investing the queen and the warden to go in there and break the, uh, the ring that uh, the lightning uh, basically just needed to connect right. to to get the funnel set. It really worked out nice and he was able to handle those Teslas that were probably there specifically to counter that. And here we go. It's going to be on Halo Blade, who actually faltered pretty heavily in their first war. Uh, I believe 59% uh, two star, so struggled a little bit here. We got a queen charge Lalo, and we have that log launcher selected. So perhaps we see this log launcher charge again, where we see the king, the log launcher, and the warden all committed together. There's the king and the warden. Log launcher should follow really soon. Always a bit risky here. He's got the jump that he can use to make the queen transition over to the town hall compartment, but she needs to get through and fight off the CC. Here comes the Roar Champion. The Warden is all working together over there, and as soon as he has an opening, he can then put in that log launcher to try to take out that centered multi inferno, would be its primary target. There it is, lined up to strike actually even potentially both of the infernos here. Can it hit both? It is. It's striking the one. Is it going to. This, this pinpoint accuracy on this log launcher might ultimately take out both of the Infernos. And look at that, it is. Wow. It's spanning between them. I didn't think he'd be able to hit both of them, but clearly he saw it oh. and he, oh wait, okay. It's off now. It is, but the log launcher's still moving and it's gonna throw one more log that'll take out the other one. And then it'll open up and drop out the Yetis into that one, which will take it down. That was clever. I like what he did there. And his heroes, his other heroes continued all the way across the bottom, leaving only the Electric Owl to go deal with that Eagle Artillery, and now the Balloons, but the Queen, the Queen is still moving towards the Town Hall here, Bash. She's got a great path as well. Jump Spell is down, so she can circle back if the minions get that pathing set. Yeah, they do just that. Uh, Yetis actually come out and basically <laughs> take down the Inferno. <laughs> All three of them! Yeah. He took out three Infernos with the CC and the CC troops! <laughs> exactly, and now we have uh, the Queen still going, but we have that AKA, the, 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 not, the clean up Lalo, so to speak, <laughs> uh, here, but Still a lot of base up. We have a queen, we have a scatter shot. So I wouldn't necessarily call this a cleanup Lalo, but this Lalo can help support this queen and push her through to finish this base up for a three star. And with all the minions quickly down behind, the pups coming out of the Lava Hound pop there. He's got the headhunters coming through. The headhunters hitting a bunch of traps there, but they ultimately get taken out. Not enough to reach over to the defensive queen, so she's still going to be a potential problem here for him, but his queen is trying to get through there. He makes a lot of the balloons invisible, but they are dropping like flies over there, and it looks like Halo Blade is potentially not going to make it oh. through here. He does get his queen. Oh, 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 oh. she's gone. And oh, she's no. gone, just like that. It was looking really, really good, but without a warning. In, and with minimal spell support, the Lalo got torn to pieces. I thought Halo would get through there, but man, just those spells at the end weren't quite enough to get through that final compartment with the Queen and the scatter shot. You could tell he's disappointed. He thought he had it. He thought he had a shot at it. I thought he had a shot at it. Wasn't very far off, so they fall behind after the second round of attacks. A really great percentage. If you are going to miss, you want it in the 90s. Obviously, the higher, the better. But this was this was nice. Just that last compartment too much. I can't believe how much value he got out of this log launcher. The logs directly destroy one of the Infernos. The rocket balloons and yetis take out the other Inferno that was already weakened up. And then they had the yetis move all the way up and take out the single, or at least assist the queen in taking out that single Inferno, at least dropping the yeti mice for distraction and keeping under control there. Guys, that was that was a huge amount of value out of that, uh, that log launcher. And it's surprising that that didn't go through after that much value. That was, uh, that kind of boggles my mind a little bit there. A little bit, a little bit crazy. Maybe a little bit early on that final freeze. Invisibility wasn't really, you know, couldn't really do too much yeah. with it. Could have maybe held it, maybe even uh, invis the queen just to hold on to that queen. And it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. Ninety-three percent. 
But they got to move forward. You want to try to hold Warren Glory's with defense. We see they're running those anti twos. They know what Warren Glory's weakness is, so to speak. I mean, they look strong. Mm -hmm. Even uh, even in the previous war with the anti twos, they looked strong. So it's going to come up to Nick, another anti two with the Super Bowler smash. And these smash attacks are really good at taking down these anti twos. So it seems like they put in the work and kind of figured out what they need to do. Yeah, exactly. And. Uh with these smash attacks, you got to be careful with the town hall because if you move through the town hall itself a little bit too quickly, then your healers end up sitting inside of the town hall poison and it just rips them to shreds and really can hinder how much force you have coming down after you move through that town hall and leave up a lot of base there. And uh, we'll have to see how ultimately we make it through there. But the queen and the warden now get joined by the super bowlers. The king of the siege breaks collapse in the left side of the base there. And they will get a funnel to go in towards that single Inferno, but he won't be able to actually take the single Inferno with the King who's locked on. He will freeze it up though, and everybody else gets to jump to carry into the Town Hall. Now keep an eye on these healers and see if they can survive through the onslaught of this uh, Defender compartment. Oh, he's missing the funnel! <gasps> no. Uh-oh, the CC might uh, pull him back. Oh, they're taking the turn back. They're, they are turning back here. Oh, Queen's not turning back. The bowlers are though. Okay, okay, he'll rage up oh. and get to the town hall. He's got to go all in for it. <laughs> oh, I mean, if the queen's going to stay to the outside here, if the bullers could just take the town hall and then just die and transfer the healers to the outside, he could definitely still work. But look at the Valkyries. Valkyries are coming in to help save the day. The town hall does go down, and he gets a scatter shot and the other scatter shot. And now he's in a pretty <laughs> strong spot here as the healers are staying safe. Those archers from the clan castle pulled those bowlers back. That was so scary, but... Nick didn't panic. He saw those few bowlers come back and got the town hall down. He's still not out of the woods here. He has a lot of support, but there's a few defenses eh, with Royal Champion ability, Queen ability still in hand. Okay, maybe he's no, out of good. the woods here. He's good. He's got it. He's yeah. absolutely got it here, Bash. He's not going to have any problem over the backside there. The healers survived to the end. They stayed safe. It got a little bit dicey, but he didn't panic. He continued to... He saw that the troops turned back there. The healers were still on him. He raged not only those super bowlers, but also the healers that were still healing him as they made their approach to the town hall, and he's able to pull it back. That could have gone very, very wrong, but he maintains his composure, and he gets it done anyways. Rushed it. Beautiful attack by Nick. Playing on a phone. You're a maniac for playing on a phone, Nick. <laughs> You're a maniac, sir. <laughs> Actually, I, I see a lot of these guys playing on phone. Rigo's got the iPad there. But this is what Warren Glory wanted to do. They wanted to respond with a strong... They just saw their buddies, Chaz Mac. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of these clans are pretty tight. A lot of these guys have played together previously. They all know each other. So you see Chaz Mac go out and put up a perfect. You want to go out and put up as high of a score war as possible. That is for sure. Uh, as we got a look here back at Halo Blade's attack, which just fell a little bit short, unfortunately. But Nick did get the job done with this three-star, with that Super Bowler smash. I would like to see uh, oh, that invisibility just couldn't do anything here to get him through. Yeah. That's the that's the only difference between these two teams in this war right now, Bash. Yeah, I think if he saved that that freeze just a little bit longer, he was a little bit early on the freeze. Talk about Halo Blades attack, the previous one maybe had a chance there, but mm -hmm. things happen unfortunately. But we're in a commanding spot for Warren Glory, three three stars. You got a triple here. You don't want to fall behind. We've seen what these powerhouse teams can do. So make sure you keep it on. You weren't far off. 93%, maybe yeah. one spell off of a three-star yourself. So we'll have to see if Fuzzy Wuzzy can respond with their next attack. If not, it's going to get something to come back. This team is perfectly capable of uh, getting those perfect wars on occasion as well. Like they have a really, really strong roster. I've always been impressed by both of these teams here, but uh, they're, they're the seasoned veterans here. These are the guys who've been playing since the season one when uh, we were out at uh, DreamHack Dallas. Like, these guys have been around forever. These guys have uh, just, they, they have so much experience at every different stage of this tournament, and I'm not really too worried about their ability to make a comeback, and we'll see if they can make it happen here. But Sir Will will be striking next as he comes in with a Suzy Hero, Lalo? He's got the log launcher here. Is he going for a bit of a kill squad here, or does he swap out that log launcher to something else? He's not investing the warden into it, so he will just throw down the king, the couple of headhunters, a little bit of tanking, and the log launcher. The log launcher will be in charge of taking out that multi-inferno, and he can just get as much value out of the heroes as he can and go for the really big Lalo here. And he's got ice hounds to make it happen as well. 
really big risk here, throwing that siege machine, throwing the heroes opposite corner of the town hall. But going to look to set that pathing, clear out this whole corner compartment, and then run in that lalo. Here comes a royal champion to support that top compartment. The queen should get the enemy queen down. Clan castle comes out. Looks like we got headhunters, archers, and a lava hound, which the king is going to look to disperse of. Freeze there on the, a lot of going on right now. Mm -hmm. Freeze up there in the top compartment to help get down the enemy queen, but nothing's going for it, unfortunately. Finally, the world champion's gonna go over. Queen's gonna help out. Enemy queen falls. And you mentioned the ice hounds. We got ice lalo here. Those ice hounds are gonna have a little freeze effect when they pop. They cost 10 more housing space than a regular lava hound. And some players like that just to freeze, anticipating where they're gonna pop over. And this one might pop over the town hall. And yeah, not only that, not only do they freeze as soon as they blast, but then the the ice pups end up attacking the defenses and slowing down their firing rate as well. So it's just uh, freezes on freezes and slow effects just spread throughout the area there. And it can be really, really effective. But there we go. He's got the town hall takedown. The ward ability covers him all the way up until the uh, as soon as the freezes wear off and then he's able to power through. He's got the heal spell. He's got more bloons drop into the bottom space here and even throws down this skeleton spell to try to distract the road champion and the scatter shot. And now the moment of truth here. If he can power through this, they might be able to stage this comeback. There we go. Queen, the, the balloons are working through here. Enemy Royal Champions going down. That Ice Hound froze that multi, which was mm -hmm. beautiful. Uh, I love the placement on those Ice Hounds. Got the Town Hall frozen and activated. Got the multi frozen and taken down there. And this is Crush. This was a great plan by Sir Will. These guys, this war is one free spell away, in my opinion. What? Maybe one extra free spell, <laughs> but one free spell away from being a tied war. I love that attack. Beautiful attack, Will. Yeah, absolutely. And he was, you could definitely see he's happy yeah. about that one. That was, all, that was all smiles up there. A little celebration as you see this excitement. And uh, they're they're so close here to to tie up this war. They just need to wait for War and Glory to slip up if they do. So. I mean, this was such a, such a nice attack here. I'd love to see these Ice Hound Lalos. If you can spare the extra super troops there, a couple of Ice Hounds can really do a lot of work here and save you spells. And oh, this attack already has a lot of spells invested for the Lalos, so you get so much protection. Adding in the heals, you got the Rages, Skeleton spells, plenty of freezes on top of the freezes from the Ice Hounds. It's just a really cool attack here, but one of the key things that we're looking for there is that defensive Royal Champion takedown. So he even froze her up there, and did he get some Headhunters in there? I don't even know if he did. I don't think so. I think it was just uh, me. Oh, wait, one got hunter. Yeah, <laughs> finally. I was going to say, I didn't, I'm not. yeah, one finally comes in and then a little bit of everything else to take her down. But the fr the freeze effect on those ice hounds was just so well placed on that attack. Right over the town hall, activates the town hall. Right over that multi, freezes on the approach. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like you mentioned, almost like a extra freeze spell, which yeah. almost the difference in this war. So, this, well, is, a, this is a close war. Yeah, and it's when those air defenses, like if you're, if you're able to identify that those air defenses are next to key targets like that, next to the town hall, next to the multi inferno, then those ice hounds yeah. are freezing at key positions, freezing up a massive amount and giving you so much protection. But, oh, here we go, here we go. We got another Lalo. This one's looking like it's gonna be a Skelly Bat Donut. And he's gonna go after the inferno and the CC. Now, if he does this, He's very likely going to want to push his heroes all the way in to take the town hall, and they're going to need a lot of protection to do so, but he first needs to get the CC destroyed. The troops that are contained inside of it will die with it, so he has to, he doesn't need any poisons now, obviously, but he wants to get that multi. Oh, does he? No! Oh! Leaves the multi. The battle builders are able to save the multi, and he's going to have to find a different way to deal with it. I'm worried about this. A centralized town hall here is going to need a huge push from his heroes. He will have a siege machine. Didn't get the value out of those spells. Really just wasted one bad spell there, but you would like to get that multi down. We've seen multis just eat up Lalos. It'll be on the heroes to really set the pathing, cut off this corner, maybe even get down that Royal Champion in as much of this corner of the space as possible. But this is going to be a tough Lalo through the center of the space. And it's part of the reason why that uh, Inferno was able to survive is because those battle builders in the last balance update just took a little bit of boost to their healing and they were able to barely keep that thing up and now it's fully topped off. But he's trying to get the queen to take the turn to go into the town hall compartment. He's oh, she's got the oh, Yeah, that's a bit of an issue. We can cut out the path over there or no, she oh. didn't. Okay, this could be a bit tricky here, Bash, and he may need to be start, start to think about swapping out that, oh, that siege back. machine to a blimp and going for a backup if this queen doesn't cooperate. 
Coming back though, RC goes down, but she needs to go in. Skellies might pull her in. He has to start the Lalo here. Minute 32, ton of base left. Will she go in? No, she does not go in. She might in. still take the turn here. Come on, Queen, take the turn, take the turn, take the turn, take Come the on. turn. Come on. No. She swap. Now watch the swap out to the blimp here right, because yep. he's absolutely going to need it. There we go. He's still got a ward ability. He can use the ward ability to protect the blimp and also protect the blues at the same time here. Go in for the backup panther, but the Queen carries all the way to the other side of the base there and takes out a couple more defense, so there's still a chance that he could triple this. Yeah, the very good read there, being patient on uh, his siege machine, being able to swap it out and get to the proper siege machine to save this one. Uh, the stone sliver goes down. The enemy queen is dealing a lot of damage in there, but the headhunters are finally going to take her down, and this is still looking strong. He's got the Dragon Rider, I think Gretikus has got this one. Wow, that freeze, that last freeze, I don't know if you noticed that, but he used the last freeze not on any air targeting defenses. It was on a cannon and a ground expo. They were specifically freezing those up to protect the headhunters so they could go in there and get the defensive queen down because those will target the headhunters. There's nothing else on the ground there and they will snipe them off and stop that queen takedown. And he was able to get the freeze there perfectly placed. That was such a critical freeze to get him through and it got him exactly what he needs here to get the triple. Never a doubt in his mind. Great pace there, waiting to see what the queen was going to do before committing that stone slammer, switching it to the blimp, making it happen. Great adaption. Uh, I, I missed the freeze, as you mentioned, but that was, that's a good play as well. Getting that enemy, uh, the enemy hero down, sniping out your uh, balloons as they're working through here. Tornado was early there. Okay, I was looking for the tornado closer to the town hall, but the tornado was early down there by the eagle, so he had that out of the way. Just a really great, and that's what, what you need to do with the Lalos. You need to be able to adapt, improvise, overcome as fast as possible. Great play by Gereticus, GG on the three star. And now we have to see a three star here from Fuzzy. Mm -hmm. they, they don't have a choice. They have to three star here and then they need a defense on that final attack as War and Glory is perfect. Yeah, they, they're out of opportunities here. There's only one more chance for them to miss. And if they can get the defense, hold them below that 93, yep. then they can get the they can still make it through here. But both of these teams, they want that uh, first win here of the challenge. And they're, they're fighting for it tonight. <laughs> oh, man. And it's going to come down to Kevin. It looks like we got Dragbat here, uh, a personal favorite of my clan. We love using the Dragbat. A lot of times we'll have the blimp go for the town hall takedown, and here we go. A short blimp here, right into the 12 o'clock position. Going to take that town hall down, and then we'll see where he comes in with those dragons, looking to get as much of that splash down so that he can commit the bats later on. We always talk about drag that being one of those high risk, high reward attacks there. If you try to sail the blimp through the dragons to cross the base to take the town hall down, then you end up risking a, a one star because you, not, you don't have a backup method, but using the blimp early so he knows what he's working with here to make sure that he has that town hall secured right out of the gate there. He loses the advantage of the blimp clearing the traps as he makes his way through with the dragons because sometimes that blimp can sail through the dragons and cross the base and clear all the traps in between there in the town hall, keeping the dragons protected. So he gives that protection up to make sure that he can secure at least a two star here and make sure that town hall is secured nice and early, but the hero's picking up some good value. Up that RC ability, picks up uh, another air defense there, leaving up the scatter shots though, but the queen will handle at least one of those here potentially in this that CC stops her. My main concern here is that he's flying the dragons right into this air sweeper and the air sweeper will push them back, but I like the pathing here. He can get to the royal champion and he can get to two multi-target infernos, which is one of the biggest deterrents of the drag bat. So if he can get both these multis down and get through that sweeper, mm -hmm. he's going to have really nice position to maybe uh, bat bomb over on that scatter shot and then work his way through with his three freezes. And here we go, bat bomb on the scatter shot freezing up that wizard tower and letting those bats work through the base. Absolutely, and the bats starting there, there's almost no other defenses that are striking the bats, so they're forming up a massive swarm here, and they're gonna start to one-shot these defenses, taking out that Inferno, oh, but no. a red bomb no. hits! <laughs> <Ow>! Oh no! <laughs> Eric is speechless. The air bomb take, he would have had this. This would have been, this would have been absolutely crushed, but the air bomb just took out. He still might have it. Hold up. He's got this uh, queen that's beating through the wall. And she's going to meet up with everybody at the backside. He's got a lot of time here, Bash. Yeah, yeah. Air defense is going to pick off these last few air troops. 
Worried a little bit about cleanup. Tornado spinning the queen. So much time. He's got sneaking combos in the cleanup as well. The queen is not going to be stopped here. He lost the bath to a red bomb <laughs> as the dragon got a little bit too close to them. And unfortunate timing, but it's not going to stop this. It's wow. still going to be. You see that huge sigh of relief there <laughs> as he realizes that they're still in this war. And that was a rough <laughs> spot there. But now we've seen a very close uh, mistake there potentially from both of the teams. I think wasn't even, that wasn't even a mistake. That was just purely bad luck. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was there's nothing he could do about that. No. The bat just got a little bit too close as that dragon pulled up that red bomb. And you could see he thought he was done for. I thought he I think he and I had that same sigh of relief at the exact same time because I thought he was done for. Also, he lost so many of his bats and then the rest got picked off there by the battle build. So Fuzzy Wuzzy gave themselves a chance. Mm -hmm. They need a defense here. Final attack from War and Glory has to be a two-star for them to have a chance. Better yet, it has to be less than a two-star 93%. Yeah, that, that red bomb, the Ooh. bats themselves cannot actually pull the red bombs. It has to be something else nearby them, but they can be the target. So if something else veers into the range of the bomb while the bats are uh, like centered on the bomb there, then it can still end up being the target and take them out. And it's uh, it's it's rough to see there, but it's more common <laughs> than you'd think. And it everybody really is. very likely knows. Yeah, I've, I've seen that way too many times. It is the most painful thing. But well, let's hop right into it. We got our fifth attack here for War and Glory. Benny coming in Ooh. with a skilly donut. Messes up that invisibility. Ooh. Covers the. Oh, he covers it again. He's off a little bit there. He's not, not going to get, get the inferno. Not, yeah, there's no way. He just stopped to give up on it. Just uh, res preserve any more spells that you have here and have something else go after it. But at least he got the CC. You can recover from missing the inferno if you get the CC down because you don't have poison. So if you miss the CC, you still have to go and fight whatever comes out of there and you have to do it without a poison because they don't bring the poison expecting to not have to fight it, but you can still recover from that multi. Right. Not a big deal here. Maybe Fine. a big deal. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it can be. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> it's a deal of some sorts, but not the end of the world. Right. Whereas if you know you have to deal with a Lava Hound, Headhunters yeah. and stuff without a poison, that's that's a big deal. Oh, Queen, Queen oh Queen's boy. coming back in. She might. Yeah, that's not that. good. That's not good. He had the skeleton spell and the giant over there, expecting the queen to veer off to the left side here. He puts an Aurora champion and the wall. No, that's a wall. Yeah, that's a wall wrecker. Wall wrecker, yeah. That's Old school wall wrecker. You don't see many of those these days. We see log launchers a lot more, but it's also going to be supported with the royal champion. So they're going to tank there, and he's looking to get this all the way to the town hall. It's got quite a bit of hit points and not much damage. Just the multi that he was hoping was down. But it should be fine. The multi's not going to deal enough damage. The wall wrecker should make it all the way over. Royal champion gets a scatter down, and she's actually going to come over and support the wall wrecker just a little bit more. Not get the multi, though. Yeah, the wall wrecker has a nice added benefit of it does splash damage in front of it, so it takes out those ground skellies and keeps that raw champion safe from getting distracted on the ground skellies. But he does end up making it to the town hall. Looks like sneaky goblins are in there. They will take the town hall down. No drama with that. They also has that wall wrecker clear the traps and make sure that there's no traps that are going to stop those sneaky goblins before they deploy. But this is still looking okay here. He just needs to get the defensive queen down. And the ice pups are actually slowing down her attacks. And now skeleton spell will come to distract her, but also the scatter shot here. Lots of stuff going on there to distract that queen. That's what you need. You don't want that queen firing on your balloons. She can take down a pack of balloons and no time flat. Lava pups finally get her down. We got balloons flying in from the top side. Tornado traps going off. And really all that's remaining that's going to hurt a big pack of balloons is that scatter. And the scatter is going to fall right here. Wow. Air defense goes down. Wizard tower. They got it. Yep. They, they got this bash. It is going to be a perfect war. The third one of the season, the second perfect war in the challenge here as War and Glory locks in this win. What a race here between these teams. A slugfest between War and Glory and Fuzzy Wuzzy. And that was wild, but 15 stars on the board here. Benny locks in a big one there and now puts it out of reach here for Fuzzy Wuzzy. Wow, what a war, back to back perfects. I, did, I, I wasn't sure we would see one. Now we saw two back to back. So unfortunately for Fuzzy Wuzzy, no chance they can win this war, but that's okay. Again, not elimination matchup. We're playing round robin here. Every clan will play each other, but Warren Glory's gotta be feeling good. After that early upset, they're back on the board, one on one after today. 
And this is just really nice persistence on this attack from Benny. Didn't quite get what he wanted from the Skelly Donut, but got through the base anyways. I like what he did with the backup on that multi-inferno at the top. He just hasted in a couple of balloons. That was that was just a really, really good adjustment there. He had the resources to deal with it. He doesn't have a ton of spells after he ends up using so much on the Skelly Donut that ended up not getting his primary targets, but he still is able to pull it through. And that ability to adjust is what sets these teams apart. Right, and we could potentially see a 14-star loss here. That I know, would, right? <laughs> that would be such a heartbreaker for Fuzzy Wuzzy. Uh, but, I mean, if I'm them, I'm going for it. I, Absolutely. I want that momentum moving into next week's matches. I want to, you know, have my team amped up, ready to go. And it's on Lord Kirk, and we got another drag bet here. Heavy on the loons here. 11 balloons, two riders, and then seven dragons with the six bats. And you always get a play that what if if this plan was going to be good enough there had they had that opportunity so you always gotta ask if if it was it always fated to be war and glory there or was there a chance here that they would have been able to pull back here if that ultimately slipped up but looks like he's driving in his heroes across to the eagle artillery here or no the king's going to the eagle artillery after he powers through that defense oh the queen oh no she's coming back i think she wanted to go to the multi and he ends up having to redirect back that's the difficulty those open corners that always always seem to cause problems in these attacks yeah the little unfortunate there but we got fuzzy wuzzy's upcoming schedule here on the right they're going to be playing flaming turkeys of june 24th empire and chasmac on the first that's going to be a tough day for them and then finally they got push and no chance i so still a lot of winnable wars for them especially after this performance i mean we see right here mm -hmm. they can hang with the best of them so if you're them you got to be feeling all right about your chances not the day you wanted going zero and two but still a lot of winnable wars is still able to get in to those challenge finals. Yeah, I mean, the Jeff, like I said, they, this is one of the most seasoned teams in the entire challenge here. They've uh, played at these big stages plenty of times and they can definitely perform. And they did today. Like this one still looking pretty solid here as he continues to push his way through that blimp goes after the town hall. Once again, we see the blimp going with a shorter path rather than going with the dragons, always that risk if you send him through the dragons with the warden ability that doesn't arrive to that town hall, but he does. He makes it to the town hall, moves into the core of the base here, just trying to get all the splash damage under control. And really it's that top multi that the queen was supposed to handle that is the only thing standing up at the top of the dragons are stepping in to take it. And he can freeze up the rest of the splash damage of the base, all splashes down, and the bat swarm is moving through. They just need to backtrack a little bit for this wizard tower. Come on, bats, come on, bats. They're gonna get there eventually. And this is looking really good, barring any red bumps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would never happen. <laughs> no, that, that would never happen. But I'm, I'm really impressed with Fuzzy Wuzzy. Uh, although this isn't going to get there, I'm still really impressed with how they performed in this war. War and Glory is one of the toughest clans, not just in NA, but in, in the world to play against. Some of the best players. So to show that you can hang with these guys, you got to feel all right about your chances moving forward. Those bats just get picked off the combo of the single and the expo just mm -hmm. a little bit too much for those bats to handle yeah i definitely needed the queen to cooperate a little bit better there it was a really solid attempt here it definitely had some potential and it apparently was fated for war and glory to take this win they will advance to a one and one record here as they move to the challenge they have plenty more wars up and coming to be able to fight their way through and i definitely look forward to every single one of them but i oh, definitely want to see more out of fuzzy wuzzy as well i really excited about every war we had today. Every war mm -hmm. was really close with the exception of Chaz Mag. Uh, they're perfect. <laughs> they just <laughs> clean house. Yeah, 15-11. Even this war here, even though it's 15-13, a perfect war, this was still very, very close. Uh, mm -hmm. Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very far off. Such an exciting day of wars from all of our clans, but GG to War and Glory. Congrats on the victory. You gotta be feeling good after that performance. Just really solid plans, really strong clan performance overall. That's what you're looking for as a team, Eric. Absolutely. They performed well all the way through. They unfortunately had that loss, but they, they came out swinging here. They have definitely reset and they are ready for the next week of competition here and everything that's uh, beyond that. They will still remain my favorite here in the competition right there with Chasmek. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with that. A really strong performance from both these guys and Glitter, welcome back to the desk. What a war, man. <laughs> I mean, I thought that we would have considered it a fantastic day if we got one 
yeah. perfect war, <laughs> but we got two. And from our rival squads that we have been talking about the entire <laughs> yeah. time. I mean, like they they couldn't possibly be shown up by the other one. And <laughs> I just I I don't who did who writes this? I who mean, do, how? It sets the stage for next week, though, because yeah. we have them playing against each other, the two teams with the Perfect Wars in the oh. challenge face off in yes. our next Mobile Challenge week. Wow. I It literally, it doesn't get any better. And this, this is just the first week. This is just the first week. But today was so incredible, as was that last match. We're going to look at the last group of highlights and talk about how awesome it was because there's literally nothing bad to say. Yeah, it was such a great day. Uh, Rigo, two for two on the day. Congrats on that, Rigo. Stamus, two for two as well with his log launcher charge. Such a bold plan, but it worked out for him. And then we just had answer after answer from War and Glory, Eric. They did exactly what they needed to in this war. Yeah, whether it be ground attacks or air attacks, they were finding ways. And, and I mean, may maybe they, they did put in the practice to be able to beat those anti-two-star bases. And they definitely proved it in this war here. And uh, right. hopefully they continue to do so in the future. And maybe we see a little bit more variety of different style of bases. Now that people can uh, now start to think, hey, maybe we don't throw that if they're going to throw out a perfect war because <laughs> they performed really, really well today. Yeah. And uh, they deserve these wins. 4D chess at its finest. It, now it's like really confusing if you're facing Warring Glory. What do you throw? I'm really interested to see what Chazmac throws at him. We mm -hmm. saw Chazmac bases really good today. Really, really good. So it'll be really interesting to see what they throw at him next week. Guys, again, follow. Have those notifications on. You're not going to miss that. That's going to be our first war next week, I believe. Or second second believe. war. Second yeah. war, 530. Yeah, that's right. Second war. That's going to be exciting. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, literally every single one of these teams, every single war we had today so was good. insanity. So good. Every, uh, there was literally only one war that was uh, was shut out, and that was because Chazmac just cleaned house with that perfect war. But here is our standings. Chazmac ends day one of the mobile challenge here with a 2-0. and oh. And a lot of uh, these teams here, one and one, uh, the only team uh, slipping down there to the bottom there was Fuzzy Wuzzy. It was surprising to me. I mean, I, I think they still can make a comeback here. I really do. Honestly, I was a little bit surprised by Omnipotence's performance against them. They were very close to a perfect themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but remember, all of these clans will play each other at least, or play each other once moving in this round robin. So a lot of wars to be played, a lot to go. Anything can happen here in the mobile challenge. Literally, that's what today showed us, that literally anything can happen. And of course, final war of the day also means final interview of the day. This time I get to do it with you guys, Ooh. okay? And we get to chat with Jethro. Jethro, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm, I gotta dive right into it, okay? Second perfect war of the night. Obviously, immediately after what we have now dubbed to be your rivals. So, I mean, was that all part of your master plan and we just didn't know it? I mean, yeah, keep the ring bases coming. I mean, <laughs> 15 stars, we'll take it. You want to run the wow. ring bases? Let's see. We'll take them. Oh, wow. Uh, you love that. So my question for you is, did you guys, after that first split, just go and put in a lot of work on those rings to improve? Or is that something that you guys kind of had in your back pocket that you kind of knew how to address the rings, but maybe just had an off day? Yeah, we definitely had an off day. Um, that day it was Mother's Day. There's a lot going on. Um, my team is kind of older, so, um, you know, we're not – we're pretty busy adults. Um, so, yeah, I mean – Ring bases can be tough, but also, as you can see, you know, we perfect ward them as well. So up to up to our opponents to see what uh, what they want to bring next. Absolutely. And now your next upcoming war is going to be against Chazmac, that big rivalry match there between what well, we would consider the top two teams. And you guys definitely proved it today. Both of you putting up that uh, perfect war at least once and the first two of the challenge season. That's a big, big deal. But how are you going to prep to play against Chazmac here? What's the game plan? Or you want, if you want to reveal it, <laughs> don't don't show yeah, all your cards. I mean, you're, you're trying to tell all my secrets over here. <laughs> uh, nah, Chazmac is uh, they're a good team. We're a good team. It's gonna be definitely a war, a war of NA. Um, so we'll see who comes out on top. And uh, good luck to them. Great answer. <laughs> it, it's very, it's very uh, 
political, perfectly said, very kind. Didn't reveal <laughs> anything, which I, I love because I think that war between you two is going to be fantastic. Now, of course, before we let you go, want to give you an opportunity here to do some shout outs and maybe thank people who've been following along in your journey. Uh, yeah, shout out to uh, Hold My Beer. He's our manager. Everyone knows and loves him in the NA community. And I also want to shout out um, our newest member of our roster who did pretty well tonight with um, a three-star and a 99 uh, for Benny. So happy to have him on the team, and uh, let's see what we can do. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Very excited for next week. So make sure you're rested and ready because we are prepared to be entertained. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, God, this rivalry is getting better and better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because so good. even when we were sitting back there, I was talking to Paul, and I was, and I was like, "There's no like, we're we gonna get back to back, perfect wars from the two teams that we've been highlighting from the like how." Right. And then they did <laughs> it. They were like, "No, no, it's fine," uh, you yeah. know. Yeah. And That's I, uh, this is why we love the mobile challenge so dang much. All right, now I did not forget first. Oh. We're going to bring Paul back up here. Okay. We're going to get Paul back hey, up on the desk. Hey, hey. <laughs> because Hello. we've got a little thing we need to, to attend to here. What's the percent? It's the percent. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I clearly won. I won. Yeah. yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah I already know. Yeah. Now, for a refresher, we had a 92, a 98, and a 75 from uh, our three casters our for receiver. this attack. I'm going to have you guys walk us through it, cast it like it's live. All right, so that people can follow it, and then we'll see the percentage here at the end. Absolutely. It is a queen charge into Hog Miner Hive, and we saw the very, very beginning of the attack earlier. And uh, we also see that you, that timer is started at three minutes here, so that might give away a little bit of information that it ultimately came down to a time fail, and we'll see exactly how high that percentage got here. But look at this queen charge going into the town hall compartment. A lot of big threats there because you have that single inferno right next to the CC, but the angle of approach that he chose will pull the CC nice and early and make so we can fight it before he activates the town hall and before he gets blocked onto by that single inferno. Oh, and if this is a time issue, triple ice goal, Mavic Clan Castle will <laughs> slow up a queen charge. A lot of times you want to get that hybrid moving about a minute 45. You can go a little bit less, but if you want to be comfortable on time, that's about that mark. And if this queen doesn't get to that town hall because of the ice golems, perhaps we did see an ice goal or a time fail rather on our guest that percent attack. Yeah, do we do we take last minute entries from the chat here? Do they want to throw them out there? I think I think they need to start throwing the percentage out there what they think it's gonna land at and uh, participate a little bit here if you missed it earlier. But it looks like he puts in that king and the siege for in from the bottom corner to start to collapse. Ooh, in that quarter, but though five good Wait. good call there sir right on the money here oh. come the rest of the hybrid but uh take a bit of damage where's this wait, queen going yeah queen <laughs> wait town hall wait uh, is, did we get really debated on this replay may, maybe uh paul's the one who's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, we didn't get stars. Wait, we should have also have to go. We should. Uh, uh, <laughs> hang on. No, it's guess the percent. It's not That's guess right, the right, stars. Right. I shouldn't make this more complicated than it already right. is. Right. They already troll us enough with this. All right. So King's breaking back in for the town Ooh. hall. Okay. 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 So it might be safe. Oh, oh tornado. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right. That's fine. As long as the queen charge survives, she locks on yeah, to that single inferno. In. She's going to survive, even though the king didn't. And the town hall gets weakened up a little bit. But the, the hybrid's still pushing along the bottom here, picking up a lot of percentage. <laughs> <laughs> They're making it through strong. The queen ability's still intact there. The healers are still alive. Not many of them. So it's starting to dwindle out a little bit now. But this uh, queen oh, going to go down. They, oh, Ooh. no. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling about in the 80s here because the queen going down here is going to greatly reduce the amount of percentage you're able to be captured in the top corner there, and that multi goes down as well. So, wait, into the 80s here, maybe? Uh, no, I think Paul. Paul? <laughs> wait, what was your, what was your guess? 75. Wait, hey. Oh, wait, hey. so I, you know, if this is the price is wrong, price, Paul. Yeah, the price <laughs> is wrong. I went bust, but I was pretty darn close. You were pretty close. Wow. Okay. Uh, what That's do we have left here? Nothing. No, the minion. 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 Look at the minion. Oh, minion. The yeah, but the, 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 the 80s? Okay. This isn't getting to 90, yeah, Eric. We were no. both <laughs> oh, 5% off. Uh, oh. I bet you somebody on the chat got it, though. I yeah. bet you somebody on the Absolutely. chat got it. Absolutely. Chat's never wrong. Chat's never wrong. Yeah. Collectively. Always correct. <laughs> you know what? You were the special guest today, and you were the closest one on the percent, so I'm giving the dub to you, but to be honest, 
Cam and Luke, the people per just creating these, are absolute savages with these percentages because <laughs> this is ridiculous. That was not even close to guessable, oh, okay? Uh, I mean, we'll have to see if chat was able to nail it down. I'm just, I'm honest, beginner's luck. Right. Beginner's I'm luck. honestly just happy they saved that for a two-star. <laughs> <laughs> right? That was rough. That, that king came in clutch to pull that back. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. All right. I feel like that was a really great way to wrap up the day. It is almost time for us to say goodbye. But, of course, before we do, I need some final thoughts from y'all. And since you are the special guest here today, and Viram, we will start with you. I think we could not have asked for a better first night, honestly. Like, this is so many fantastic wars, so much two perfect wars in one night from the teams that we highlighted coming into this as the ones to watch. They absolutely delivered but the teams who may be considered underdogs as well, they showed up in such a big way, showed us that the pool of talent here in the top eight in North America is fantastic. And at the end of the day, anyone can win this. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's my takeaway. Anyone can win here in the mobile challenge. We saw some upsets. We saw some, like, almost every single war was way closer than I thought it would be. I thought we would see a lot more blows. Even the last perfect war, super close. So this truly is the era of everyone. Anyone can win this mobile challenge, guys. Make sure you stick around. It's going to be a fun few weeks coming up. Eric? And I want to point out that almost every single team beat their average star count Ooh. all the way through. Oh, like, that, like every single mm -hmm. one of these teams has really, really stepped it up today, and they're they're bringing their A game to yeah. this. That's the whole point. That's the whole point <laughs> of being here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, our first week of the Snapdragon Mobile Challenge for Clash of Clans comes to a close with style. I mean, back to back, perfect wars. It does not get any better than that. Of course, a huge shout out to our sponsors, Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Monster Energy, DHL, and the US Air Force. Huge thanks to our special guest and Viram for joining us here today. On behalf of myself, my co-casters, and everyone behind the scenes here at ESL Studios, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.
get a dime on the miss and snap any minute casually when it stop tripping on me stop dissing on me yeah i got a dream can't take it from me my bias burning i'm always learning tell me where to go man i'm on a journey yeah i can't explain it i get excited keep a 300 king leonidas strap in cause it's gonna be a long ride working on me every single day and night there comes a time when your worlds will collide if it's holding you back, push it right to the side. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get here. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get here. I don't got the time. Put me in, coach. I've been going hard. Time to let it show. Everything raw. Give it to me now. Let me have a spot. Man, it's going down. Gotta get it here. I don't want to wait. Take what I want. Then I go train. Gotta get a win. I won't lose the game. This is my year. I ain't gonna break. Strap in, cause it's gonna be a long ride. Working on me every single day and night. There comes a time when your worlds will collide. If it's holding you back, push it right to the side. I will never settle, mind over matter, get the gold medal on another level. I will never settle, mind over matter, get the gold medal. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get me up. Ain't got no time for no fear. I work too hard to get me up. On another level, I will never settle, mind over matter, get the gold medal. Yeah.